guests and members. We're going to start this meeting. So, going to call to order the um, December 17th meeting of the Reading Conservation Commission. Um, and according to my watch, it's not, no, it's almost 7 o'clock. Is there any, Chuck, do you want to go over it? Um, we have a bill. Do you want to do that now? Sure. So, we have um, the water and sewer bill for Pearl Street. I know that you were going to look into that, but. To approve the payment of 1651. Okay. Is there a motion to do that? Or any discussion? No discussion. I have not received any additional information. I called the town department to see if they could look into that billing issue. And I could take advantage of one of the guests in the audience tonight. Uh, go ahead. They can, they can bring it up and discuss. John Hobbs, the Chief Selectman. Welcome. It's gonna be, I'm sorry, I haven't met you ahead of time, um, so I didn't recognize you. Um, the town, so so the Conservation Commission regular quarterly, I, I believe, we receive a bill uh, for water and sewer for a parcel of land. Yeah. Um, and um, sixteen fifty one, sixteen dollars every every quarter um, for a parcel of land. I think I think the reason is I don't think it's more sewer, I think storm water. Oh, oh it's the storm water. Yeah, if it was water and sewer it wouldn't be sixteen. Right, right, right. <laughs> well it's undeveloped. It's an undeveloped lot. Yeah. So so Mr. Zamboris wanted to pay you that thing. He's raising no, his um, hand. <laughs> and, uh, Step up. The way the water, the way the um the stormwater enterprise billing uh, is calculated is based on service area. So if there's a parcel where they Would that include sidewalk? Uh, if it is Urban. on within the prop within the property limits, yes. Because I um, we bill all town departments. I haven't driven past it to refresh my memory, but by my understanding, it's a vacant, vegetated lot. Which one? Mill Pond. Uh, Pearl Street. Yeah, that's Mill Pond, isn't it? No, it's Pearl. Because <coughs> I could be saying the park. All, all the address says is Pearl Street. Pearl Street. So I don't know which where you go to Bear Meadow. Yeah. Yeah. And there is a parking lot there. It's semi-paved. That's okay. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Um, it was something I was just looking into because, you know, we're not a for-profit <laughs> right. entity, and it's the town paying the town. The for school water and sewer. We've been paying it. We even we even argument. build water sewer and the pub, uh, we even this uh, build water public works departments. Every town owned parcel, whoever is uh, the authority under that parcel gets billed the INI fee. We don't skip one. While we're talking about it, do you know off the top of your head? I mean not I and I, I'm sorry, enterprise. Stormwater enterprise. Stormwater. Do you know off the top of your head approximately how much funding is in that enterprise fund as we sit here today? Off the top of my head, no. There's hundreds of Sounds like it's a bookkeeping thing as much as anything else. Town owns the land, right? And you know it comes by way of you guys because it's you know being held as open land. I'm right. Guessing right. is the reason that happens. And so I think it is a book. I mean, first of all, I know that I know it's an accounting thing. So to George's point, you know the town pays the town. Right. Um, and right. You know I don't know that the actual check gets written, George, but I think you have to. I would. I would think, not being an expert on it, but just having spent enough time now uh, as a selectman to you know watch the comings and goings, um, I would suggest that it, if I were sitting in your chair, I would take a vote, approve it, be sent, and then Chuck, I think you'd probably take it to accounting and figure out how that happens, whether it's just. Well, <coughs> we do this frequently. Yeah, we do. We've been we, doing this. We do. It's just one of those things that we have been doing. But I, I just thought it was time to ask the question. Well, you know what? That's a, I, I will find out yeah, you know, so for you. I'll be I'm happy to. I'll well, be happy to know. For the that. enterprise fund for stormwater or anything else, those funds are dedicated to very specific use. Correct. So even though it might be ten towns uh, from one department to another, once they get in that enterprise. 
authorized bond, they Correct. have to use yeah. stormwater. And I think that's the point. I think that's Which, George's point is that you know everybody everything gets billed. So I think you know if you'd approve it, um, and I, I think that that's the right protocol for it to follow through your committee and then find its way back in. And I will find out the real answer and let you know. Just uh, curious. Yep. Yeah. That's a that's a um, fair question. And you know, seeing the stormwater challenges this town has, you know, we absolutely need funds to address those problems. Yep. You know, so um, it wasn't an objection; it was just a, you know, asking where's where's it coming from, where's it going to. Well, that's all we can be talking need. about is money. Um, <laughs> at the next two or three selectmen's meetings, they're already scheduled. I was reading reading ahead a little bit. That's kind of all we're going to be talking about is budgeting, and so it'll be a good time for. Get back to you and let you know exactly what's happening. But I do think you need to dedicate. I think there's a real strong reason, as Jamie points out, that money goes yeah. from one pocket to a yeah. different pocket that is spent in a very specific way. So, okay. thank you. Yeah. Any other input? No. Is, do, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Seconded. Second. All those in favor? Okay, let's, um, we have a 705 hearing, so let's reopen the notice of intent for Sturgis Park. Um, read the script. Um, so at this point, we will uh, reopen the public hearing for Sturgis Park, um, <coughs> DEP number 270-06. Three, four. It's now reopened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended, and the Reading General Bylaws, Section 5.7. The hearing will be conducted in the following manner. The applicant will present their proposal. The commission will receive reports from its administrator, technical advisors, and other town departments. The commission will address questions and comments to the applicant. The public will then be given the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the chair. Please give your name and address before your comments and our questions are presented. There's an attendance sheet um, at, on a little stand at the door. Please sign in um, if you haven't already. Um, and at this point, uh, let's introduce ourselves, starting with Chuck. Uh, Chuck Tarani, Conservation Administrator. Sure. So. Nika Scanlon, Chair. James Mullen. Rebecca Longley. Julie Roger, recording secretary. Okay. George Zamboris, down here. Mr. Zamboris, you um, have the floor. At, uh, for the most part, uh, what you have before you is supplemental information. A lot of it was really responding to um, DEP's comments when they issued the file number. And towards the end, um, this was one of the primary reasons that uh, the meeting was continued in the fir first uh, phase was to come up with some different ideas of how to stabilize the bank. Initially, we had pro proposed riprap construction, which the commission was somewhat against. They would like they like to see some different alternatives. Uh, Chuck had proposed um, the quarry logs, or came up with quarry logs that were um, <coughs> coconut shells. The problem I had with that, after looking into that, they deteriorate. They, they're not a permanent solution. They uh, and it was actually as different. Chuck furnished me one uh, piece of information that in that report they said that they had, uh, they may deteriorate within six to 10 years or five to seven years, I forget what it is. Most of the manufacturers I looked up, they said they biodegrade within two to five years. And as you know, it's, we're looking at a portion of the bank that has uh, eroded, it's severely undercut from years of storms. I, mean, I wouldn't say the most recent storms, but it's, the edge of the bank is probably a minimum of five to six feet where it used to be. And uh, we don't want to put it back where it is. We just want to stabilize it to stop it from, to stop the, uh, to stop the uh, channel from eroding anymore. Um, if, if I could just make a comment, I've worked with those coconut logs before, mm -hmm. and you're right, they do deteriorate, they're supposed to deteriorate, but what's supposed to happen, um, but when they're used properly, they're above the normal flow. And you get vegetation going up into and through those logs, so they um, it sense this self stabilizes promotes vegetation, but they don't work well if you're down in the channel. And that 
that's and that's where we are. We're I mean we have the entire bank that we have to restore. I mean, we have to go right from the flow line up. And what I proposed before was to have riprap, uh, good sized stones, uh, to within one foot above the flow, flow line, and then do um, vegetative stabilization after that. Um, I'm open to suggestions. I often uh, I talk to WPI. Uh, and they indicated what they have done in the past also was uh, actually use riprap, but they partially covered it with loom to get some vegetation growing actually um, um, closer to the flow line and above. Mm -hmm. uh, Willie knew a mixture or something like that. Uh, did come up with uh, another product. It comes in blocks or a mat that's similar to uh, the open, the open blocked that people would use for porous pavement. So you have some sort of structure, and you can do some filling in between. Um, the mats, it, it's a small bank. Mats would probably be difficult. Um, the individual stones, I question whether they're going to be large enough and have enough weight behind them to stay there. Um, now it, it's aren't all those stones linked together? Though? They they do interlock, but I'm not. You know, I didn't get enough information on them uh, to really uh, determine um, how well they're locked. I know they are. Uh, the Army Corps has used them a lot in major river, pro uh, river projects, and you know they they come in huge mats, probably half the size of this room. Well, we're only dealing with a bank that's maybe three feet high, so it wouldn't be suitable for that. So I'm I'm open to options. I um, you know I personally I'm not objecting to any method. It's just that what I do there, I don't want to have to come back here another five to ten years and. and or someone else to come back in another five, ten years and ask to do the same thing over. I'd like to get it done so that it's uh, somewhat of a permanent uh, solution. Uh, obviously, just putting vegetation doesn't work. I mean, we, uh, it's, we have about a 60-foot area that's blown out now, and it's only getting worse and spreading if we don't get it fixed. Um, I, I'm remiss in that I didn't study DEP's comment. Could you summarize their their comments, well, they started off by saying that um, looking at the historic uh, USGS maps that appears that it's a flood, uh, it's, a fl uh, it's a filled wetland and filled floodplain suggested that I restore the uh, floodplain in, um, in the wetlands. Uh, we actually have a survey of the area in 1955, and other than the difference in, uh, we're not, not sure what the datum came, came out of, but the, uh, there's subtle differences, but basically uh, what was in 1955 is what exists today. Uh, and if you had survey from about 1840, though, I think. Well, no, no, I, I answered that one, too, because uh, I don't know what uh, Pamela looked at for uh, USGS maps. Uh, there was, and you can see the progression. In 1949, uh, no, 1940, what year was it? 1951 U.S. Uh, goes prior to 1951. I forget the one we had downstairs. I think it was in 46. And you can see the whole area where the two lower ponds are in the stream um, was shown as a marsh. Uh, and then you go to the 55 one, and you can see they're showing two ponds. And you go to the current one, it's only really showing the hockey rink as one pond, not the other one. Well, that could be where they took when they took the photos too. Uh, there's no question that initially. And, and I'm sure you read the history that uh, it was it, it became town's property in I think it was 49 or 51. Prior to that, we actually used to lease it for skating. And if you look at the bank <coughs> of the bank of the stream, and I can answer your river question later, Chuck. Um, the bank that's on the uh, playground side is essentially the same elevation was on the other side. So truthfully, when they used to skate in this area, and I wasn't here, I'm only guessing by topography and everything, and based on the, the information we have. It appears that the initial, the actual vegetated wetland that used to be there was actually lowered to create the ponds. But getting back to your other question, if you go back to the 1886 area, uh, USGS, which was reprinted in 1904 or 1906, it doesn't show any wetlands. It doesn't even show the brook. Hmm. So, um, you know, you know, and I'm not like I. Took, like I what I said in the memo is I'm not saying that you know nothing was filled, but if there was anything, it was only minimal. And the work we're doing is just re trying to really restore a bank that's falling apart, and we're not filling anything. Uh, if you don't mind, a couple other questions. Go ahead. The pipe that's connected and goes through the uh, through the bank that sticks way out into the stream. Are you going to shorten that? That's where the bank was. 
I know, you know. I know. <laughs> but you're going to keep the bank. We're going to leave the pipe there. We're done. So I mean, are you're not going to shorten that pipe? That's then? the uh, that's the um, that pipe there is what we drain the pond with. Right. Don't you? There's think? a just off the picture right, right. around here. There's a uh, regular valve box that you know, for yeah. typical that people right. would have with their sprinkler systems. That it, we have. it looks like that pipe though, since it sticks out into what's now the channel. We can cut it. Is an, is, a, is an obstruction. I think it'd be a good idea to cut it off. We can cut it. Cut it at your new bank. And it's no problem. From my I mean, opinion, actually, in this area here, there's only a minimal amount of bank restoration to do. I mean, we, we did dig the hole to find out what caused the leak la uh, last winter. Um, it may not have been fixed that great, but um, basically what it was is there was a pot, there was a uh, uh, an area where there was a lot of cobbles and the material went from clay soils for the most part to some granular soils and over the, and the water just found its way through and made its little conduit and washed out. Um, it did settle and for, uh, the bank did settle in the area. We had to touch it up. We probably, you know, as we have sandbags there right now because we couldn't fill the pond up. Now where you <coughs> have that weir, I mean, where the, the weir, weir is, that's where we built from this. We, there's a weir, and just on the upstream side of that, there's a pipe that goes into the pond area. Right, but downstream of that weir, mm -hmm. you have the well, they're kind <coughs> of wing, wing walls, but they're not wing walls because they're parallel. Straight panels, yeah. Um, and then once you get to the <coughs> end of those walls, there's a fair amount of erosion because the the way they're those wing walls or those walls direct the flow. Are you planning to? do some bank stabilization on the downstream side of those walls? I wasn't planning to, but if the commission feels it's necessary, I'm gonna go look at it again. I was really looking down uh, downstream further, which is a little upstream from here, where you have that slight bend in the brook that we're where right. most of the damage is, right. which is probably about, <coughs> excuse me, I don't know, maybe 50 feet or more down, about 60 feet downstream from the uh, channel. Well, that weir, walls that are downstream of it um, as intended they really channelize the flow I'm sure you get some pretty high velocity going through that that stretch Jay, excuse me Jamie are you talking about this part just before the south street no further up so here's Pine Here. Ridge Road here's where the river comes in yeah, yeah I, I, I think that you guys the, are talking I think that's I don't the know weird I think that's the oh no, no I don't know. Like, <coughs> the weir doesn't show on this one, unless that's it. No, we didn't. Uh, this was this drawing here is all the topo we uh, did yeah. that we formed last year, and the weir is actually actually it does show. It's just um, it's not labeled. Um, is it right there, by where the seven? The weir's right there. Oh, okay. All right. <coughs> um, the weir's right, right there. And there's stop logs in there, then they raise the elevation to fill the skin. My personal preference would be to put some uh, riprap in there where. Uh, Make the transition the, between the concrete and the. Uh, yeah, put the riprap. But the then down at the washout area, my preference would be riprap um, in the area that normally receives flow and then let it grade into vegetation above that. That would be my preference. I think the yep. riprap would be preferable, less expensive, less intrusive than these mats. These mats can work, but I don't think they're designed for little. <coughs> no, you have to use the small apart. pieces and not the full mats. You're yeah. correct. So the the, the riprap, from so my you're standpoint and experience, would be my preference. You're you're saying riprap in area two and riprap below the waterline in area one, but vegetation above the waterline in area one. Yeah, that would be my preference. Um, I can't did you, did you, did you In area one, we don't have to go below the waterline because the only the damage to the bank is only above the waterline. We just have to fill in where some of the soil washed out. We, you know, it's, it's, it's really just like a step. The bank uh, from the washout is a little step. We just have to restore the bank in that area, and that's all above the waterline. And so you're recommending? In that area there, I'm only uh, looking at filling it in uh, with, uh, well, with loam and, and vegetation, that's all. It's only in area two where I'd be looking at putting riprap in. You don't think it, in area one, a little riprap at the 
edge of the stream below where you put in the new you know, it it probably wouldn't hurt doing a lot of riprap because if you if you look at the well, where the pipe is, it, we obviously did lose it at some point in time. Yeah. So I mean, I could I could go from area from the bottom of area one all the way to the end of area two, and then do a small area by the uh, wing wall if that's what you want. Yeah. That that would be my preference. I can't think of anything yeah. else that is. Now now efficient. you're you're talking about additional work up here. Yeah. If you look. There are concrete walls from about from <coughs> that weir down about 10 or 15 feet. And then downstream of those walls, there's a big eroded area. So it probably stops the velocity where it comes is. here, and, and then you get right. these eddies that go in and cut the bank out. And there's pretty serious erosion going on. Yeah. So, really, you're talking about the bottom of the Obviously, none of this can happen until the summer anyway. We're not going to be working on a, a, a below the floor line. Uh, and there are times this does dry out. And maybe we're lucky it'll be a, a drier summer. But, I mean, we can uh, reinvestigate the, uh, this area. I do a better uh, better location of physically on this plan of where we're going to locate and make the transition from the concrete to the banks in the upper end, and uh, also have WPI develop a planting plan for the earth part of the bank. That'd be great. And we can you know, come back, continue in another okay. month and a half, two months, whatever, whatever it is. I mean, it's okay. we got plenty of time before this the work has Let, to occur. Let's discuss this a little further. Is there any more, uh, Becky or Terry, do you want to jump in with any other comments or questions? No, everything, everything I think Jamie wanted to add, we had, we had looked at when we were at the site and it made a lot of sense. Uh, Brian, Brian might have some, uh, some ideas too, but um, if the hearing gets about, continued, he can yeah. chime in if on that. If you want to continue it to a time when Brian's here, and, I mean, I have no I problem just, coming back into another meeting okay. and then coming back again, because like I said, we have months before this work can be done. Yeah. So, um, I have So I have some questions for So we're going to do um, uh, some hardscape at the bottom. And then above that, we're just going to have soil. Wouldn't that be a good opportunity to use the, um, the uh, coral? Coral on, on the upper portion? Yeah, we could. Because you can, you can plant right in that. Mm -hmm. you, could, you could develop a plan where at least that one section that would be. More. And then you well, that's what I could so especially, especially the year that's really blown out. Yeah. So we, we've done this on a project on the back. That stuff is actually still there, and it was 10 years ago that we used it, but they did plant into it. Yeah. So they fashioned it on the bank, they planted into it, they used willow, and uh, it's it's great. Yeah. You know, that's That section's done, and they're, you know, they're working on other sections yeah, now. Yeah, that's fine. Didn't we have some, didn't we have a similar situation with Lincoln Lodges back? You know where REI is, that area? Wasn't there a similar situation where they had recommended that type of rock? It was somewhere. I, I can't remember that specifically. But I, I've used it before, too, on jobs. It yeah. can be effective. Mm -hmm. You just don't, you don't want it hit by the full force of the current. Right? That's the problem. Chuck, were there, um, were there other <coughs> comments or questions you had for George at this point? No, I think the, the one thing that everyone was uh, concerned about is all that riprap being used on the bank. The combination of both works well, and during the time that we have waited between meetings, I provided George some information. And, okay. I mean, I think that's really all we wanted. I mean, that a plan, the detail would be nice. No, no, we we'll, don't. I mean, I knew okay. we had plenty of time, so I okay. actually did want to give you more information but tonight, but um, the, this week didn't allow that. Okay. If, okay. If, if we're not going to take that whole bank down and make that whole park a wetland, which <coughs> Direct department might not like. Um, John, and if John we're going to have a bank, I think we got to stabilize it with some kind of riprap or something, or else this is just going to happen. We don't do it. We won't have a park left. Yeah, yeah. At some point in time. 
Um, there's a couple things if, if everyone else is done, I just wanted to chime in. Any other questions or comments? Um, I just wanted to add um, a couple questions I had just looking at the plan and reading um, your submittal. Um, if there's going to be repair in area one and area two, um, you know, depending on how that gets repaired, there may, you know, in theory, be potential for some additional scour in between those two repair areas. You know, if, or, you, you know, sometimes when something is built, there's mismatched mm -hmm. resistivity to, you know, erosion. So, so I guess I'm curious about, you know, I, d I also want to see this done right. well and do this right. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I guess other things I had questions on just looking at it, you know, since you are an engineer is, um, you know, do you have, um, I'm, I'm curious to know um, what maybe some of the flood velocities might be. I can calculate those. Um, because that might give you a better handle on how effective the bank stabilization is going to be. Gonna, gonna, I, I was going to do that. The, um, yeah. the drainage area is a half a square mile. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a good size, but it's, it's, it's still only half a square mile. And, um, the everyday <coughs> flows uh, are not that great, but uh, by, by it can move some water during a storm, and if uh, what we haven't filed for, you know, because um, we're going to need uh, some of our stormwater money uh, to do a filing for it, and it's uh, we have, if you look at the bottom end of the stream as it enters um, Under South, South Street, Street. Uh, is granite <coughs> walls that are, has a couple pieces of granite that are hanging in there, and, and we actually have the same thing on Wall Street. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you so got we're it. Going to, uh, you got to work. One, we're going to do one filing on both projects and put one contract out there. The one on Sand Street is more immediate, though. That thing I think the one at Sand Street seems more immediate. Yeah, immediate. yeah not if you look at not if you look at Wall <laughs> Street. <laughs> so what about the, the whole bank and what that little bit of open area between uh, on uh, the upstream and low on the upstream side? On the upstream side. Yeah, the low street side of that, where uh, there's probably half the bank that's just hanging in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, things need repair. Um, so, you know, I just would like to see some of those calculations to back up and verify that the, that the erosion capacity <coughs> is not going to be, you know, that it's going to work, you yeah. know. I mean, it's, it's what you do every day. Um, um, We'd have to do that anyways to size the stones, the minimum size, the weight of yeah. the stones. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess I just, one thing, just a little sort of maybe a note to add to the plan. I know it's a little thing, but it would probably, it would help next time looking at the plan is if you could get some of those one-foot contour intervals, those actual elevations closer to, to the edge of that stream instead of uh, off on the other side of the skating pond, it's really a bugger trying to chase that yeah, line all the way around with all those twists and turns no, yeah, well, to, to get a sense is, of... Is that we've, we've gone through so many different versions of AutoCAD. No, in, in the new versions of AutoCAD, um, well, the old versions don't like the new versions, and the new versions don't like the old versions. And trying to change, especially a contour, uh, these are these are objects, so they're yeah, 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 yeah. So I, you know, no, we'll, I, we'll, I appreciate that. We'll it was just that just to sort of understand the the elevation, because you know, I I'm curious to know when that bank gets topped. What type of storm trips? Topping of that bank and what? I don't think it ever has a top. I don't think it has either. No, I don't think it has. Well, right now it would. Um, no, actually, I shouldn't say it would. I mean, it, it, well, top, I it would top right now when we're trying to fill the ponds because of the work we did. It, it actually, basically, what it is is when the backhoe was at the excavating for the test bed, part of the track was on the top of the bank, and they didn't rebuild the road properly, so we have that little slight depression okay. there. But okay. uh, I've. But even during the last week's storm, did it get topped? No, we had five, no, we were, we had five and a quarter inches too, from Friday to Tuesday. Evening, really? Uh, Wednesday morning, we had five and a quarter inches. I knew it was at least three. Yeah, no, I, I know everybody in town was garage. wet, so. Um, and I don't, I can ask, but I don't recall because I came right after the Mother's Day storm. Um, and shortly after, it did have a storm after that. And I don't recall that old being over. Yeah, yeah, and especially with the bank, with the walls going out on the sides of the bank, there's real 
there's increasing capacity for storage the higher the stage goes. Well, we'll, ha we'll so have that with all the, uh, once we do the cows that you turn off the glossy, uh, we'll have okay. all the uh, slum, uh, estimated water elevations okay. for each slum. Um, so um, at this point, if there's no more questions from the commission, I'll open up to questions from the public. Any Anybody from the public have any questions about this project, Sturgis Park Stream Channel Restoration? Okay, hearing none on. Yeah, just, um, John, are you here for this? For this? Just as no. an interesting part, George and I have spoken plenty about it. So you, He's you're here for you're incidental. Yeah. You're on board with this. Yeah, no, I'm perfectly fine. I would, I, of course, I would like to see that skating pond remain intact and be usable. Obviously, it's a one of the few free uh, recreational activities available to the public, and sustaining that type of stuff is very important to just the fabric of the community. <coughs> <coughs> so um, I move we continue the hearing January 14th. Okay. January 14th. January. Do it the next one after that. January 14th. The next one after that is 28th. 28th. Okay. Thank you. Okay. There's a motion to have it moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you, George. Thank you. Okay. Past 710, uh, we will now bring up the matter of the request for determination of applicability for, thanks George, for uh, 115 Forest Street. Um, map 39, lot 100. Um, Mr. William Alley. Speaking here. Good evening. Welcome. Nice to meet everybody. Yeah. Good evening. Have you, you signed in? Yes, I did. Okay, thank you. Um, Feel free to step forward and, and just introduce Yeah, my name is project. Bill Alley, and I have a partner on that project. Yep. And about three and a half years ago, my partner and I, we used our uh, retirement money in IRA as a self-directed IRA to do developments, uh, usually single-family homes. And uh, one of my first large projects was 34 Batchelder. I also did significant renovations to 52 County Road. And uh, I have a couple of projects in North Reading, and I'd like to return to Reading. And I go to the Y regularly, and I saw that for sale by owner sign. And I got to know the neighbor on the left hand side, and I purchased it that way. And I live at 251 Child Street for 28 years, and I'm excited about the project. Uh, hopefully, you'll uh, approve my request for a deck in uh, the two car garage. There was some question I've been working with Nancy Toomey mm -hmm. to go vertical. The, the mm -hmm. footprint is very large as it is, so yeah. I have no desire to uh, expand. And uh, basically, uh, when I sell projects, there is a issue with high price homes that have one car garages. And uh, also, decks are in demand, even though, as you probably all know, there's probably quite a few mosquitoes in the backyard, but they still have, you know, a deck. Yeah. And uh, I work with Jack Sullivan on, on coming up with uh, serving, and uh, and you can. I did make copies of Nancy's preliminary drawings. So far, the pricing has been out of my budget, so it may get scaled down. I work with two other builders. Stephen Neal of Neal Construction from Reading and uh, CJM Builders from North Reading. And uh, I'm working to try to come up with a budget that'll help me to make a profit. Okay. So you are going to tear down the existing structure completely? Uh, sometimes they leave studs on the first floor. But um, and, and you'll use the existing foundation? The foundation will 100%. At, at this moment, I plan on keeping it because the footprint is significant. It's like 57 by 29. And do you anticipate uh, trenching around the existing foundation and put in ceiling, or do you know yet? I, I've never dug around an existing building. There, there is the potential, which I will be happy to work with Chuck and and you on the best place to discharge water if there's a be dry system may be required. Uh, Do you know, know if there's water in the basement? There, there was some water, uh, but my, my way of looking at it is that uh, I, I, I keep 
can't sell a home in the you know eight hundred thousand range and let somebody worry about if water is going to get in the basement. That basement has very nice ceiling height and beautiful. You know when it gets replaced, a lot of windows. Um, but uh, that, so that that's but, but something you, I need to deal with. But you think you you anticipate dealing with the water issue with a a sump pump rather than trying to reseal the outside of the foundation? I, I've never dealt with it that way. I generally my way is I finance it and I let the builders, my my two builders, <coughs> deal with those issues. But I would probably do it internally. In the basement, I, I would just uh, suggest that if you do anticipate excavating around that foundation, to do any waterproofing, that you come back for plan change. Uh, on what time? Uh, come back to this commission. Yeah, for I would love to. Change. Yeah, uh, but I, I don't anticipate. Okay. I've done about six projects, and I've never needed to do that. <coughs> if, if for some reason it was required, I would certainly, you know, come and talk to you. Good. I, I want to do everything right, and uh, I care about the environment. Well, we Just to make a point of clarification here, um, Mr. Alley is only requesting three things. Um, so anything else, uh, or anything that's not on the plan, you would come back for. So you can see. you explain those three things? Because yeah. I have a... Uh, yeah, more I, than three. Yeah, I do you have more than three? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's proposed. Stall the deck, expand the garage, What about the first farmhouse porch or four sawmill tubes? Uh, there, there is in this design here. There is a farmhouse porch in the front. Okay. And, and there's also the demolition of the existing house. Now, well, when you, the, right now it's a ranch, right? So the only thing, but you're you're right. There will be removal of the roof in the in significant removal. Uh, how can I address those concerns? Just describe that's what you're going to do. Okay. Uh, I haven't had to come to this committee before. Uh, I have dealt with wetland in North Reading, but I, again, not, I'd be happy to amend the request. Um, usually on the demolition, we did put the silk fence up in anticipation of this, uh, working with uh, the neighbor on the left. Right. We saw that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, yeah. Normally, though, the builders I work with are high quality and would be very careful to make sure no debris would ever get beyond the silk fence. I, I am, uh, besides taking care, care of two little grandchildren three days a week, one and four, but I, I don't have a regular job, so I will spend time at the project and, and make sure. It, I am not a, a builder, though, but I will be there to make sure it gets done right. I, I guess my question, my questions are, uh, Kind of did. I, I'd like to ask Chuck oh, on the proposed deck. He's putting it on sawmill tubes. So would you consider that a pervious area? He's putting in a deck, and would I consider sawmill tubes pervious? No, no. The the deck. So could the water go through and go underneath? I'm sure the farmer porch has a roof. We're not talking about uh, the farmer porch. The deck is considered pervious because we're using sonic tubes. Only if it has open flossy. So, well, if that's the case, then it seems to me as though there's more impervious surface um, being proposed than being removed. So is that? It's not riverfront. Yeah, but it's more more runoff. It'll create more runoff. Well, this is true, but it's usually you do that that swapping calculation with impervious and non-impervious when you're talking about riverfront. Yeah, well, we, t we do it in the buffer zone too. So I think um, if we could have a infiltration system for the roof runoff, the dry well type system, I think that would compensate for the increase in impervious area. I, I can reduce the size of, of the deck. I, 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 I don't think that's necessary. No. I'd, I'd rather see is going to some type of infiltration system like a, uh, oh, a dry well. Yeah. There's a, based on my rough <coughs> observation of spot elevations, I, I would guess the wetlands are around 
close to 96 feet elevation and and the grade around the house is between 101 and 103 so that gives that gives that gives what seven <coughs> five to seven feet elevation change between groundwater and so that should be plenty of uh, I think that's sufficient yeah. for but uh, that's but then but that doesn't include basement but the infiltration system would be exterior outside ex of the basement, right? I right, I understand that. I'm just, um, you know, I just thought I'd <coughs> throw that in there. Um, the the reason we're asking for that um, is to help to explain. Right now, the water that falls where that um, proposed deck is, or where the expanded driveway is, or where the farmer porch is. Or the garage is that rainwater falls, goes into the groundwater, and is stored in the groundwater. And then when the water in the wetland gets low, that groundwater feeds the wetland and keeps it healthy. Okay. Um, but by, by providing a pervious surface, that water no longer can get into the groundwater and be stored until the dry period. But if you put in your infiltration system, we're we're uh, replicating what Mother Nature does. We're storing that water in the groundwater so it can feed the wetland, keep it healthy in the dry period. Okay. So, so let me ask: Why are you proposing an infiltration system versus, um, you know, um, some? I would imagine infiltrating closer to the street would be more beneficial for longer retention times and um, longer travel times. So and and you know, so I guess drainage ditch between the two houses. On the Bonnetsport side. On the east side, the uh, page right. Yes. Mm -hmm. on the east side. Um, oh. There's a there's a drain. Is it a swale? Is it a, a swale? It's a chant. Okay. Yeah. And it feeds it feeds the uh, the wetland. Yeah. Do, uh, I mean, what my suggestion would be to uh, um, talk to Jack Sullivan about what he would suggest because he knows the site pretty well as okay. far as infiltrating the roof run off. I don't know, but Jack could probably tell you yeah, how yeah. to um, I mean, currently, my numbers so far don't leave me any crop. It, it is possible if I find the right builder, I will leave it a ranch and, and, and uh, you know, go forward right. that way. But, right. uh, you know, I, I, I am trying to make a profit, so, but I would love to, uh, I, I, have, I will talk to Jack Sullivan tomorrow. He want to know, he'll want to know the results. I mean, I, I guess I'm just going to ask what what urges you to in, to suggest an infiltration basin versus some channelized some you know downspout um, some you know uh, some sort of other roof to ground uh, it, infiltration. If Jack can come up with some uh, crutch tone type system that would accomplish that, that, that certainly could be uh, that could work. Just some type of yeah, yeah. I just assume it's your professional, you know, expertise. That's that you see something in this plan that tells you, well, we're, boy, we're, we really need an infiltration basin. Well, yeah. as Becky pointed out, we're increasing the impervious surface. Yeah. And we're pretty we're thirty six feet from the from the wetland. We're pretty close. Becky, did you measure out the 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 removal of the concrete patio as well? You know and. Yeah. Do that. Do that sort of. It's not rough calc. I yeah. The concrete was quite large on that left hand side. To be honest with you, I have yeah, it's, uh, it's um, sixteen yeah, by twenty three. <laughs> I bet you did. I just was wondering what that was. So you're only trying to pick up the half the garage and the farmer's porch because the, is the deck in the walkway? The deck open. The boards have slots. Well, that's what I was going to say. Uh, I think they do. I mean, the, 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 rain, the rain doesn't sit on a deck. No, there's right? different decking material out yeah. there now. You can have it tight up against it, or you can have those gaps. So yeah. you need that. I mean, if that would help, I could certainly talk to when we build the deck to have the, the 
minimum gap to have the water go through, that would be the preference? What I was doing was trying to look at what I thought was pervious, which was the proposed deck and farmer's market, the farmer's porch. Gotcha. And that was 444, 192. Yeah. And then we had the garage also. Yeah, yeah, and I was only doing anything within 100 feet. I didn't do right, 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 um, right, right, which makes sense. This isn't, Chuck, it, this isn't it seemed to an be aquifer be. protection district. I'm sorry, Becky, to interrupt. This isn't a APD, aquifer protection district. I don't believe it is. I, um, yeah, it, yeah, so it's that not. No. And there's a section of that walkway also that's being removed. Right. Right. And I tried to do the plus and minus. Yeah. When I, when I did that, I, I came up with 692 versus 677. Uh, 677 was a removal of the impervious surfaces, 692, but I didn't include the deck for the farmer's porch. So. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I guess maybe I didn't read this closely enough. I was a little surprised to hear that the whole building was going to come down. <laughs> I, I'm not sure of the whole building, okay. but I did 34 Batchelder, which was my first large project, and we, you know, we work. It, it, they leave the walls, but I don't know if you know, you know. The, the bottom line is it, it's kind of, uh, if I want to use loosely, sometimes kind of a joke that they keep some Stunts. portion of the wall just to get away with something and then they, everything else is new. I, I, you know, when it, it's like a new home, but there's some rule that if you leave up a wall, it helps. But, but it's, certain the amount same, of framing. it's the same footprint, so it, you know, yeah. it's not right. changed. Right. Right. But, but right. because of the insulation codes, and, and uh, other things, it, it really, you can't leave the old walls. There's no insulation, that, you right. know what I mean? Right. And, and say I'm putting up uh, right. final siding or other things, it, it, it really. Right. My, my concern about that is that it's a fairly major construction project. If you're gonna tear down all, or almost all of that, you're gonna be building a whole new two-story building. So it's gonna be a construction site, and, and we make specifications um, in, in the approval that construction materials be stored outside of the buffer right. zone and things like okay. that. Construction I, I'm access happy to do to anything you request there. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of my reasons is coming at this earlier date is if I don't get approval, then I'm, I'm in trouble. You know where you're at. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. If I have a yeah. one-car garage, yeah. no deck. Right. So I was hoping we could at least get preliminary. My other thought is I am working with these two builders to come up with a a reasonable budget because if I keep the foundation they can actually start work in January yeah and so so are you do you know excuse me do you know at this point whether or not you will keep the foundation at this point I would like to keep the foundation that's your point. It, it is okay. less cost uh, it's, it's, it's a simpler project um, personally I don't know if I need a 3200 square foot house so I, I'm working to get a budget that makes sense keeping the foundation right Right. From to, to answer your question, I don't see anything in the proposed plan that is inconsistent with the state or town weather regulations. Okay. It, the, the, only, that, that's the only area I, I will just raise the only area of, by my opinion that is gets a little bit it's the most dicey part of right. the construction is every was the area that's closest to the 35 foot no structure i mean the house corner yeah, according to the plot plan is like Sullivan right like right on the you know line. is a sneeze away from the yeah, 35 yeah. Wasn't good to see. foot um you know and so so technically you are out um you know but it it um and if the foundation stays then there's a high degree of confidence i can have that the <coughs> future construction off that foundation is going to remain 35 feet away, Absolutely. you know what I'm saying? And uh, and then there's the bulkhead, I assume the bulkhead that looks to be close to that 35 foot no structure. I'm not sure. Um, well, it's near, oh, oh, I, see. Yeah, I would I assume it's a bulkhead. Yeah, um, I mean, I wouldn't mind, sometimes I change yeah. bulkheads and put what they kind of refer that's, as a doghouse. Right, I right, right. I mean, if you refurbishes the doors or, you know, replace, yeah. or, you know, whatever. But yeah. if that's getting rebuilt. Well, there's certainly gonna be some traffic there will. Building from the yeah. foundation up, up on the second floor. So, so, so it's one wall up, so it's considered a lead model. 
Yeah. I'm not sure that works anymore. We actually discussed that um, this afternoon. Um, is, is it existing still, lawn? With all that, it's kind of, a, kind of an erosion control project. And yep. the ground disturbance, other than foot traffic, is going to be where the deck is and in front of the building between the Yes, room exactly. And or on the, the west work. side. Yeah, and staging yep. area, there's plenty yep. of room in the front. Yep. Yep. Um, <coughs> Is this back area? I'm sorry, I wasn't at the site. Yeah, is it yeah. its lawn? There is some lawn, yes, before it decreases and goes down towards the wetland. There is yep. some. Yep. I mean, I, I just want to throw one other thing. If for some reason I can't make this work and then I have to reapply to take the house down, I would move the foundation away from that 35 foot area. By at least enough, but I, I certainly don't hope to go that direction. Right. Well, you know, if I made it a smaller, right. like if I went 2,700 right. instead of 3,200. But and but as this lot looks like most lots in Reading, right. you're starting to play around with setbacks from different. Actually, ends. if you look at that, I, I hit every setback, 15 feet on each side. You're and, and congratulations. The actually, <laughs> I know. The, the front it's a actually, challenge sometimes. The only one I'm not adhering to is the, it's 90 feet wide versus. Yeah. Um, but um, one other thing, uh, when when we write this up, Chuck, let's put in our standard clause that uh, in perpetuity there'll be no removal of healthy trees between the structure and the uh, wetland. Well. You think this won't be recorded, but I can put it in. Okay. Since it's and not a notice of intent. Trim some branches on the trees. Trim the branches. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Trim branches, or you know, have trees. Treated for health, you know. I right, think, right, I, yeah. you know, with approval. Right. I, yeah. I, you know, we like to be okay. notified. But the reason we say that is because in the past we have been naive and we've approved projects that come right up to 35 feet, and then people come back three or four years later and say, well, "Boy, that tree's too close, close to our house, so we want to cut down that tree," and they cut down all the trees and that right. setback. So mm -hmm. we want to make sure mm -hmm. that people understand if they're going to build right up to that 35 feet if there's a tree close to it that tree is going to stay there okay they can't right. come yeah. back later and yeah. want to remove that tree yeah. if they don't want to be close to that tree then they need to move the house back okay yeah. I, 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 so uh, just one more thought um i don't know what the house looks like uh, as far as the new house he's designing but i'm assuming anything on the front is going to go off the driveway toward the road if it's going to go what off the driveway towards the road, and then the farmer's porch could be, um, so if, if you pitch the gutters so they drain into that swale um, at 111 4th Street and on the back also, would that satisfy um, the recharge that you're, you're seeking? Maybe yeah, the one I, in the front? And I, I didn't notice that swale. Did you notice it? It's there? on the, I didn't no, see that. it's, did you, I didn't see it at all. did you walk that side? Or I did thought you? I did, but we can go over any time. The swale's <laughs> on the uh, town. Yeah, no, I think we did. I think we walked um, around the left side. And it is there. Yeah. Okay. I also brought copies of Nancy's preliminary drawing. That's if anybody wants to. It, I mean, Thanks. It, We're just interested in the footprint, yeah. I think, <laughs> and it, some it, of the it, construction it, methods. It, it, yeah. Some of the things like the people of them and Van Norden have done pretty successfully, rather than putting gutters, actually save you money is put in a uh, crushed stone trench so the water runs off the roof into that crushed stone trench and that serves the same purpose and you don't have to pay for the gutters well and it doesn't like to put gutters up well, but well it, particularly if he's not going to put gutters up perfectly we then. want that that yeah. uh, crushed stone trench so that the water comes off the roof goes into that crushed stone trench and it, it's held in the groundwater then rather than running off. And Maybe yeah. what we could do is I could work with Chuck on some of the detail on these issues. Yeah, Chuck mm -hmm. or Jack. Uh, Jack yeah. Well, Jack would have to draw it on the plan if you're going to do that. But your your project that you looked at a few times down the street, that cul-de-sac, used that same method okay. instead of gutters. Okay. Instead of gutters? Instead of they gutters. They had no gutters at all? No, they right. did the crush no. on. It's a cleaner look, too. Well, it's a cleaner look, and you know, a homeowner doesn't have to think, mm -hmm. oh, I gotta do the gutters. You know? No maintenance. No maintenance, yeah. you know, so. Okay, if it works, I'm all in yeah. favor of it. Uh, but, uh, is it, I'm not sure how this works. Is it possible that 
with the financing that I could start work in January? In January, probably not. We probably think we have to continue this hearing. We do? In our next meeting. We do, to get a little bit more information um, so from you. you. Would you consider a, a, con, uh, a conditional approval? Well, uh, as amended, kind of situation as amended, provided we have a plan. It seems like we're looking for some sort of trench drainage system, which Bill seems to like. I don't know what else came up other than that. Well, um, it seems to me that may, maybe I'm mishearing, but there's some uncertainty whether or not you can use the existing foundation. No, I, I'm saying if the budget makes sense to me, I have the financing, I would like to, uh, it, we're probably, you know, we're almost Christmas, so we're probably yeah. not talking. To, I just want to know what your rough idea or when I could say to a builder, let's say, for instance, the first step would be the demolition. Right. When do you think it would be reasonable that I could, uh, especially in the winter, a lot of contractors have less work. Yeah. So I would like, I just don't, I'm ready to start and I'd, I'd like to. Uh, do you have your building permit? No, I do not. But I'm, I'm, I'm working on coming up with a budget. All, all I'm asking is what do you think is reasonable? But for a start date. Also, Jamie, he's this permit doesn't cover removing the foundation. You know, right, this right, is something right else now, we discussed this afternoon. That's what, where I was going with my three points, which maybe is four or five now, but still, taking the foundation out is clearly not covered in this permit. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, the only new thing that, that seems to have come up that the commission didn't understand was whether he's taking it down, taking the roof off and building up, Maybe that's what people thought, or he's going down to that first level of the foundation and building up from there. But still, there's no more ground disturbance. Right. So we could. Right. I mean, we could just write whatever the concerns are in there. Um, if it's if it's just a few. I I don't have any issue with, um, you know, approving the uh, approving the work granted. Those, that additional information is provided to you, Chuck. Um, well, if, yeah. I, you know, I think, I think I it's think okay if he agrees on the, on the, the uh, infiltration. I, I'd like to read it before I vote on it. Okay. Well, I was going to say, we have to sign it anyway. Yeah, and the conditions of those that you mentioned, um, what, what would the others be? Uh, Some additional infiltration information. Some additional infiltration. Um, and make it clear that if the fan, if, the, if this if approval is only for using the existing foundation, absolutely, yep, and absolutely. No, no excavation around the foundation except to put in the drip trench or the sauna tubes for the right for the for the decking, and that all work, all uh, material storage is outside of the. Hun we usually say outside foot. of the buffer zone, but okay. I'm not sure you can do that on this lot. Uh, There's what about uh, you know, it's possible I have a very good relationship with uh, the neighbor since I purchased it from him. He has a large driveway. Is it, are you talking about the dumpsters? The dumpsters, the storage of equipment. Uh, any well, any I think oils there may be room in the front fuels on, on the left where we take out the patio. And maybe if necessary, I'll... I'll the well, patio that patio is in the was in the hundred foot. Maybe as long as you're on the upgrading side of the house, even though it's in the buffer zone, you have the house between your area of activity and your wetland. The goal, be okay with that. the goal of that is just to keep anything that could contaminate the wetlands as I far away from the great. wetlands, you know, to avoid spills and slips. And yeah, one thing I'd be happy to do is... Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. Don't, you don't want to contaminate a hazardous no, waste I, site I, here. I, I, no, I, we don't either. Contaminate hazardous waste site? <laughs> right, from, from <laughs> some oil spilled oh, or, right, stuff, or from gasoline being spilled. Or, do, you, um, do you know if there's a cesspool on this property? I should. I do not think there is, but they're, they're, no, they're actually in the basement. There's piping going in the back. So they're probably, like in my own house in Child Street, there could be a, a septic tank in the back that, you know, have, I, is that an issue? That has to be closed back. The yeah. plumbing goes yeah. to the sewer right now. So okay. they've changed oh. it to the front. I thought you were asking if there is one buried in the back. I in was, my own I house was in Child Street, 
There's still one in the back, yeah. Yeah, I'm always asking that question, but that's part of the building permit, I think, isn't it? That it has to be closed down? I'm uh, not entirely well, it's sure. it's closed down. It's a matter that it have to be removed. Never no, they usually just uh, punch a hole closed, in it and fill it. Oh, okay. Well, they would be, you know. If we know for certain it's been closed, <coughs> then that's well, not the it. Well, the plumbing only goes to the front. You can see that visibly in, yep. in, the, in the basement. Yeah. Okay. Uh, when, when is your next meeting? It's the 14th of January. Totally yeah. honest with you. I mean, so say, say I say, well, that's probably fine, right? If that meeting went well, how long would it take then to say I could start work? Good for the Ten days. Ten days. Ten days, which is the typical right. sort of, uh, what's the right word? It gives <laughs> people a chance Grace to, period. Uh, Appeal. Appeal. Yeah. I think uh, I would really appreciate if you could do some kind of conditional on tonight to but that most likely I would not start in, into probably mid-January. But if I had to go out to the beginning of February, I was hoping to have something done for what they call the spring market. And, and I, I'm uncomfortable I approving it until we've read, until I've read what, the, what the document says. E even on the demolition side? Demolition might be the biggest part of the project. Um, any other comments or questions about this at this point? No? Any from the public? Any comments or questions about this project? No? I'll make Bob Takash. Um, yeah, Could you Dave please? On the, uh, yeah, please address, say your ad address. Bob Takash, 111 Forest Street. Thank you. Still on the bus. Uh, Frank, I mean, overall, everything, I think all I'm going to do is just repeat what you all have been saying. Uh, I mean, the project's a great project. The house is a nice store. It'd be great if got improved going forward. I was really showing up tonight just to confirm that it's the existing footprint and, and, and the things between the two houses, the, uh, the gully between the two houses sort of stays the same going forward. And that seems to be the conditions you're talking about. And yes. That's what everyone is agreeing to, so it yes. all sounds okay. Yep. Um. So I move we, no, we don't, it's not a hearing. We don't have to continue, right? It's just an RDA. It's an RDA, right. Right, but we should, we could, you know, at least procedurally move to continue it. Sure, and um, Chuck, if you can get that back in advance, we will read it. Then we, if you're in agreement with everything we've said, um, then we should put no other issues on the 14th. Okay. Are you um, just so just to move this forward? Um, it sounds like there's been some concerns raised tonight um, by the commission. Maybe some data gaps, some information that it'd be good if it. I know you're kind of playing this sort of chicken and egg thing with this that, you know, you're not sure how to proceed. It depends on what we say. Um, but if you can go forward with your best concept of what what's going to happen here and provide some of those, a little bit of additional details about the drainage. Um, um, do I need to go over the points to see drainage? I'm oh, sorry. Um, um, so infiltration. So no gutters, drainage trench, um, the, cre the tree cutting um, verbiage we have, which Jamie mentioned. Um, there will be no excavating the ground or digging out the foundation. Uh, all storage and stockpile needs to be outside. The, uh, the well, it might be impossible, but in, in the front of the house is right. as far forward as possible. And I wrote, um, you know, given the fact that you know, we're not just taking the roof off and this is a bigger project. I'm going to require a more substantial erosion control than just silk fence. Yeah, so. and also along that ditch, yep. we need the erosion control. All that. So, okay. I appreciate your time. Okay, and, um, and we'll see you on the 14th. Yep. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay, um, let's take it the matter of the request for determination of applicability for 14-19-0 Birch Meadow Drive. Um, we have <coughs> Mr. Halsey. Yes. Feel free to, uh, thank you for waiting through all that. Um, do you want to discuss or present? 
certain. Are you representing um, the Babe Ruth League? Yes, I, my name is John Halsey. I live at 75 Hoover Road. Okay. And I'm here in representation of the project to install dugouts at the baseball field, the Morton, it's known as Morton Field, uh, at Birch Meadow. Uh, currently, um, there are benches there, uh, and the benches are interesting because anybody that has utilized that field in 
you know, realizes that two things are probably true. The bleachers were probably put a little bit too close to home plate. Boomer Madonna was probably going to be good for the fans. Um, frankly, the benches were probably put a little too close to the field, so the idea of moving them back um, is going to be helpful, you know, just from a safety standpoint. And then the concept of actually enclosing all the equipment, enclosing, you know, the players, um, yeah. it just kind of makes the whole thing work really um, a lot better. And so the, you know, as you see there, the goal is really to um, create an environment where the players are safer, the fans are safer. Um, everybody kind of wins in the deal. The town is not, this is something that the town is going to have to address. It was actually, if you look at the plan for the Birch Meadow project, which I have been in front of town meeting and which have, you know, have been, for lack of probably capital spending, have been delayed in some period of time. On the capital plan, I think you'll find that dugouts were designed to be a portion, you know, you know something that the town would absorb. So this is one, one less thing as a result of the private-public partnership that the town will have to embrace as far as cost is concerned. This was a presentation that was made to the Recreation Committee. Um, I was present as the selectman liaison at that time, and the selectman received a presentation from the Reading Bay Group, I believe, and, or not the selectman, but the Recreation Committee. They unanimously approved what you see in front of it. But, um, however, they said you need to go see the selectman, and that's the next thing because <coughs> it's a gift. And that has to be accepted, number one. And, you know, it's got to be something that makes some sense. Um, and so that was, came before the selectmen, same group, presenting really what you're seeing here right now. Um, and that was unanimously accepted and not only approved, but great thanks was presented by all selectmen for the fact that the, the Reading Bay Group really was stepping up. So um, they did say, the selectmen did at that time, that you know, their, their condition was, we know that there's, you know, there's a wet place over there. Um, and nobody was really sure how exactly how close it was, at least from the selectmen. But the selectmen deferred to conservation uh, to take a look at it. So that's kind of why we're here today. And you know, I felt like, as the liaison to the recreation who approved this unanimously, and as one of the selectmen who approved it unanimously, it would be a good idea for me to kind of, you know, and as a member of the board of directors of Reading Bay Group, who's actually going to execute the process, it seemed to make some sense for me to be the better person. It's, it's good. It's a good multi-purpose fit. It, I think. Yes. I think. Yeah. Yes. My being here is a good yeah. fit. I yeah. do have the president of Bay Group here with me, okay. uh, Jeff Pierce, that could answer any questions okay. that you might want to raise for him. Uh, naturally, he's a very interested party, you know. And as as the last gentleman pointed out, you know, this is some of these projects can be done in the winter. And the idea of this project, um, we're told by our by the vendor of choice that this is a project that actually fits nicely in January. Okay. Um, so we'd like to get it done so that um, if nothing else, um, the pad is poured. The piping is ready, you know, maybe it just gets finished, you know. When you say piping, what do you mean? Well, if you take a look at the, the piping, meaning the pipes that come out of the concrete that actually hold the chain line. Oh, the structure. Yeah, You're yeah the structure. The I call it piping because it's, it's that's what actually Vertical holds pipes. the chain line. But yeah. there's no under, there's no water, there's no, there's no, there's no okay. underground piping going on that's moving gotcha. water or anything like that. This is strictly a, you know, a dugout as you see it right there. And are there any, do you, do you happen to know, I, I want to start, um, thank you for that introduction. Um, I want to start with site visits. Um, can you give a site visit report just for the sake of bringing it, it up? Or um, when you went sure. there. Sure, I'll, um, I'll take a shot go at ahead. Go ahead. Terry, oh, that's really good. Um, yeah, our site visit revealed that um, the situation was as depicted in that. Uh, in the RDA, and um, a couple things we noted. One is that the zone of natural vegetation, well, let me back up. Um, a 
approximately 25 feet, plus or minus maybe 30, 35 feet from the um, stands and from the proposed location of the dugout, there is a um, uh, intermittent stream and bank. Uh, we didn't notice any boring vegetated wetlands. It's just a bank and a stream. Um, there is, for the most for that distance behind the stands and the proposed dugout, there really is no zone of natural vegetation. There's clearing right up to the bank of that intermittent stream. So it's grass. It's grass. Yeah, it's landscaped. It's landscaped. So right what we thought that made sense, since we are moving closer to that stream with these new structures, that we provide a, um, a zone of natural vegetation that the town stopped cutting grass right up to the bank. There's actually, um, it doesn't show on this aerial, but probably 10 feet from the bank or so, there are a few trees okay. which form a natural area. And if we just don't cut between those trees and the bank, natural vegetation will come up. It will keep uh, people from um, trading on the bank, yeah. causing it to erode and collapse. So it'll just yep. be a natural barrier what a zone of natural vegetation is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. So we thought that made sense. The other thing was there appears to be a, uh, just as this dugout is not really a dugout, there's a bullpen, which is really not a pen, but rather a, uh, a plate and a mound. Right. So, and that plate and mound is angled so that the plate is just a few feet from that, um, from that uh, intermittent stream that is correct. We thought it would make sense and you wouldn't even have to move really the man. You could just change the orientation and move that plate so that that line of pitching is parallel to the third base. Well you would have you would have to completely take the mound down and redo it if you were going to do that. The way the mound is built the way a, a, a pitcher's mound is built is built into an angle. Now that that particular mound is Longer than there any of us have been around. Mm -hmm. and it probably went into the lake. So we, we thought it would be a good uh, uh, part of the project to move that whole plate a little bit away from the intermittent stream for the same reason. Because I'm sure the balls go into the stream. We actually saw one in there. They go into the stream. Many get the go stuff. into the stream. So by, by moving that away from the stream, we would uh, decrease the traffic on that bank. Well, what happens, just you know, as a matter of practicality, just so you understand exactly how that mound and plate have been there literally probably for since the late 50s would be my guess. Um, when, when that is in use, there are screens that are used. And, and you know, if you have <coughs> baseball screens, you know, during batting practice get moved in front of the pitcher to get moved out, you know. And those screens then are taken off the field to put behind the backstop. And then when we have pitchers and catchers you know who are warming up they carry those over so that the baseballs that go into the stream are batted balls that come off of a they're, they're they really hard the balls that come off of that mound and you know i mean that is a that particular project is probably just based on my knowledge of uh taking a mound down and <coughs> reorienting it um, probably a six to $8,000 project. I mean, it's not a small project. Um, and it certainly is not a connector to this thing that we're doing. I mean, and frankly, the, the bleachers, I'm not sure who approved them to go where they are, but they are there and also have been there for decades, um, are not moving any closer. And the dugout itself is not going nearly as far back as the bleachers currently are. So, you know, I mean... Well, according to this drawing, they go going back to where the bleachers are. With, to where the bleachers start. Right, they're not going to the back of the bleachers. This drawing indicates that they are. No, you can talk about towards the stream. Not towards the stream. the stream. They are going towards the stream, right. but they're not going any further than the current bleachers. Right, are. they're going... But there will be more, more structure after this project, there'll be more structure closer to the stream that than is there is now. Yes, 
that is so, so we're looking for some offset, and the things that, that we discussed um, were the natural zone, natural vegetation, and moving that whole plate, because that whole plate's only five feet probably from the intermittent stream. Can I, can I just interject for a second? Sure. I've got an aerial photo here on my uh, iPad. But the, oh, sorry, I'm just moving that so you, you can see. What home plate are you talking about? Are you talking about the home plate, or are you talking no. about these no. two offsets? And you're welcome to approach. Sure. I think he's talking um, about, talking about this one over here. Right. Well, that, I this believe one over that's here. probably the man. So this is the mom. Yep. Yeah. And it pitches to here. And the okay. stream is here. Oh, so this is this is this a bullpen. This is a warm up because it's bullpen. Okay. And what about and so this is the bullpen for this area. This is the bullpen for for this team. For this team. Gotcha. That's this is the bullpen for this team. That's gotcha. Not, that's not an issue. Well, what if? Well, let me. Ask, let me ask you this: What's the hazard of using that same bullpen mount but pitching it simply away? That pitching it away instead of this way, because that it's, way. It's it's not. It slopes. So it slopes. A, so what happens is, the way these mounds are built, they're you know they are higher in the back, and then they pitch like, off of a, a an actual like a wedge. Yeah, like a one. Yes. Gotcha. That's, that's a good way so they angle. They're, the, they're going to angle down. So if you're going to, I mean, but, but the alternative, I, if that's the if that's the only way that these dugouts can go in, you, then what would have to happen is that we'd have to stop using it because the cost would be prohibitive. So, so just to be clear, the cost to regrade this maybe five foot round. It's bigger than that. It's twelve feet. Apart, okay. But it's about it's about six to eight thousand dollars. Get that done so that it has the right angle and that it has the right clay. So you've looked into doing this? Oh, we've done it. We've done it with private funds at Washington Park. We've done it at Simon's Way. We've done it. We've done it on this ballpark right here. I had. I have to say honestly, I had no idea. So just so you would know, that something like that would be that, that expensive. That eight years ago, on this field with private funds, this was never put in correctly. It was never graded correctly. It didn't drain correctly and it didn't have the right clay in it. So in order to let the high school team and all other teams, the Babe Ruth teams, be able to play within 24 hours of a rainstorm and not have ducks swimming around between literally short and second base, 40, about $46,000 was spent to regrade this, pull it up, get it to, get it to grade with a laser. When, when was that done? Eight years ago. Did we issue a permit? It was a permit. It was done through the DPW. I mean, it, and it was it was not. I don't within, remember a permit. I don't for this. remember it either. <laughs> it was it was not within it was not within any of the wetlands. Yeah, I mean, the baseball one. diamond is one, more than 100 feet away. That's an intermittent yeah. stream. Jurisdictional area is only 100 feet. So that's more than 100 feet away from oh, the yes. stream. Yeah. yeah. Because you know, I mean, what's going on here was that had to be done just in order to be able to get. It. So this is not an inexpensive. How much, no, no, how I appreciate, much, I appreciate that. Dugout? Dugouts would probably be about $20,000. Yeah. Yeah. So a mound is half the cost, is the cost of the dugout because you have two dugouts? Do you get the plates? I find that really hard to believe. Well, you can I'm find sorry. it as hard to believe as you want, but I can tell you, having done this most of my life, fixed and reconditioned fields, and having worked with the professionals that do this very recently, mm -hmm. I can tell you that that's, you know, to take a mound, all the way down, regrade it, returning it, and put it back together is a six to eight thousand dollar project. I mean, now the dugouts for twenty thousand dollars, it's a whole different thing because once the dugouts are done, they sit there and they're a relatively new three items. These mounds, on the other hand, are exposed to, other than gotcha. being tarp. They're, I mean, they're exposed to a lot of different things, and so they have to be done right. Is there uh, is there any other alternative you could propose to try and, or uh, do you understand our concern about objects constantly flying into the resource area and being uh, retrieved? Um, well, the and objects that fly in there, you know, do not come from this spot. They from come, the pitching mound. They, they come from. They're foul the, balls. They're foul balls. Um, if I could, John, if I if I could ask sure. you a question, do you think we could get that um, 
We're not talking about moving the man, just reorienting it 15 degrees, 20 degrees. Do you think some town employees could do that for less than $8,000? I don't. I, that's not a job that our guys would probably be able to do that. If you're going to hire, you'd have to hire someone to do that properly. That needs to be surveyed. It needs to be set up. I, I don't force the our guys to do something like that. I'm going to... I'm, I'm going to ask a separate question, um, not, to, not to avoid this topic, because I think it's something to think about long and hard about. Um, but a couple of questions I have about the, um, the benches themselves. Um, so the new benches, the, the platform for the new benches, those are going to be a concrete slab? Yes. Um, do, you, do you happen to know the thickness of that concrete slab and how those are going to be constructed? Is well, that I mean, there'll be, you know, there'll be a, a small, it, when we call it a dugout, it's really a misnomer. It's not really being, it, right, right. it's going to be graded right. about six inches, um, and then there'll be about eight inches of concrete for the building. And okay, so, so it's, it's roughly a six-inch excavation. Yes. Um, and poured in place once the grade is, is laid first, That's and correct. I just wanted to get some idea about what that was. Um, Something else? So it'll come up above grade two or three inches, you know, I mean. Yeah. But it'll be minimally above grade, but it'll be probably about six inches below grade. Okay. Um, just going to make a note of that. Go ahead. Is there any other questions? <coughs> Go, questions. Go ahead. Uh, unfortunately, I apologize. I wasn't there on the site visit. The intermittent stream, where does it get its source? How far up does it go? Uh, I can't tell you how far up it goes, but it drains into Caspian, uh, into that channel adjacent to Caspian Field. Probably some drainage from the neighborhood. Yeah, and it goes, it's a tributary to uh, the Walk, uh, Abergenon. Abergenon, yeah. Abergenon. Do you know the channel that runs next to Caspian Field? So it almost Here. seems like a daylight Caspian right Field. <laughs> Caspian 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 Field. 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 The skating area. Okay. Right off Birch Meadow So Drive. here's the Y. Here's the Y, mm -hmm. First Mountain Drive, there's Caspian. There's a channel, it s starts over by the football field, runs free, then <laughs> runs through a pipe yeah. under right. all of uh, Birch Meadow, and then it surfaces right there around Caspian. It's an open channel here, and this intermittent stream flows into that channel. So it goes here, and then it flows that way? Cut yes. Storm gotcha. Drain, Kay. Hampson Road, or some other road in that area. Is it the start of that intermittent stream there? Pretty, Pretty much close. right there. Is there a provision in the Wetlands Protection Act that a certain amount, it's not a jurisdictional area? Or does our bylaw, and I don't know that either, <laughs> um, include everything? Is it a jurisdictional area? The it stream has a 100 foot jurisdiction, yeah. that's all. Because it's land underwater. And bank. It's not. It's yes. not a perennial stream. It's entering. It's. It's yeah, not. It's not riverfront. So. so it's only going to get 100 feet. So, other than that, I don't know what your question. What your. There's about 30 days when there's actually water on that road. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Wetlands Protection Act. But What's if, your thought? If it's the start of, I thought that there's like 500 feet of start of an intermittent stream did not have to have jurisdiction. Well, it uh, even when it's dry. Technically, did, you, did, did you take a, a soil? Did anybody take a soil for it to see if there were hydrants? We have in the past because we had an issue over on Wood, Woodland. Is that the name of that other street? The dead end there. Woodland dead end, yeah. Yeah, so we had an issue there and Woodland. we determined that intermittent stream was jurisdictional. And there's wetlands education? I that. Adjacent to it, yeah. In the intermittent stream? Do you it, know what it was? I don't remember. I just remember. Are, are you wondering? You're wondering if it, it's even jurisdictional. Yeah, right. Sure. Well, well, the other dugout, of course. When in doubt, doesn't, doesn't will be just further away. I, I've never heard of that. I'll have to look that up. I'm I'm looking it up right now um, just to see if it comes up on Word Search. Wetland Protection Act. Um, but I I don't.
don't know how you could not. I mean, how does that how does that kind of work with everything else we know that the first 500 feet is not intricate? I guess if there's no vegetation, if it's just a swale. So if it if it's a swale, right? That goes into but you know. That's more like a high a swale on a highway. If it's if it's not coming out of a wetland until it gets to a wetland, it's not jurisdictional. It's just. It's just a over, overland flow. Yeah, it's just overland <laughs> flow. But this, this has habitat in it, so it is protected. Right. It's part of the right. interest. Some, all that, you know. So it's not just a grass swale that's right. collecting, you know, surface flow. Yeah. Right. Um, I mean, there were definable banks and water in it. We saw it on Sunday and other times. <coughs> um, I uh, just one more question I have right now about the um, construction in the completed view. Um, it shows additional fen it shows fencing, you know, sort of backstop fencing and that's all there now. That's existing. Yes. Okay. So the so the fencing that would be you're truly we're so this isn't addition you're tying it in. Okay. Fencing. And and I apologize I didn't make no, it to no, site no. visits either. Um. um it sounds like, and, and or at least it's my opinion, you know, some of the primary concerns are proximity to the resource um, and, you know, setting up some sort of um, protection zone between the bank and the area of play so that traffic is minimized, um, disruption, disturbance, and therefore erosion is minimized. Um, as um, you, you certainly at Reading Bay Brew um, have no jurisdiction over what the DPW decides to cut and not cut. I mean, that is out of our, that's totally out of our control. I mean, we have nothing to say about that, actually. Um, so, you know. Yeah, yeah, but it would be, I believe you said the town would be building the, the Bay Brew would give the town a grant and the town would build it. That's not happening. The, the contractor and pay the fee. In other words, we're not writing a check to the town and the town's going to do it. Instead, what they suggested that we do, uh, which is what's been done in the past, you know, with, with the DPW groups, um, will, of course, we work directly with the DPW. In other words, there's proper permitting goes yep. on and so forth. And we have dealt directly with the vendor. That in concert with the DPW, always have. Um, but when it comes to you know, now it's summer and the dugouts are in or they're not, if they're in, I mean, Babe Ruth has no control, nor does the contractor or the vendor. The contractor and vendor is now long gone. And so the request that you make that they stop cutting the grass as close to the ditch, you know, that's yeah. something that. It's out of our control. I understand. Can I, just, just one second. Um, go ahead. I, I, was, I was going to say that um, I think that if we allowed a certain area of the grass in front of that stream to become like a rough area, it would stop some of the balls. But I don't think any foul ball, no, no. matter what we do, is, no. is going to no. it's going to be stopped. <coughs> and as far as that pitching mound goes, it sounds like it's pretty expensive. This this project almost, if those are the actual numbers, doesn't justify such, uh, you know, such an allocation of money for, for one thing, but maybe a condition that kind of protected what's over there, or maybe some planting we can work on <coughs> with the DPW department. Um, and I just want to remind everybody that these, there is a safety issue going on here. I mean, those are open benches that are there now. And this is an enclosed area, it's a safety factor. You're moving a bench, are you moving that stands over six feet or so? I don't know what the material is underneath there, but there's something underneath there. Concrete. Concrete. And so Concrete. it's going to be moved back. So six feet of this is actually impervious already. Right, because it's so packed. Yeah. Right. And there might and there might it's a it's right. a ball field. Right. I mean I right. I agree that it's something to be concerned about, but when we went there and walked this off. It is more than 35 feet away. There is room for a vegetated natural area, whatever that is. 
And I think that if if we got an agreement, because it's hard to control the guys on the lawnmowers, we got an agreement to try to create this unmowed or this non-mowing area, that would be a great thing, because I'd like to extend that to every other place that we want protected in town. I think yep. John gets what we're talking about now. Yep. Yep. So. Well, I think, I think, well, um, I was going to say your idea of, in addition to not planning, not mowing, I think your idea about uh, doing some planning and have the same contractor that built these dugouts do the plannings or part of the same contract, I think that's appropriate. Yeah, because that, I mean, it, whatever can be kept out of there. I mean, obviously, it, it probably should be cleaned up every once in a while if there's so many balls in there, but I'm sure all those neighbors oh, kids are grabbing them. No, what happens is, I mean, I'll tell you exactly what happens. Kids chase them and pick them up, and then when the kid and there is, there are two retired gentlemen from Reading that come down after every single game and try to pick up every single ball Hello. and then try to Thank sell you. them back to the. To the <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. Recycle every day of the summer. Okay. That's exactly what happens. So there are <laughs> citizens who have nothing to do with baseball who. Pick yes. the bushes gotcha. for, for yeah. baseball. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Terry, did yeah. you have a comment? Or? No, I think Jane covered everything I was going okay. to add into it. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments from the public? George, sure. did you want to add something? Yeah, the only thing that's bad, Jim, all I wanted to say is, you know, and it's been a month and a half since I'm down there, maybe even two months, and, and, I, and I really don't remember, because I actually was down there with Chuck when uh, Little League was showing us what they want to do. I mean, Babe Ruth. And, um, paced off the distance to the brook. And I do recall some trees there. I don't remember how many are there or how far apart they are, but they cut that area with a gang mower. So I mean, they're gonna just take the line of the tree. So I mean, if, if it looks like this, you know, I, I don't, I just can't visualize right now from my recollection. And you, you were just there, so obviously you know better. But it, I, it was cut it, toward third base. It wasn't cut, and there was natural vegetation, but as you move back towards home plate, it was cut right up to the bank. That's because there's no trees there. You know, from where you're talking right. about, you're right. Okay. There are trees that so start you're standing there's some trees that actually are. Because I know when I paced off, I walked right by a tree, and I just can't remember how many of them were there. So yeah. I, I just... Understood. Well, I, I think... I think that what we're kind of missing at this point, kind of moving forward, I, I don't see... I don't see any uh, issue with, you know, the, the actual um, dugouts themselves. Um, the only issue I, I see that's still somewhat unresolved is the, um, an area of a couple of additional plants, an additional planting zone. And that has to be sort of, you know, drawn out, sketched, or, you know, put on a map so that after the fact, you know, there's a there's a picture to compare against reality about whether um, you know the conditions were met or not. So I you think follow. That, um, I do think that it's onerous to ask a benefactor uh, who's bringing private money to defer public spending to come out of pocket further. going to exist, whether or not those dugouts go there or not. Um, you know, I, I don't see that they're related, I, and I don't know that we need to, I mean, I, I have a sense that there's a negotiation going on here, and I'm not sure that one's connected to the other. Um, now, there is a reality. There's a reality that that's a baseball park that has been for over 50 years, and it gets used a certain way. Those benches are where they are, and they're probably not in a good place from safety standpoint and the fact that we've got you know a private nonprofit stepping up to defer you know I, community expense I think is is monumental and to ask them to come further out of pocket to hire yet another contractor who's going to have the contractor that's being hired does fence and concrete he is you know he does not do you know conservation planting. Now, if we need to do that as a matter of course, if the Conservation Commission, you know, needs to step up and say, 
at Birch Meadow where the baseball field is, there is an issue tied to the stream. Okay, uh, but I, I kind of don't see that being connected to this. Um, and if you know the conservation well, commission would want um, there to be some limitation to the use of the current bullpen that's been there for 50 years, then that's a really a different issue too. Okay, just to sort of explain where I see that we're at, and please, you know, speak up, other commission members, and check if if. I'm not surmising this correctly. Um, you've come before us. Clearly, it's 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 um, a very generous benefactor, um, and that is not lost on us. Um, you know, and the goals and the aims that you're trying to achieve are benefit the town, and that is not lost on us. Um, the purview of this commission, though, is to protect the resource area as best as possible. So from our standpoint, um, you know, one of the aspects of what you want to do is to move those benches closer to the resource area, which will increase erosion around those pens. The foot traffic will probably be increased closer you know, in, in practice, and um, <laughs> just in practice, when you walk around these bullpens, you know, and maybe, not the bullpens, I'm, I'm misspeaking, forgive me, the but dugouts, dugout, um, too caught up in different words. Um, so, so, you know, they'll be going past those dugouts to get to, um, you know, the public seating areas, um, you know. I'll probably be there with my kids enjoying a wonderful baseball game and my kids are going to be running amok <laughs> gleefully and happily between those benches and wherever the woods begin um, you know freely as they should on a on public land um, the conservation hat I'm wearing and where I'm coming from as chair is you know the what we're constantly seeing and what we're constantly uh, faced with, more often than not, is um, projects that come before us that reduce the natural habitat area and reduce the natural vegetated space in town. And the net effect of that is there's more infiltration of water. There's more water getting into the ground. There's more water going to channels in town. There's higher groundwater tables. Uh, there's more erosion. Um, there's more wet basements. You know, and so it may seem like an insignificant request, or, or, you know, in terms of like, wow, they're not going to get a lot if they ask for a couple of plantings, you know, behind, between the dugout and the top of that stream. Um, but a little bit here and there adds up to benefit the storm damage this town takes during real intense rainstorms. Um, and um, a couple of plantings could include, um, it's not a $1,000 uh, cost question. It would be a couple of hundred dollars for a couple of woody shrubs or a couple of small trees. Is, is that reasonable to state? Um, and in the big picture of the total funding, it's really a small percentage. You know, it's not doubling anything, it's not tripling anything, and it will benefit the town from a habitat perspective. So just just for explanation and to try and put our spin on it. Go ahead, Jamie. I would concur with uh, what you say, what you said, and that add to it, that in most, if not all cases, private applicant comes to us on their own property and wants to encroach or, or build closer to the wetlands, uh, we almost always um, have the condition that they're planning on the edge of the wetlands to provide additional protection. So consistent with what we typically do, uh, requiring plannings of a, uh, in that area would be very consistent with our normal with our, with our typical practices. With our typical practices. And we've always been very careful, or tried to be, not to impose less stringent requirements 
on the town than we do on private applicants. So I think that's important here also. Yeah, I'd like to point out also that um, these dugouts are going to push the foot traffic right up against the stream. It's already it's a small area, and and also you're going to get 360 square feet of um, impervious, which is going to push all the runoff more. Um, so that's going to lap, increase foot traffic, and the fact that they have that impervious place right next to it is going to increase the damage of right along there. So I think that's where we need something as a buffer. Right. I think so. So, uh, yes. Go ahead. Um, first of all, I understand where you're coming from. Um, I, you know, I, if I somehow came across disrespectfully, it wasn't that. That wasn't intended. That wasn't. That wasn't Good. really. Um, I guess. Secondly, one of the things that's important to understand is how that exact space is used on a day-to-day -day basis. So currently, not having a dugout there causes the players and the equipment find its way 10 or 15 or 20 feet back from the benches. Sure. And so what happens is not only do you have the fans <coughs> that come around the back to go to the seating area, you also have players and all the equipment that end up finding their way back 10 or 15 or 20 feet closer to the screen every day, multiple times. When the dugouts go in, all of those players at a time on a team and all their equipment will actually be moved further away from the stream. Yeah, I don't want to talk about the baseball players. I just think about foot traffic with the kids running around. Yeah, now the foot traffic, and that's, to be honest with you, there's, as you point out, Scam, it's, it's active. Because when right. kids are dying, and you know yeah. what? That is, that's kind of the, the goal. You don't have baseball games about kids running around. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, and I've been to I've been to hundreds of games in that location, and the more times that the kids are running around, the better I like it personally. It adds to the enjoyment of the whole thing, if you ask me. Now, the idea of being able to separate the kids with a see-through fence, so they're away from the line of fire with the balls coming through, or you know, bigger boys and girls, you know, with the with the equipment. So the idea of the dugout itself creates, I think, to your point, will actually create less traffic and stuff, you know. Um, yeah. being well, I wasn't talking about the baseball. Players. Yeah. So, but you're right. It's there's not going to it's not going to slow down <coughs> or increase it, but it will. Right at the moment when the foot traffic that aren't baseball players comes by there. Frankly, they're already coming by closer to the street <coughs> than they would when the dugout goes in because the equipment finds them. Because there's nowhere in front of the benches to put the equipment. On. So, so, so right now, excuse me. Right now, the equipment goes behind the benches. Yes. And next to the stands, kind of. And everywhere, yes. And with the dugout in place, it will take that area where the equipment now goes. So where will that equipment go? In the, in the dugout. So the, 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 all the equipment will be inside the dugout. That's the point. The space in back of the bench. Because what happened is not only do you have the team's equipment, all the players, they all have a bag. They, you know, they're all changing their shoes. They're all, I mean, so all of that equipment now stays inside the dugout, which I think actually, to your point, Ms. Scanlon, is that it actually is going, that actually is going to serve the purpose of the Conservation Committee in a, in, a, in a very pronounced way. Now, furthermore, as the planties, I had no idea that we'd be talking about several hundred dollars. I, you know, you know, when I when the landscaper comes by my house, it's never several hundred. <laughs> well, it's well, always you know, plantings plantings can be. You know, you could hire a <laughs> landscaper. You know, to to design a landscaping plan. Um, we don't always. You know, that isn't the only situation that's come before us. People have come before us and said, I'd like to put a bunch of shrubs. Do you have any to suggest? I'd like to put them here. And we say, sure, show us on a map where you want them, what you're proposing, and exactly what. And we'll look at it, and we'll probably say yes, or we'll say, 
that looks good, but maybe move this a little bit because there's already something else growing there, and you know we'll work with you to create and something. That, you know that's, that is fine. I, you know I. Yeah. What I was hearing is not apparently what you were all meaning. Okay. I was, I was hearing another landscape contractor, and then you know that's, possibly several thousand dollars. Look, that's that's what not what this is. I can tell you what we're talking about. I mean, I will just tell you personally. What we're talking about is putting two or three hundred dollars worth of the right shrubs <coughs> and bushes. I will do that personally okay. on behalf of right. the Ready Bay. Right. right. Well, however you want to you work know. it out, I don't yeah, want to. I mean, you know. know. I, 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 um, but but <coughs> for for us to um, to move forward with the permit, we're going to need a what and a where. Do you understand? So. So in other words, we have to. Wouldn't Some you sort make of the recommendation. No, you, you would submit a planning plan. In other words, and we would discuss it and then approve it. In other words, something like I mean, even something like this or an aerial. I think aerial. I think you can print out an aerial photo. Like for example, you printed out. You have several aerial photos. Yep, you have something like this. Um, it, you know, just. A couple of dots showing where, okay. where, and arrows saying, you so, know, uh, this type of shrub. And Chuck has worked with some people on that. I've also suggested <coughs> that people go to a place like Mahoney's, or you know, I'm sure if there's any experienced plant person at Calarasos, they'll say, you know, is it shady? Is it sunny? Um, then and what type of soil? No, but Mahoney's. Uh, Mahoney's will have that. <laughs> I'm sure. But you know, there are, there, are, there are other places besides a landscape architect that, that you well, can well, and get. And also, we, that we are looking for native plants, and Chuck has a list of native plants. Okay. So let me ask you a question then. Can we get conditional approval? Because January is the time to have the semester. What, what we would typically do in the situation is issue a negative determination contingent upon an approved planning plan. So once you got the planning plan, uh, we would then uh, accept that and then you could start construction. So in other words, let's go back to what I heard earlier tonight. I, I will not be able to get in front of you until the 5th, 14th of January and then we couldn't start until the 24th of January <coughs> when there's two feet of snow on the ground. No, um, I, I think you could start after we approve that plan, the 14th, I don't think there's a waiting period. How, how would there not be a waiting period? That's, you know, I thought there was a 10 day period. There's a 10 day waiting period after we approve the RDA. Or after so we if we approved it, so, so if we approved it tonight. That's where I'm, that's, I so guess. So if we approved it tonight, the 10 days starts tonight, you're saying, Right, Jamie. but you couldn't start construction until you had an approved planning plan. Okay, so what you need is an aerial photo that's gonna demonstrate where the bushes are going, and a description of what the bushes are going to do. Right. right. And I think maybe um, it's, I'm just going to propose this and, and see what other commission members think about this. The, um, the proposed shaded dimensions of this, uh, this, this uh, bench area, mm -hmm. that could be an approximate area to fill or designate as a planting area. You know, I want to get some quantified. So if value. I have 20 feet of, if I have 20 feet, let's just pick a number and say if 20 I have square 20 feet, feet of, of bench. 20 square feet. Linear feet, feet okay. Right. square feet. Square feet, you I know, mean, 20 by We take the size of six. the bench and I do a planting, or of a dugout. Right. And I do a planting behind it. Or within the vicinity of that trench. It doesn't have to be. You know, but something that restores the bank it's because we don't want to create immediately a... Immediately adjacent to the bank and extending at um, That covers the same square feet. feet. From the bank. From the bank. So if you come 15 feet like. from the bank, your, your traffic pattern of, of bands is going to be very small. What would Terry, that look like? what was your estimate of that uh, up by third base, that the width of that natural vegetation where the trees were? 
So, so Jamie, you would like to see the area closest to this um, this bench protected because I I'm just thinking if you take that area, you know, there's a constriction there, isn't there? That's the closest point. That right? is the smallest point. Can you guys show me exactly where the sure. In the intermittent stream, I can't show you exactly, but it's around. You know, I guess, it, you know, by by my standing. It's, I think it was like 35 feet up to where he stopped mowing. I can have, bring it up on the screen in a second. Would you? Second. That would be so, great. All, that is, under all of that is under, is, is in shape. Where is that? And I'm sure there's something that will grow there. The I'm sure it is. Something will grow there. Hopefully it's hopefully something native. Um, let's see. I know you have a, a sketch of the okay, so the the dugout ah, is eight by thirty six. There it is. You can see the you can see the stream there fairly well. 10? Yeah. 10 by 36 so square feet. Okay, so, so uh, if I, go ahead, Jamie. This is what I'm, I'm thinking of. Is the stream the darkest part of that picture? Yeah, the yes. stream mm -hmm. is, is okay. right along here. This is the existing bench. This is where the new dugout is going to go. Correct. This is going to go up here. This is our $8,000 pile of clay. Um, what I'm thinking of is starting right around here, there are trees and no cutting of the uh, grass next to the stream. But from approximately here to here, there is. So about that distance, extending at about 10 feet, or about the same distance as it of the natural vegetation up here is what I'm thinking of. And that area looks to be, you know, approximately what we're talking about for the duck head. Yeah. Plus or minus. So, so J Jamie, you're saying like 10 feet from the existing tree line? Yeah. No, no, 10 feet from the bank. 10, 10 to 15 feet from the bank. 10, 15 feet from the bank for a distance of, so yeah, if it's 10 feet from a bank. From the existing plate. sand up, you know, to. Almost well, if, if you do with the size of the dugout, I mean, if, in this if you're right, it would be 30, it'd be for 36 uh, 10 feet. 30. 10, it's 10 by 30, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, 10 by 36. 10 by 36. For one of them, right? And two would be twice that? Yeah. The other one that has no connection to the, to the other side. It's on yeah, the, the other, other one's outside side. jurisdiction. Oh. It's it outside of jurisdiction? Yeah. Right. So it's, this is really, they could have put that other one in. Weeks yeah. ago. So you're so it would be a, a, a ten foot by thirty six foot swath. Um, would you like to? The problem with the aerial, um, you you can't see the ground from there. Just a, a schematic would work, where you show the stream. Um, Show the location of the new dugout. I'll Photoshop it. I'll, I'll go take a picture and then I'll put the, bus, the bushes in there. I mean, an, an area, an area, an area ten by thirty-six is the exact same area as of the dugout. So right. you could just imagine the dugout sort of right. doubled up, um, or something of sure. comparable square foot yeah. I, in that you know, area. When I when I put bushes in there, I, I don't know that they're going to be the exact bushes because I've got to find out from somebody who can. What bushes will grow under those trees right. at that point? And you right. don't want to put them right together. You've yeah. got to put them a certain space. 
Does George know a person? I'm hearing that there may be a plan. Oh, we have a plan of the whole Birch Meadow area. I just, I just yeah. can't recall if we actually located the intimate <coughs> shop. If that's it, they can use that to put the first show. And then I sure, can we'll get that done in short order. So I guess what I, that, that leaves me with See, this one. request. It sounds like um, an approval would start the 10 day clock, mm -hmm. but we couldn't do anything until you saw this in session. Right. Okay. So what that says right. is, you know, theoretically, if you approve, I mean, if you approve the thing tonight with conditions, the, the clock starts ticking. That's so, right. So those 10 days are over. So then we're here with the plan, and hopefully George can help me with this, because if they've already shot it, that would be great. Yep. And, you know, we'll bring that to you, and if it meets with your approval, then yep. theoretically, the 15th, right. you could... Exactly. And if it's handed to Chuck in time to get into our packets for that meeting, you know, we will have, we will not see it that night and have to, you know, review it on the spot. you'll have it in right. plenty of time. Okay. okay. So, um, any further questions or comments from the commission? You did say you were excavating for those pads. Six well, inches. Well, can't do that until this is approved. Well, right, but how, how are you going to excavate? Do you know? Are you going to come in with a Bobcat, is that your plan? Uh, I'll find out from the contractor, but I'm sure that's the plan. <coughs> like a skid and, steer? And what are you going to do with the expedited material? Take it away. We, we so probably want some erosion control during construction for yeah. that excavation. Sure. Can I just ask Scott? Uh, Go ahead. The object would be to, would, would be to dig it and pour it. Mm -hmm. Yep. I mean, that would be the, that would be the plan. Sean, do you have to uh, work on both these at the same time? Does that just make the most sense? The both dugouts? Well, we, it does make the most sense because, you know, they're going to bring the equipment in to, no delay to the dig. No and then, delay. They, and then they're going to come in, you know, with the cement. So it makes sense to do them both at the same time. And I wouldn't, <coughs> we never, you know, you couldn't risk doing one that is outside your purview without knowing can't have one yeah. Do you already have your building permit? No, we're here first. Okay. So, um, again, I'll ask uh, if the commission would uh, ap approve on conditions. This, by not doing that, there's, there's two things happening here. It seems like everyone's comfortable with the work, but it's the planting plan, but everyone's reasonable here. It works for the town. It's, it's going to happen. I don't see it not happening. We're adding 14 days to this project. This project would be approved if we signed it off tonight as amended first of the year. We're waiting till the 14th to have our first meeting, and that could make a lot of difference with the weather. Yeah. And we are in a, a good time right now. So again, we're back to a planting plan. I don't think it won't happen, and I don't think if we're unsatisfied with it, would it get changed until we are satisfied. I just throw that out to the commission to consider. I, I want to see. I want to see the planning plan. The planning plan before any ground is broken. The planning plan is gonna. Even though you've placed it where it is, put it in that dimension. It makes see, no I sense. Don't have a with that because I, I don't either. Well, if you have somebody like Mahoney's, they're gonna give you a suggestion of, of how to space your plants, and they'll give you an idea. I, I can't go to court until it, unless we have that condition of ground until we have an approved planning plan. Um, George? The only thing I, I, I want to throw out there is that if at some point in time winter is actually going to stop um, and the ground's going to be frozen, right. and it could be January 1st, right. and by January 14th, there could be a foot of frost in the ground. Um, and if that's the case, they're not going to get their work done. Right. I was going to. I was going to. say that for. I was going to say that regarding yeah. erosion at first, yeah. but you I mean, would there be a problem <laughs> of allowing the work? I mean, the and if the if it happens by the fourteenth, there's a good chance the plantings aren't going to be able to get done until the spring anyway. No, 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 they're, they're not. not. They're and they're so not. you could so they, you can come back. Come they can come back in the spring and have the planting plant approved. 
the, yeah. the issue is we have no repercussions if, if they've already constructed it and we aren't satisfied with the planning plan. And unfortunately, I've been on the commission long enough to know there are a lot of issues in town, many of them by town committees, where years after the planning, years after the action, we still don't have a satisfactory revegetation plan. Um. The high school is a perfect example. So, so that's, now if, if they want to start construction on that other uh, dug at it on the first base side before that time, that's, that's fine with me, but how long is it going to take to get a building permit? It, it won't a take day. any time. Yeah. Yeah. They revamped that whole thing. I'm not, I'm not just saying it. They're, they're approving them the day the people are walking. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I personally don't see a problem uh, approving it with that as amended planting plan because, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not like we have an applicant that's going to, you know, skip town. <laughs> would, would this have an occupancy permit? I'm not sure. No. Would not? No. So, um, you know, part I, of this, I think part we've of got the reason we're buy to off. Done now is if we wait. It's a good time of the year to do the work, um, especially especially if um, you know things freeze. So um, uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve as with with the amended planting plan um, as discussed tonight, and we'll just take it to put it to a vote. Unless there's any further questions. What What do you mean by amended planting? Um, the, uh, approve as proposed and discussed tonight with. Um, the planning plan to be submitted and uh, put a sub date on that. submitted and discussed during the January 14th meeting. And does that mean construction can start when? Um, construction can start after approval of the planting plan. Which would be the 14th. Which would be the 14th. So that's... That's not we're approving it to modify planting plan. With with the planting plan being the planting of an area of three hundred and sixty square feet. So there's two things on the table. The that touching vicinity of the what you just mentioned. Is, I don't even know if mine's on the table, but it's it's the <laughs> but I'm gonna throw it on the table. All right. <laughs> but it's the Over approval here. of this project the construction five, but you know, given all the factors with planting, which isn't going to happen anyways, and I, I do understand what you're saying, Jamie, and I, you know, I don't have all that experience in this town, but that would worry me too. But there's a there's a construction aspect of this, and then there's a planting, and we picked everything out on that, and we almost know everything that we're going to do except for what exactly you're planting in there, um, allowing the work to go forward and coming up with a planting plan. Um, as kind of an afterthought, as kind of this is approved, go ahead, but you have to put in, a, you have to submit a planting plan by the first of the year to be approved at the April 14th meeting, or the January 14th meeting. Maybe go ahead and do this construction now. Well, I think it makes some sense because even if we rush for the planting plan to get done, they can't plan yeah. it. Yeah. But, but approving it later doesn't. They go ahead and do other construction. They don't. They're not. They don't if they don't want to do it, they're not going to do it anyways. Whether we have it in front of us or not, and it makes no sense for someone not to come in and just give you a plan, anyways. Why well, wouldn't? So I don't think that's going to happen. But with George helping, with, with John being very actively involved in this as a selectman, I can't imagine that we're not going to get a plan. But again, I, I know, I understand what you're saying. Look at the imagination station. We've been <laughs> trying for four years to get that cleaned up. And, and who fixed it? DPW. But DPW rectified the problem. We didn't stop the problem. But it took us years. There's a difference between getting the plan and getting it done. I'm not making any promises on getting things done. But the plan seems 100%. Yeah. 
Well, if you how, how about this? How about if we um, circulate the planning plan prior to our January 14th meeting among the members? Are you still suggesting holding up the construction to the 14th? I'm suggesting an alternative to holding up that that planning plan be submitted and circulated uh, to to the members prior to say January 1st. If if I were in charge of you know if I had some, I mean it's it's a bit out of our hands as to when we're going to get the planting plan. That's that's well, a good suggestion. We can specify no construction until that plan is submitted. They can't do anything to January 1st anyways. If they get the plan to us and you circulate it amongst yourselves and you're accepted, then they're good to go. So, so the plan has to be submitted prior to construction. And if we could get it done by January 1st, we could start construction after that. But we would have to meet to discuss and approve it because we couldn't. We could circulate it among ourselves, but we can't discuss it outside vote. of a public meeting. No, we can't take a vote. No. But it would still have to be submitted. And then we would, if we would have it in hand before construction started, and then we could discuss it and approve it or modify it on the 14th. I, I, I'm, maybe I'm not understanding the nuances here because I, I'm starting to think we're talking in circles and I'm getting a little confused. Um, it sounds like we're all saying about the same thing that, that we will give them, they cannot start construction until after we have looked at and approved the planting plan. That, that was my original proposal. Right. But now the, I'm saying they can go ahead and start after the first if they submit a plan to us for the first that we view but not vote on. So then that way, but in order to do that, we would need to approve the planting plan now without having seen it. It's not a big, it's not yeah, a, it's a big I'm, thing I'm, that I'm you need a plan. Name four plants. We have an area, 30 right. feet by 10 right. feet. Yeah. I well, mean, it's well, like, it's we've got enough enough detail it's to not have the exact. It's becoming a really big deal. What, what we're exactly. looking for is a commitment. I mean, the applicant yep. has started off by saying it's not our responsibility to do this plan. So, so I'm, I'm looking for some confirmation and commitment well, to do this. I've and submitting that plan would be part of that commitment. Okay. I, 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 I think I heard from the applicant that he would be willing to use his own money to put these plants in as needed. And to me, that's a commitment um, tonight, sir. Yes. So I'm not exactly sure how you want me to say this. However, as the liaison for the Recreation Committee who approved this unanimously, and as a, as a selectman, board of selectmen, and you have other conditions that you'd like to impose that are clear to me now, I can tell you unequivocally I will give you with my personal commitment as a citizen, a town meeting member, and a, and a selectman that two things will happen. One is that you will have a plan as quickly as we can draw. And I, I will come to town hall tomorrow and meet with the town engineer and see if we've got something I can work with and get a plan put in place. Now I will also make a personal commitment to you that I will work with Chuck to work from the list of plants and then I will go to local greenhouses and find out if those are available and when they can be planted. And at the earliest convenience that makes sense for them to be planted. So I'm that they planted. thrive. I'm sure it doesn't make sense to put them in on December you know, 20th. I'm, mm. you know, I'm just pretty mm. sure that that's not a good time to plan anything. But I will make a personal commitment to this board that each of those things will happen as quickly as possible, that you'll certainly have a planting plan. My goal would be before Christmas, which we no later than the first of the year, because I would like to see the clock <coughs> start to tick tonight, the 10 day clock so that when we clear the holiday season, we can get going. Now, if that can't happen till after you convene, if you're not comfortable with my personal commitment, then I will get you the plan, 
and you need to see it and see me again, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm not going away. Um, I haven't gone away for 27 years, and my work on these recreational fields have, are, has been notable over a long, over decades, actually. So nothing's changing about that. So I'm, I'm going to do that. Now, if you, can, if you can make an accommodation for us, should we be able to get the contractor to work um, sooner than the 15th, that would be great. If you can't, I understand that, and yeah. I will ask you for an approval tonight with conditions that state whatever you want them to state as long as the clock starts to tick so that we don't show up on the 14th and it turns into the 24th. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm requesting. Yeah. I understand. May I offer one, one more suggestion? Mr. Zamboris, you, and then you've identified to vote. The square foot area of plantings you want. You have identified the area where you want them located. You have said native species, which the actual type can be decided later. The only thing you're missing is to come up with a minimum number of shrubs or trees. Right. If you do all of that tonight, to specify the minimum number of shrubs and trees, the only thing that you're really missing to do is the species. Right. Right. Um, Thank you, Mr. Zamboris. Any other comments or questions from the public? No. A, a couple. Um, you made some commitment. Yes. I didn't hear a commitment to implement that planning plan. Will you also make that commitment? The inference certainly was, sir, that I would make sure that that would be done. And I will make a personal commitment to you in this commission that not only will we put the plan in play, we will put it in place and we will do it in a timely way, as I stated previously, and I will make that commitment to you personally. Okay. And along those lines, when we do plantings, we also come back and check to make sure the plants have died and a commitment that they have died to replace them. For that the rest be, of my life? That would be part of the plan. Usually we have it for a year or a couple growing seasons. Okay. That would be, that's usually included in a planting plan. It is. He's not. He's. It's, Fine. That's not. That's usually what is not. in there. Um, what is normal and customary is that what is, I am happy to commit to. Those terms are typical for okay. a planting plan. Um, at this point, um, I'd like to move that. Um, it, it, um, is there a chair, motion? The chair that needs to move. So, so can I, I, move I, can I ask one more question? Please um, go ahead. I don't want to um, curtail discussion. If there's more questions. What about the erosion control or construction? Did you ask for any kind of? It's a uh, it's a standard. Okay. Yes, um, it's okay. necessary. Can I just and remediate yes. to and place can that. Can I just throw this out? Go ahead. If you plant five feet off center, you're talking thirty-five. Thirty-five shrubs. Okay. Yeah. Which is more than a couple and hundred. And you know, you which is five feet off center. Is that how no, it depends on how, how big they are. You know, we're not talking about full size. You, you know, you're talking maybe something like that. Yeah, Smaller well, shrubs. How much you to 35? I'm thinking if this is 30, 30 36 by 10. 10. Right, five, yeah. So, so would it be like seven times three? So, I did, <laughs> am she I did a off? sketch. I don't do, if, if you were going to plant, you don't plant them in a row. You plant right. them off, off center. center. You'd have but somewhat like three staggered rows. But yeah. you, you You've only got 10 feet. Right. 10 feet by 30. Well, don't get locked into just create, this is a planting plan, not a, this is not a, we're not making a forest. So it can be, you know, six shrubs in the back. Right, it could be And then five, a few three, bushes, five. and then the, that grass yeah, area. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> approximately 20. Yeah, I was thinking 20, 18 to 20 was the way I was looking at it on the plan. And, you know, if they're larger, it could be fewer. If they're smaller, it might be a little over. Okay. Yeah. We're not talking full size shrubs. So I move we issue it. A few oaks and some maples. Yeah. No. I move 
that we issue a negative determination on the RDA filed by the Reading Bay Ruth Lake with conditions discussed tonight, including uh, provisions for erosion control, um, provisions for planning an area of approximately 10 by 30. Uh, or uh, approximately 360 square feet containing approximately 20 native species and <coughs> exact species and location of those plantings to be submitted to the Conservation Commission prior to construction and subsequently uh, approved by the Conservation Commission. Okay. Did I miss anything? I don't think you did. Could, could you read that back to us, please? Okay. Um, Jamie Mullen made mo motion of negative determination for the Bay, Reading Bay Ruth League with conditions as follows. Provision for erosion control, provision for planting an area approximately 10 by 36 feet, 360 square feet, you can strike, strike the Just 10 keep, by keep the total square foot. Okay. Containing approximately 20 native species, locations and species <coughs> to be submitted prior to construct, prior to construct. construction yeah. and subsequently approved. That sounds good. Uh, so the, the that motion is made. <coughs> grass, no mowing area. Oh, right. Right, yes. Uh, yeah, that's the area we're talking bank. about, isn't it? The what? The area which they kind of carry <coughs> close to the bank is the area we're talking about planting. So, so we're right. going to request. So, and no, and no, no, uh, no uh, mowing within the planting area. And I know, John, you don't mow it, but, but I you have no control over that. No, I know, but we, can, but we can take this order of con this, this. We could say you agree with it as a user of the field. And we can show it to the people who do mow and say, it cannot be mowed. So, can I ask one other question? So, this, this motion ahead. that's on the table right now, yep. did I understand you, Ms. Warren, to say that it's a negative finding? The, right. the, what you want that with a popular. request for determination of applicability is you want a negative finding because the, the determination of applicability is if we say yes, you do fit a determination <coughs> of applicability then you have to refile a notice of intent for this project. I can do the so this is negative three if you want to hear the, what this it says. Is, I'm sorry? If you Go want ahead. to hear what it says. Go ahead and so read the three. finding. So what we're saying is the work that you have is in the buffer zone to a resource area, but that work is unlikely to alter it. And that's, you ask everyone if they agree to that first. Well, everyone agrees that that's what's happening here. Secondly, second step usually is do we need a notice of intent, yes or no? And then they decide on that, and whatever that is, it looks like it's going to be no, and then they approve this uh, RDA. Okay. So um, a motion. Does that mean the clock starts tomorrow? Tomorrow. Yep. Okay. okay. So Just one other comment. Frequently, <coughs> when somebody wants to do a volunteer project on town land, we make the <coughs> town department, the applicant. This is a little bit unusual. It is a little bit unusual, but it, it's it's still the responsible entity. Um, and it's also the interested party. So may, I, may I, I, have have that I don't all I don't know or if another meeting I think we probably ought to discuss this and discuss oh. it with other departments because I, I feel better <coughs> department be the applicant because we can hold them responsible. A volunteer, be it the Babe Ruth League or a um, or a Boy Scout, is going to be gone. Where it's the, pen, uh, the owner of the land is always going to be gone. But that, I that's understand. A, that's but, but we can, we can bring that up. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. It's okay. So a motion was made. Is there a second? I second that. Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? None? Abstention? None. Okay, so you have a negative determination. 
with conditions. Um, we look forward to seeing the planting plan. And um, thank you for coming out and going into detail with us and explaining. And uh, you've got something to well, say. Well, I modified on. this um, and what was discussed tonight, and I have something prepared. Okay, so great. Nice to work. Wow. All right. No mowing area needs plan submitted and approved with at least 20 plants, 20 native plants, and a 10 by 36 now, area. I think that approximately 20 plants, because if they have bigger plants, So you're, you're, whatever, you'll obtain <coughs> the plan when it comes out, 20, right. 20 or so. Okay. 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 And are you going to circulate that? Yep. Okay. I think it's um, Then I'm just going to, after we sign, I'm just going to take a quick point of per personal privilege, a quick two minute recess. Um, thanks, everyone.
call us back into order. Thank you. Um, so let's take up the matter then of first of Timber Next Hope. Then. Um, hello, welcome. Thanks Hi. for coming. Please Dorothy just. Marshall. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so Dorothy and <coughs> Walter. Thank you. Um, and this is not on our existing agenda. Citizens so, open, open forum, this would fall under. Yes, absolutely. I just wanted to, in case people were looking for it on the agenda. Chuck, do you mind giving just a review, a review of this? Um, I can tell you what I know, but I wasn't contacted, nor did I know they, um, the marshals are showing up here tonight. Okay. So, okay. yeah. You're more than welcome to come. Want to come in and see you folks. My, my overview is that um, Timber Neck Swamp is used by, in our technical case, by some bow hunters. But there's a portion of that swamp that's owned by conservation land, creating um, yeah. some, uh, creating an area of, uh, uh, you know, disbelief with the residents that hunting could happen on conservation land. Um, and uh, I've had several phone calls uh, about hunters walking through from the cemetery through the swamp yeah. Yeah. and in the opposite direction. And I know they're out there and I've heard people uh, in and around town talking about it's, it's used. I don't know anyone um, personally that used this, but I know that permission has been given to one particular hunter that was checked out um, by the owner of the property. So the person hunting out there has, um, in my opinion, every right to be there on that private land hunting. Right. Okay. Based on what I know about his, which is, I'm assuming he has a hunter's license and proper tags. You know, that area that in the middle that have a work triangle wedge. Yeah, yes. Yeah, I remember um, looking at this pretty much the up and dry area. Ago. Um, so, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Marshall, what brings you out? What would you? Well, we, we've been with home, home, excuse me, home office and branch for 30 years. Can you please state your, your address for the Our address now is 88 Timber Neck Drive. Okay. We've been there for 13 years. Gotcha. And we enjoy it very much, uh, stacking up the conservation land, mosquitoes, ticks and all. Um, and, but we, there are two issues with that area. Um, one is that is the land that um, Chuck mentioned. And, um, we found out about a year ago that um, there is private property within Timberneck Swamp. Um, it's a small area. I have a map right here. I, I've received it. We, we've seen it. We probably I made it. I can't remember. <laughs> Yeah, um, but I've seen it. Yeah. Okay, so that's one issue. Um, so uh, the issue when I when I found out about that, I was I was amazed because all this time I thought, oh, this is conservation land. And in fact, our son was chased out of there when we moved there years ago, and we just said, must be some hobo, um, because some guy with cam camouflage and a knife um, came charging after them saying, get out, it's private property, and they came home. We didn't call the police because we figured it was someone passing through, and we knew it to be illegal to hunt there. So anyway. We thought it to be illegal. Yeah, we thought it to be illegal. So here we are, uh, a year ago I found out, so this has been going on all this time. And um, the pro so I decided to educate myself and look at the, ha ha the hunting laws. So I looked at um, the bylaw for Reading, and what's most disturbing is that um, this, on this land, actually, someone is, could shoot a gun to hunt. A licensed hunter could shoot a gun, and this is within on conservation land. On the private land. On the private land. But not on the conservation land. With, with, correct. With permission, excuse me, with only the, only the property owner. So that's yeah. what's most disturbing. Um, so um, I know if you, if you look at the map, uh, as long as the person in the hunting law is supposed to, as they say, 500 feet away from a structure such as a he uh, shed or 150 feet from a road. Um, so that's problem number one. The second problem is we think there's, we're pretty sure there's hunting going on there, bow hunting at least, um, maybe more in the swamp itself. Um, so we have two separate issues here. Um, so we're here for help. 
what 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 do you what observations have you made that that leads you to that? Well, over the years, over the years, again, we've been there 13 years. Um, we have heard gunshot at nighttime, and we have only called the police on two occasions because they thought it was futile. It's pitch black. It's in the winter time, um, and. Um, so we, we just called out of frustration, and we believe it to be no hunting. So naively I thought, oh, someone's shooting in the air, scaring something away maybe. So um, this is, again, we called the police only two times. Um, our neighbor on one side confirmed she hears gunshots. Um, I had to bring around a petition. I'm also, I also went before selectmen. And so I had, the guy next door said, oh, I hear shooting out there. So there's shooting going on. It's not from the range. It's not from the rifle range. It's coming from a swamp area somewhere. Is that a different direction? It's up on the board. Um, Reading Rifle and Revolver Club. Yeah. So it's in the next one. Oh, yeah. Perfect. An interesting point that um, Ms. Marshall brought up to me. We were told, I think, in the report from the police that uh, a discharge of firearms, except at a rifle range, was illegal in Reading. But Ms. Marshall showed me the section of the bylaws that said it was permissible for hunting. With permission of the of the property. The property or, right, with permission of the property. Yeah. Or if it's on your own property. Huh? That's just it. All of our web our website information, when you when you look at conservation land or the town forest, it will say the discharge of firearms is prohibited in Reading, and this includes the town forest. And it will say it again, and this includes conservation property. It, and it is prohibited on conservation property. Right. Yes. Right. Another concern that we had was uh, that it isn't posted that if you walk through Timberland Swamp uh, close to this private parcel, that there could be someone there with a gun or perhaps even a bow and arrow. And uh, uh, I just wondered why that was, you're not wanting anyone that walks through there. I had to collect 100 signatures to get it um, voted on. It's going to be voted on at town meeting next month. And um, when I was gathering those signatures, a gentleman came to sign it, and he's, he, um, he told me that he tried to enter, well, he went entered Timberneck Swamp one day to do a nature walk with his son, and he was chased out by hunters. He, he entered on the Hazel Street side, and, um, and was chased out by hunters. But so. again, the hunters could have, he could have walked all the way down to the private land. We're not saying those hunters were in what I call the, the town-owned portion of Timberneck Swamp. We have, again, we're at 88 Timberneck, I've never seen a hunter come through my yard or, or anything like that. Uh, but the, <coughs> the thing is, the discharge of firearms with the permission of the property owner uh, it is a concern. An inexperienced, unlicensed person that's given a gun, our uh, intent was to have, uh, was it the board of selection that we did the thing? Have them give, have them be another step to get permission to use a gun in the, in the uh, on that private land. Actually, the, the gentleman indicated that it was as soon as he got in he, um, on the Hazel Street side where the, where the electrical box is, he said he went in that way and there were hunters who said they had tree stands and seemed to imply that they had beyond uh, bows and arrows. And Will, help me on this, but I think there's only one parcel of conservation land where we prohibit, where we allow hunting. Well, there's two. There's North and South Cedar Swamp, which is on the east side of Haverhill Street, um, and then Bear Meadow, Bear Meadow, north of the, um, the stone walls that are kind of border the Bear Meadow Brook. But marsh we area. don't allow it on that part. Yeah, it was expli explicitly disallowed um, yeah. when when we went through all the rules and regulations when it ran. There's uh, actually. In the files in the conservation office, there's uh, where to post hunting signs, and where to post no hunting signs. And Timber Neck Swamp is one of those areas where it says no hunting. Um, but I do want to remind the commission that we did discuss this a couple of months back, and posting signs, and we thought that that would just confuse everyone because there is hunting out there, and it would be too much of a surprise if we said no hunting, and someone out there noticed there was hunting because they're not going to know property lines. And they're out in the swamp. So. There's people believe there's no hunting. Most people in town believe there's no hunting in there. So it's, it's really a 
public safety issue. However, having said all of the change that we have uh, proposed to the bylaw would in no way eliminate hunting or uh, other discharge of firearms. You would just have to get not only the property owner's permission, but the permission of the Board of Selectmen to shoot the gun. So we want to take, we, we're trying to, and we're just trying to get that message out there and uh, some form of protection. Right. And now, is the warrant you're proposing um, only address firearms or address? Mm. Yes. Firearms. Just, it's just, if you read it, I don't know, we have a, it's very I difficult to read. Yeah, but it removes the last line of the firearms. Um, Sorry? You're not talking about no, hunting. No, we're not talking about, well, I'm not, we're not going to, personally, I'm not talking about hunting. I, you know, no, that's, we're talking I'm trying to focus on just this red line. <coughs> but so. I'm telling you there are two issues, that actually people are hunting in Timberneck Swamp with bows and arrows, not on that property. It's not monitored. Someone's shooting a gun out there at night. Um, it's been going on for years. You're shooting a gun the other night out there. Excuse me? You're shooting a gun the other, somebody's shooting a shotgun the other night. Really? Up in um, Kachurian. Oh. Shotgun blast. Oh, really? The, the uh, warrant that's going to be in front of town meeting um, cites our bylaw, and what it what it does is it publishes the bylaw, the portion that is exceptions um, to where somebody could shoot a gun or hunt are then enumerated in the bylaw, and the warrant has a cross out of the last line, which says, and, and that is the proposal that the marshals have put forward, that there'll be no hunting or sporting, you know, in the in the town of Reading. I mean, that is, that is the warrant that is currently going to be in front of town meeting. No, it doesn't exactly say that because it requires selectment approval. That's not what it says. I'm sorry, it does say that. I, so maybe I'm mistaken, Mr. Sure, yeah. Marshall. Yeah, but you know, I mean, there's a cross out there. You'll see. Yes, those are the exclusions okay. that do not need selectman approval. So I'm removing that. So in order to hunt, you mm, need you need selectman approval. approval. Or to okay. shoot a gun, you need selectman approval. Uh, all right, I got it. But thank you. Yes, I understand that. So I, I'm sorry, I misspoke. What I was trying to say was that it doesn't explicitly, you know, mention the selectman. The warrant itself. Is a cross off is a cross out of the bylaw, right? And, th and that's all I was trying to say. Okay. So, um, well, well, if the warrant passes, <laughs> then does it apply to conservation land or only private? It's land? A pr it's private land. Private property. Private property. Yeah. And this hasn't been a slam dunk. There seems to be a lot of opposition to this, um, and I, I just want to say that um, the last lines. Mm -hmm basically says um, that you do not need selectman approval <coughs> to hunt or sport, meaning shoot a gun, on uh, private property. And by removing this line, um, anyone shooting a gun on private property will first, well, for, for hunting purposes, will need selectman written approval from selectman, just as you do to light a firecracker on private property now. You need <coughs> written approval from selectman. So at least this would have, um, the same restriction as a firecracker. Um, and it does not, the, we are not changing anything about the, um, or the defense of life or property, or it does not um, interfere with a law enforcement officer, or a rifle range, or weapons at military, it's, it's just for hunting on private property. And that's, and this piece of land is our primary. Uh, is that, what you proposed there, was that looked at by town council? Yes. It so was they, approved. So what you're telling us is, so you, so you know what you're telling us is true based on what you crossed up. Yes, it's been approved by town council. Okay. Now it has to be voted on at town meeting. I'm always worried that when you just cross things out, you know right. what you're exactly. It's been a long process, yeah. So so at this point, um, we've, we've discussed it a little bit. Um, besides introducing it to <coughs> us that it's a warrant, um, at the next town meeting, um, is there anything else you're you wanted to say or ask? Well, I wanted to alert you that actually it would be legal to shoot a firearm on this property within conservation land. So I thought you might want to know that because no matter who you spoke to in town, people denied that was true. But 
But well, it, that is, it's in our rules. Yeah, our the bylaw rules. says it's okay, so I just wanted I you to know that. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's, the challenge, to, to go back to something Bill might tell you, <coughs> you know, the challenge of this situation are multiple. You know, it's, um, it's almost a, a, a donut hole center mm -hmm. property mm -hmm. surrounded by conservation mm -hmm. land and on the outside of is of course these residents um, who clearly have a vested interest in their safety I appreciate that um, but that being swamp you know it it's <coughs> not it's not easy <coughs> to figure out where the property line exactly starts and mm -hmm. stops and there's you know the bullet doesn't uh, listen to property line boundaries. Right. So, you know, there's a lot of complications there, and even if we were to post signs, um, you know, not to sound terribly cavalier, it's, it's uncertain how effective it would be against a motivated um, hunter who believes maybe correctly at this point that they're within their rights to shoot on a certain property. Uh, that said, I, we had talked about posting signs. I don't think we know. Do we? I don't. I'm not sure we know all the access. Well, actually, um, <coughs> it tells you where to post them. So, if someone agrees to where to post them, that's one of the swamp and all these other places. So, everything has a posting location. Okay. As approved way back whenever. And um, forgive me, Will, but I thought before. Help my memory. I thought before you left the commission that you were going to go out and post some of those signs. Am I remembering wrong? No, because the decision was made not to post them. Okay. Right. All right. Signed. And the reason we signed because we don't know where that line is. Yeah, it would need to be surveyed, surveyed. by the town. Um, because we would want to post the signs at the property line. Um, is that is that what well yeah is that the thought that we would have to post it at the edge and then we would have to yeah or say that this hunting allow it <coughs> if you cross this line the thing is we don't that's want to, what we didn't want to we say. don't want to do that because you know but if we do put no hunting signs up on Charles Street and Haverhill Street um, then people like Chuck said will think well they can walk in there not going to find anybody hunting anywhere. Um, on the other hand, if, it, if it's posted no hunting and they do find somebody, they can call the police and the police will sort it out. Especially if, if they're not staying on that <coughs> private parcel. Yeah. Which is pretty likely because I know, as um, Mrs. Kendarian said, there's illegal hunting going on in Kirchian Woods, or at least their, their deer stands. And Mr. Kendarian has seen carcasses up there. Um, so, um, but I don't, I don't think we have no hunting signs posted up there. Well, we probably do it, you know, we have a sign, so. I don't think there's any of those. Yeah, the well, hunters probably throw them down. The, uh, uh, it's just a question, the uh, Reading Police Department is supposed to patrol conservation, are you, environmental police are not involved in that, or is that? <coughs> no. Um, the, in my knowledge, from my experience, just directly, the Reading Police Department um, generally doesn't go to oh, conservation yeah. land unless they get a specific call from either myself or someone on the commission or from, from Chuck or from an, a resident who lives next to the conservation mm -hmm. land, like, such as yourself, saying something's wrong out here. Might want to come and check it out. But, you know, I, but I don't think they they don't they don't regularly routinely. patrol. No. They have and, found and a number of yeah. unsafe um, structures and um, damage that has been done in, to conservation land, mm -hmm. and that's been you know tackled on a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the, the environmental police and the DCR are responsible for in, enforcing hunting mm -hmm. regulations across the common. So if somebody is hunting inside of hunting season um, or hunting too close to a structure, they can be called and they can deal with that issue. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, that's, yeah. that's, that's, yeah, that's true. They could. That's true. From what I understand,
again, the environmental police. Oh, I'm sorry, can I speak out? Um, um, if you can be brief, and then I'll oh. just get From it. From what I understand, having, the having dealt with poachers uh, in Deuterian, they've called the environmental police. I've called you, Franz Bank, your predecessor, and I called the police. The only person that called me back was Fran. <laughs> We're not surprised. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not afraid, right. That. So, okay. I understand where you're coming from, so I wish you luck with your... Well, this is one Thank you. environmental police officer mm. for, a, for a huge mm. portion of Massachusetts. Okay, so. how much hunting is going on in the area, though? In I mean, what area? In this area. How many calls do you think you get a day? I mean, have you ever called a dispatch? You can call a dispatch for every single day, and he'll make his way so out So he, he has a job to do to call back to a, a, a phone call, but is that not correct? I don't know his job. Well, should, should, if, if you call well, an authority, suspect. right? If you call authority figure, my, my background, I got a degree in wildlife biology from University of Montana. If you, so Massachusetts has always been a laughing stock of the environmental when it comes to this kind of stuff, especially the police. The environmental they don't, police because they don't enforce the rules very well, and they, when you try oh, to call no. them, as I as I said, I called them, and they have a perfect example not being called back. Only Frank Fink called me back. Right. So there you go. That was an answer. You know, just like you can't be right. I can't speak for that, 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 so that, that gentleman. Yeah, but that's, uh, that's, that's, that's out of our control. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I so, appreciate the information. But, uh, but I'm so. just pointing out the fact that. Yep. Yep. Thanks I've, for your information. I've spoken yeah. to the environmental hmm. policeman. He's very helpful. Maybe yeah. three different occasions. Leeds. His name is Leeds. Yeah. And what he told he explained to me that he deals with private property and state property. And for town property, that's up to the town. He oh. has no, he cannot touch that. It's so it's private property, which would be in here, mm -hmm. or uh, state property. Okay. That's what he told. That's what I understand. <coughs> he paid a site visit yeah. to our house. Mm -hmm. <coughs> well, sounds like we need to hire a police. <laughs> so, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. yeah, the the police right. are in. If we have a problem with Timberneck Swamp, we have to call the police. Right. And they respond. Right. But they don't, well, but they, I mean, there's nothing they can do in the middle no, of the night. Isn't. They can't nope. go sloshing nope. through the swamp looking for bullets. Right. So just to reiterate and to clarify, your proposed amendment um, that's up for vote would change what exactly? Just only, okay. only the discharge of firearms on private property would require that you meet the 500, 150 foot Distance setbacks. from a structure setback, thank you, from a structure or road. And in addition to the property owner's permission, you need permission, written permission of town council. We would just, is it going to stop the, the noises in the night? Probably not. Is but it's it? only for hunting. Well, that's firearms. That's all Fire. the firearms. Firearms. Allowed anyway. Firearms. But right. no, no, yes. we're not touching. Right. You, couldn't, you couldn't go to somebody's private property, just let them, under your proposed warrant. You couldn't go on private property um, and get approval from selectmen and just discharge firearms if it was not well, related to hunting. Right, it is hunting and sporting, right? I, don't, I honestly don't know that. I mean, I imagine the selectmen could, t they were, yeah, you could. Um, if to protect your property <coughs> or something, you could, I believe. This is just, this will just um, require selectmen approval. Um, it's very for specific. Hunting. Yeah. It's not hunting and sporting. Hunting and sporting. Mm -hmm. okay. And it does get convoluted. It gets. You know, and it's a passionate topic. So thank you for your time. Uh, one second. So I, um, I just had a couple of questions because I this did come in front of us, and you mm -hmm. know, part of the concerns were that um, I actually originally was told, not by the marshals, but in, in, in the lead up to their visit, that the Timberneck Swamp area was an unusual piece of property because it's surrounded by conservation. And although it's 500 or more feet from an inhabited structure, which is the way that that law is written, and more than 150 feet from a road, um, it may be presenting a public safety issue, that parcel. And I actually kind of said, yeah, I guess I could see that. I, you know, um, So I guess I was wondering, given that there's so many pieces of property you know, in our town, that actually qualify under the Mass General Law, why the focus wasn't in the public safety, with the, with the public safety area. So that's one of my questions that I raise. And, and the other is that, uh, you know, it's already illegal to be in that property, the 
private property or the conservation land, which you're talking about. I mean, it, it is, I mean, making it double illegal, I'm not sure is going to stop anybody. Well, from, why is it illegal to be on the Well, it's, it, it's illegal to fire, so for example, you can't hunt after dark. You know, that's well, one of the things. And these, these, the shooting that's been going on that the marshals have heard from what she mentioned. Um, sounds illegal. It sounds illegal. Right. Yeah, I mean, right, it sounds it illegal okay. currently. I mean, I, I think people I think are, I don't question for a second that they're hearing somebody discharging guns. Uh, this ge gentleman mentions that there's poachers in, you know, Shot in a conservation cars. area that mm -hmm. people break the law. And I believe that. I, I don't question what any of these people are saying about that at all. I just, <coughs> I just don't really. I'm not sure that changing, you know, abrogating the rights of all of the people who own a piece of property like that is necessarily going to remedy the problem. Um, my just to respond, my understanding of that parcel, and um, and I'm going to try and. Um, there isn't serious objection, and I'll definitely listen. I'm going to try and move on from this topic so we can get to the rest of our business because it's 10 o'clock. Sure. Um, um, is um, you know not that 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 parcel that you see there um, in the middle of the <coughs> next swamp. Um, if it is privately held, there is only a small portion of that private parcel that would be that where hunting would be permitted, and it's my understanding leading up to before this meeting that 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 after getting a memo I think from the police chief that it is permitted within this very restricted portion of mm -hmm. that private landowner's property. Yeah. Um, it doesn't sound like if all the you know testimony holds up, it doesn't sound like um, it's being lawfully adhered to. Um, when, when things are that isolated, it's hard to, um, you know, confirm that with a police visit, because um, there's many ways out of that swamp. <laughs> so, but um, I want to thank you for bringing it sure. to thank us, you. and thank you for contributing what, what you've known and understood about it. And, it. and it is disturbing to hear that this stuff is happening. I think one of the challenges we have in town government is figuring out a way that's an effective way to discourage illegal actions. Go ahead, Jamie. If I could just ask the marshals, is there anything specific that you're asking the Conservation Commission to do or consider, or are you just here for information to give us I was here to give you information, but also I think it might make sense to put signs on the perimeter of Timberneck Swamp that says <coughs> no hunting, because I think it's kind of inviting to somebody. In fact, one of my neighbors said that um, she had a guy pull up to her house and said, oh, hey, can I go hunt in your backyard? Why not? Because word gets out. And um, she said, her no, house. I don't think you can. And he actually checked with it. But I mean, if you're driving by or if you're... But if you put the no hunting, and I know you guys don't know, you put the no hunting sign up, it's gonna, not going to warn people that there are potentially hunters in there on the private... But, but people could, don't know that now. Our kids we, didn't know that. Children don't know going in Timberneck Swamp that there are hunters in there now. The, the, it, it would seem to me, and... and Please, I'd like to hear input if whatever. Um, it, it would seem to me that a posting of a sign of no hunting on town conservation land um, is an appropriate sign mm -hmm. to put. You know, if people know for a fact that there is a separate, that puts the onus on people to know where they're at. Mm -hmm. um, is that parcel uh, posted to private property? Not that we know. No, I don't even it's, know. No. I've never walked in there. It looks very thick. Difficult to get through. So, I mean, we have posted signs before. Um, does the commission want to go so far tonight as to, you know, take um, take some action on that? I, I'd like to ask Will what he thinks. Do you think at the entrance of the Timberneck Swamp, it makes sense to post a sign that says no reminder, no hunting? Conservation. Yeah, I, I guess it would go part way towards educating the public. Um, I think if you put a disclaimer in there that you know <laughs> there is a parcel in 
in the middle of this property where it is allowed. Okay, we could also put um, a... You might have to get town council to approve the, the wording of that. So, we, um, we to, could to also protect the wandering. We could also uh, refer them to the web page or the, it's our... Uh, it's not a bad group. idea to, to notify people. I've been on state forest this fall where hunting was allowed and they did post it. <coughs> you do, when you do go hiking, you do want to know if there yeah, is absolutely. hunting nearby. So, so. Uh, let, let's say, I think uh, maybe we take this up in our next meeting. Because, uh, okay. I think that it makes some okay. sense for us to do that. So at the next meeting, we will work on some sort of draft yeah. signage. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Thank you thank very, you much. very okay. much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy the holidays. Thank you. Um, okay. And um, since it's just finished, go ahead. With um, article seven. I'm really here just to um, encourage you guys to um, give your own two cents to this issue. Um, if you get any points that you think I missed in my letter or the documents that were submitted. <coughs> but this was did something. The, the letter didn't go out. Yeah, it did. Oh, it did. Okay. And it's, it's purely my initiative. I just made an executive decision not to involve the commission, not to mm -hmm. ask you to approve the wording or anything else. Um, okay. So that's where we're at. But yeah, it did go out and the, and the town, well, the town hall has been given a copy also. Should, do you think it would be counterproductive if the majority of the commission agreed with that letter if we passed a resolution in support of that? <coughs> no, no, I think that, I think that would be helping. And as um, I'm Chuck and I feel, as I feel, the, especially <coughs> the parts of the, the letter that pertain to the Wetlands Protection Act are, are what are most germane to the Attorney General's office because they, they tend to more look at state issues rather than local right. town issues. Um, and that is a state issue. Yeah. Um, so so I, I would move then that we uh, issue a letter to, to the same recipients and CCs and little letters saying that we're in support of that letter and concur with the uh, interpretation. And as we talked about it, um, whatever way it has. Any, any discussion? Any objections? No? No objections? Okay, all those in favor? Okay. <coughs> so we will, we will add to what you've said. We'll no. second it with a formal letter. And uh, thanks for getting that together and working on that. Yeah. Can you draft that, Chuck? Sure. Yeah, no, but I just don't, I don't know if it's <coughs> Probably I'll see Marta Hurley. Okay. Her, okay. her address is, well, it's, it's one of the, I think it's the second email sure. I sent, the acknowledgement of the receipt. Hmm. So it should go, yeah, she's on Selectman, Town Manager, Jamie. Yep. Okay. And then whoever that girl was at yeah. AG's office. So I don't know what's going on. Okay. Okay, any questions or comments? No? Okay. No. Hearing none, thanks, Will. Yeah, sure. Thanks, you're welcome to stay if you want. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> gotta make my lunch. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. Thanks for coming out and staying. Um, okay, well, um, let's, let's get to... Uh, um, what am I gonna... I, Sorry, my brain's not working. Sorry, right, I stopped working come, an come. hour ago myself. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Mr. Pudo. Thanks for coming in on your vacation day. I appreciate no it. No problem. Thanks um, for having me. Um, just to uh, go over uh, Memorial Park. I think. Oh, it's Memorial Park. So. Memorial Park. Yeah. Right. No, no, right. Hunt is on the other side of 28. I thought you said Hunt. Hunt. Did I say, I said. Well, Hunt, Hunt is Memorial, Hunt Memorial Park. 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 Park.
Is it Hunt Memorial Park? It's no. called no Hunt Park. It's called Hunt Memorial Park. And this, so this is just Memorial, Memorial Park. Park. Yeah, I've read the placard at the entrance. It's great. <coughs> um, um, so just a little, uh, just be, because I, um, I think this just was communicated between Chuck and I and yourself and Mr. Zamboras <coughs> day. Um, what was it? Monday. It was Thursday of last week. Thank you. That's okay. L uh, last week, um, I was driving by uh, this park and I noticed that there were some U.S. Army Corps trucks and uh, Highway Department trucks um, driving on the field installing uh, lights adjacent to the skating ponds. Um, Army Corps of Engineers? Army Corps of Engineers. It was pretty impressive. Um, so a number of trucks out there. Uh, they were installing with uh, augers. They were installing light pole fixtures. Um, and then I hopped out to ask, or ask what was going on because I didn't recall um, any uh, notice of this before the commission and I knew it was um, within the region of, of those wetlands. Uh, so they were around the skating park? Yep, so they were they were to the uh, northeast that, and south, so northeast, the southwest. Um, they were to the right and left um, of them. And uh, after calling Chuck and saying, do you know what's going on? Have you heard anything? Um, and do you know what this is about? Uh, Chuck pulled up uh, the, 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 the permit that uh, rerouted the drainage. Do you remember that permit? For I do. There was a permit, right? 2007? 2009. 2009. Um, that, uh, if you remember, that was when Doug Green was here, and he, he stipulated, you know, when you excavate um, that soil, it has to be segregated and placed back into those wet basins because there's a uh, native endangered uh, fauna that flora, thank you, flora that needs to continue to germinate in that area and, and propagate. Anyway, I was just wondering whether uh, that work was covered under existing permit. Um, come to find out with the Permit Extension Act, it the work was technically, in theory, still covered. However, some additional uh, information was to be submitted prior to installation of those lights, um, which didn't happen. So I asked um, John Pudo to please come in and just give us an update. I'm, I'm sus I suspect the project's finished. Almost, they were they were close to being finished when I was out there. That portion of it, that portion um, yeah. So I, I asked you to come in and meet us and just brief us on what has happened and where things stand. Uh, um, so go ahead. Sure, and when Miss Kalen left me a voicemail and sent me an email, she was worth surprised to see the work. And I was just as surprised to get the email and the phone call because I had the, I was under the impression we were good to go with our prior um, filing, and even when Chuck called, and Chuck will recall this, I told him to stop. I thought he was just messing around with me when he called, just giving me a hard time. And he was like, no, I'm serious. It's, there's really an issue down there. So I, I did phone George right after yeah. um, to, to investigate. So part of it's just a miscommunication part of it. I wouldn't have known to look at the order of conditions. I, I just, I don't deal with this stuff enough. So, um, you know, just a clear thing. And, and Jamie's done work with me in the past, and Chuck's worked with me, and I've done some work with Anika. Um, we try to do things on the up and up. We're certainly not trying to do things in disregard or any, create any kind of distrust. I work closely with Chuck on many of different projects. We speak fairly frequently, and we'll try to come up with a mechanism so we can correct. That oversight in the future may be something of us meeting maybe once a month just to go over projects that we have with Anika. Um, so that being said, uh, we did install six poles at Memorial Park uh, with 16. Do you, mind, do you mind sort of pointing out sure. where they are? Sure. Um, no, it's okay. okay. Um, so we essentially have six poles. We have one located here. One look. This is Harrison Street. So one located uh, right off of Harrison Street for one pond. One on the uh, second pond, and basically just goes around the circumference of the entire area. So. One on the Charles Street side, one on the one Charles Street condo side, <coughs> another on this side here, and uh, one last one I believe is right on this little um, cove next to the roadway going here. Okay, 
Okay, so these are like roughly what, 10 to 15 foot? They're, uh, they're 25, 25 foot holes. Uh, they're actually set about 24 feet above ground. Yeah. There's two to three light fixtures. They're actually LED light fixtures. Yeah. Um, they're energy conservation, conservative uh, fixtures that <coughs> we think will work well for that area. The electrical conduit, is it underground? All underground, all pipes. It's all installed when the park was done. Oh, the conduits all, all were there conduit. were pre-installed. That was all in our original stuff. permit, the conduits, the lights gotcha. and everything. Gotcha. It was all approved. Um, Are the lights on a timer? Or they will be eventually, yeah. They'll be on what we call an astronomical timer. And that will allow them, they'll be on a photo cell to an astronomical timer. Okay. So they come on, they're adjusted, they're on all time and suggested by right. the sun. Right. If you just said it. If you live with just a photo cell, if you live with just a photo cell, they like street lights, they would stay on until 6 o'clock in the morning. So there is going to be a mechanism to shut them off. There'll be on a timer and a photo cell so that they can, that they, they'll come on at dusk and it'll be shut off at, what time do you? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. It's only during the skiing season. Only during the skiing season. Is that the same thing with the Avalon Tennis Courts? Uh, not the same system. That's far more sophisticated. It's, uh, that's a computer program. A good ex, a good, a uh, good, IP, a good um, <coughs> equivalent is the same thing our Christmas, our, uh, Christmas yeah. lights are, yeah. and ornaments are. Okay. They're they're set to come on at four thirty and go off at I, I forget what time ten o'clock. And if it's Amazing. for some reason in the middle of the winter, oh, they're still on. Well, John said ten. I did. Maybe John said ten. I don't know. I, I know all the other lights are off. I do casting. Casting field, the lights go off at 10 o'clock. And if for some reason it was sunny out in the middle of winter at 5 o'clock, those lights wouldn't go on. <laughs> okay. Um, it, it, talking, when I stopped, I talked to an Army Corps representative, um, and he said that it was, uh, this, it was that the first installation, um, there was something wrong geotechnically with yep. how they were installed, so they were redoing it. Correct. Um, and um, so the so you how did the final installation go? It's all solid, George. I'll explain. Go ahead. Because the Army Corps, the engineer, Army Corps person you spoke with, is only giving half the story. The poles were installed, and the problem was the poles were installed without a permit. Um, Electrical permit. Without a building permit. Building permit. So after um, the building inspector got out of got involved, he wanted a structural, structural uh, wind loading on the up analysis gotcha. on the poles. And it was determined that the poles actually had to have six feet embedment versus five. Okay. So the poles had to be removed and, re and reset a foot lower. Okay. Didn't we learn in high school we had the same damn problem as in high school? Or similar problem? Well, this is a very, it's been a, process that's been going on. I mean, the original polls were in September. Uh, was it September, John, October? It was, yeah, it was the end of September. The end of September. And there's been a substantial number of issues about that. So I, a lot different than the high school. I, my understanding was the high school, they were, the poles were installed in a bank and it was, yes. the water was, yeah. And these are far different and uh, these yeah. are. Substantially smaller. Uh, these are direct berry, this is direct berry poles. They don't yeah. need foundations. They're very, very light. You can pick them up yourself. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. They're a composite um, pole. In terms of uh, leftover erosion or, um, you know. You're in a flat grass area. You can't get it. <coughs> there is, I mean, um, is there some, what's left for bare soil out there? The, the tire removed. tracks, that's it. Yeah, I believe everything was removed. Anything that was excavated was brought off site. And or put we, back around the pole. And actually, we had to bring in we had to bring in better material ah, to put okay. around the pole. So we okay. what we took out we removed from the site. Okay. As George mentioned, we did at least some tire tracks. I believe our guys went back uh, early this week to it was all mud. They had to wait for it to dry out and they raked some of it back. And we'll have a better better plan. We're gonna have to reestablish all that grass in the springtime. Well, why was the Corps of Engineers? Uh, it's a long story. They've done some work for us. We have a we have a former Corps member that lives in town that was able to create the resource for us because they did the work for us for free. Where, um, they, where were they at? They're out of um, Fort Devens. Huh? Fort Devens? Close. <laughs> no. Army Corps. <laughs> they want you to believe that. 
Yeah, four seven is closed. They're still semi there. Yeah. The jail is too. Actually, they have station there. No, uh, no, the station out of Rhode Island. Rhode Island. Station out of Rhode Island. Okay, so. Um, they actually use the barracks of deadlifts. So at this point, it's what's what's left to do out there? Actually, the only work we have left is to set the cabinet for the electrical unit and okay. do all the bolted with the concrete and finish, do the finish electrical work and energize. And the, where's concrete, that? the concrete pads are already, already poured. All that's left to do is install the cabinet and the um, switch gear inside the cabinet and wire where, everything up. Where does that happen on the frame? Can you point that to the oh, right? Where, where, where does that happen? Uh, that is probably I'll do it. The <laughs> cabinet's right. Uh, it's roadside. The pole we came across. Came up the right up the hill. didn't come across that pole. But it's within five or ten feet of the curb? Yes. Yeah, it's just what's shown on the plan that was approved. So, okay. I mean, the, all these details were submitted when we did the original filing. Because when we did the filing, we were talking a basketball court, a boxing court, a volleyball court, Understand. lighting for the walkways, lighting for the ponds, and all those details were given. Well, that, but, but I, I don't understand. If all these details were given, especially the detail about this, then why did it say in the order of conditions that additional information would be provided about the installation of the light poles? At the time, we didn't know what style of light pole. So we, we didn't know the style of light pole, that's all. There was a lot of back and forth about whether we'd go back to telephone, because we, previously we had telephone poles stuck in the ground there with above, with above ground wiring all over. It was put in there because Fran Fink felt like putting that in there. That's what it boiled down to. Well, it, that's, but that's, but that's no, what I we have it. to fall back on, you know, after the fact. But all the details know. were given. It was just the style that was a given. Okay. I, I, I asked her plan to move backward, but so there's still in the plan a bocce court and a volleyball court? All that's still active, and if for some reason the town received funding before the expiration of this permit, or very near the expiration of this permit, We'd ask for an extension to do that work, okay. on the permit to do that work. And, and the only reason why it isn't all done now is because of the cost. Of money. Yeah. Right. And we only had so much money to work with. But what I'm hoping you're also going to say is that we're going to get notified before the work takes place. No problem. Yeah, I think that was kind of what I what I wanted That's to say was we jumped through hoops this small for this project. It would have been very easy to provide what was needed if yeah. uh, if I had known that it would have been very easy to do that. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know. It wasn't like we were trying to avoid it because it was difficult. And I, yeah. I would add to that, the reason why that I didn't pick up on this is it came through as an electrical permit, which I do not review. Yeah. So. Yeah. It came as a building so, and it's a building permit. It came as a building permit. Building permit and electrical yeah. permit. The second, the second time? Because I was, <coughs> no, we, it, we got a building permit maybe three weeks ago, four mm -hmm. weeks ago. And then we filed the electrical probably a week ago. I didn't see the building permit either. I mean, there, I mean, the process for the building permit so is the a, building department a, checks off who's supposed to review. So that's a so maybe a we need function. to talk to the building department that's about. A function issue. I mean, I, I'm not sure how that communication. Well, I think I think with John, he, he's proposing just to be more in tune to any resource area, and I think that's going to work for any kind of um, yeah. athletic field yeah. improvements. Yeah. And George, you know. George has always been pretty good with guy. Uh, it boils down to the, you know, the permit's that. five years old. Yeah. And none of us really went, to, all we knew, all we remember is that we had permitted for the lights. <laughs> and our mistake is we didn't go back and read a five year old audit to find out what we're supposed to do. Well, it's, uh, you know, it's. And it's, it's more than that, obviously. Right. It's, so it's, it's, we want to get you to the point where it it's no sweat off your back just to make a simple phone call and let someone know. And it should be part of the process <laughs> rather than to say, well, this is the <coughs> and, you know, and conservation's not part of it. So, you know, we're having the same problem with DPW with the mowing that we discussed tonight. And, you know, if we're all walking around in the same building, it, it really has to be pretty darn, darn easy to, to just say, hey, look, yeah, I, this I, is close, and, and I don't know if we have a permanent or not, but I just want to let you know. Yeah, yeah. so um, any other questions? Comments? No? From the public? No? Okay. Um, just uh, send us a notice when it's finished. <coughs> We'd be happy to go out there and just do a little site walk.
subsurface drain below the liner um, that was inadvertently left open no closed because it's supposed to be shut as we're filling and from the storm we had all we uh, could think of is that the uh, because there was a, so much water going down the 24 inch pipe it was also pushing water out the joints and we developed an air pocket underneath the liner and the air pocket was In, a, in, a, in the in the span of 45 minutes, the air pocket was over here at the upper pond. I went back to the office, and when Chris went back down there to look at it and uh, have to meet the guys down there to make sure they open, they uh, close the other, open the other valve, it was over here in the middle of the pocket. So, um, but yeah, if, worst case, what we're gonna what we might have to do is we might have to just uh, put it eight or 10 inch pipe inside the concrete pipe, seal it off, and so we have a solid solid pipe going from the manhole to the uh, fill pipe, which okay. will uh, eliminate that problem. Okay. All right. All right, switch gears. Um, yep. We have that issue yep. on Howard. And um, so anyways, we have the Westview project going on. Thanks, John. Thank you. Have, have a great day and happy holidays. You too. Thank you. Try, not, try and complete the meeting by 11. Yeah, the Howard Street uh, issue, which um, ended up being that um, they're dewatering down a storm drain, and there was a certain amount of um, silt going through there, and it came out and daylighted on Howard Street, and there's 300 feet of silt in that um, drainage channel over there. I do have it's, I have pictures of it, but it's um, a situation where George noticed it. 
seeing, uh, you know, going around checking his projects, alerted me. I went down there. I met with the resident engineer. I had them put in some um, check dams in that drainage channel. And what, what, what kind of check dam? Just stone. You have to slide down. Am I in the right spot? Where, where am I? Um, Howard Street is right here. And this okay, is no, you're in the right area. I'm sorry. So this is. I was just looking for the cul de sac. That's all. This is where it came out, right here. Right here. And extended so down. Am I in the right one? Yeah. Oh, that's a road. That's right yeah, so. So it's like house and back, right. So. Which one? The green area. In between uh, 1080 and 10, yeah, right there. Right here. Okay, yeah. so it daylighted right here. And then we have. So that's probably not 300 feet. That's probably 250 feet. I just measured it. Right. Um, so we have so silt in a stream. The stream doesn't have a smooth bottom. It has a rocky bottom. It's leafy and rocky. So you can see that beyond where it stopped. So there's a lot of sediment there, and it needs to be cleaned up. Mm -hmm. So this is that's the point where we're at right now. There's sediment in the stream that's silty, <coughs> fine, um, and it needs to be cleaned up. At the other end, where they're discharging, came up with a couple of plans. I was in favor of a frack tank, and George thought, you know, maybe they could do some stone and some filter fabric, but if that didn't work, then a, fr then a frack tank. So they've been notified. They're bringing in a tank, and they're discharging into some sort of pretreatment. Their problem they with their, their dirt the bags, bags, there's no room. No. So there's no room for a frack tank? Not really. No, there's Did you not. Slide up, slide up no, yeah. the truck. The no. good thing is, is that this is right now they are right now they are right right limit of excavation is right here, mm -hmm. and it's this section here that they that's where they one of their deepest portions and they ran into they ran into manageable water. The rainstorm that we had last week it's it got ridiculous. They basically have to go to here. They have to yeah. do what? They they they're they're here and they have to go to here. Distance-wise, it should be two days' work. And this but because you're dealing with 36-inch pipe, the amount of water they have there and other utilities, realistically, uh, you know, they may not complete this until. Well, I was going to say the following Friday, but the following Friday is the day after Christmas. So probably, you know, if they get lucky and finish it before Christmas, they're done. If not, they may be into the following week. How deep is? Uh, they're they're start they're about I think it's about fourteen feet to the invert. So yeah, they, they had a telephone dock that was doing a long diagonal cross right here. So I mean in that area they, they literally had eighty feet of trench open at a time. Not far down. <coughs> okay, so just to understand the fines that have gotten um, deposited in on Howard Street, they were they came from the West Street construction pump. They, they were pumping into the West Street drainage. Which yep. This section from Luanus to here goes down Howard Street. Yep. So not only, I mean, you know, this isn't our, uh, <coughs> this isn't our, well, is it? Maybe it is our jurisdiction. But, you know, it's probably not only fines in the stream, but there's probably fines throughout the pipe. Between I, the I source would, area I would think the you know it's we will look to I haven't looked at the drain manhole. Um, it's a question of really what day. Yeah. What day the fines really went in there? Yeah. Because when I noticed the fines, they weren't discharging into that drainage system anymore. Okay. Um, they were there. Huh? They, no, they were already there. Right? Yeah, they were already there. Um. So it's the it's possible they are already. The pipe is already clean from the storm. Washed and now out. it's out there. Washed but we'll out. look at it. Okay. And if they have to clean the drain line, I'm not making clean the drain line. Okay. So well, we, we did go up the street a couple and pull some manholes yeah, and whatnot. And it's still in there. It's still in the pipe. Okay. You can still see it. Trace it back. So they're discharging on Oak, Oak Street now, and which goes in a different direction. Mm -hmm. But basically... Where does it go now? It goes okay. down, Four down through nine. right to here. Sturgis. Now where is that? Find out where this is. This is yeah. I don't know what this system is. It's Redgate Lane. That purple is Joshua Eaton. Yeah. 
Oh, is that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so that's yeah. Indian that's tree. Josh Reed. I, Indian tree. Surges could follow. That. I would have to check. I thought that you know I could be wrong, because there are, there is. Yeah, this one may go there. Well, was on. I know there's a bit the biz, a lot of this drainage goes down to Sturgis, but you're right. This system because there is an open brook that goes between a couple of these. Uh, well, a pipe brook that goes between a couple of these streets <coughs> that may end up there. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent sure. Well, so we did pull the plans, so whatever that new system you have will show where everything is draining to. It so might not be accurate, but it showed that the one here on the corner mm -hmm. went across and down. But right. Like this one where they're discharging now went down to here, and wherever that, wherever that area is, it was it was into that brook. At at this okay. point, at this point, it sounds like you're still trying to get a grasp on the full extent of, of this. What's your plan going forward? How are you going to keep them from doing it again? What now? Hmm? I'm waiting to see. Uh, they're, 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 they're supposed to be giving us what they're going to provide for protection on the end of this discharge. They see, we, Chuck and I both said frac tank. Okay. And they offered, they said, well, we think we can do it another way. If it's good, prove it to us. If it doesn't work, you put it in a frac tank. Okay. Well, so the frac tank go right there at Oak Street, Oak and West? Oh, shit. I don't know where Okay, so they it's, have it's a problem to figure out where they're going to put the frac tank down by the gas station where so they need it. So at this point, it's up to the contractor to come up with a solution it's to the problem. Contractor FST and MWI Red. Okay. They want to hear from the commission though. So the the direction is come up with a solution and get get that silt out of. I mean, that's what I yeah. thought you would say, but yep. There's there's I mean, from what George tells me, that this this channel doesn't have any water in it unless it's raining so <laughs> so or being discharged into so anyways they can block it up and it could dry out or it can just be blocked right up and then they clean it up with shovels or there's more imaginative ways of doing it yeah i only see two ways either they're going to have to well either way they have to stop any flow of water coming through and either let enough drain out so that they could shovel it out or you can make it adapt it to a backhaul and actually suck it out. Right. And as long as you have a, a, a longer a hose extension, that's a little bit portable so you can reach down because uh, you, you can't get access in between the houses. So then you're, right. you're gonna have to, they're gonna have to get access for, the heavy part is, is like the first 50, 60 feet. Port. But it does carry to about 100. Okay. I could try to show you what it looks like, but it, it fills the bottom of the stream bed. You got a photo? I do. Does the FST have a uh, resident engineer yes, there? They do. 24 hour or whenever yes, they construct? Did he, he or she know that was going on? Oh, when I when I saw it, I walked out there and I walked actually the day when I saw it, um, I told FST's resident engineer and actually MWI race representative was there too. And so we uh, walked down there and showed it to him and the comment is, okay, Get a hold of Kelly Ock and get him down there to clean this right away. It's like, no, you're not going to clean it right away. You're going to talk to Chuck first before you clean it. Yeah. You're not going to just go walk in the stream and start taking everything out. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, all that. Um, so they need direction. The direction to me needs something official. So we're at this point. And I am, George, I don't know. But anyways, is there an enforcement order that you guys want to put out there to get this thing on record? I don't, is it going to go to FST? Is it going to go to the town? Is it going to, you know, I don't know. They're under our permit, so I mean, it, I don't, I imagine legally it would have to go to the town. I would send it to, who's that guy? Who's the contractor? Kelliaco. Kelliaco. That's my, that would be my first choice. Seemed like it was his guys. This is some old silt fence left in this same stream channel. I just <coughs> looked at it, and this is what we're looking at Whoa. here. Mm. That's the mm. invert right right there. Mm -hmm. that's, that, that's at the Howard Street end. Oh, that's something else. That's right. just something else that goes on here. Well, that was something in Foxborough, right? No, it was no, here. Oh, that was across the street. We don't want to get into that. That's <laughs> it right. had nothing that's to do with conservation. That's telephone pole. That, mm, someone drilled right through a drain line. Yeah. 
here's discharge, that's into a silt sack. Right. That silt sack didn't exist before George told them to do that, but, you know. Well, that's across the street did, but they were discharging into that one. That's not. <laughs> so they had a silt sack in the main hole they were not discharging to, or in the town. Up basement. through West Street, there was, they, they were a couple of days, they didn't have one, and I get on his case and the consultant's case, and they did throw them in, and they had hay bales up there too. But obviously, with the amount of silt, there were times they, they were discharging. Did the, and it's just ridiculous that they're going to rely on a silt sack. I mean, it needs treatment prior to the storm drain. Not, I mean, that's ridiculous, yeah. if you ask me. That's really not I mean, we're, right, these guys, anyways, it goes down the street, and, you know, there's some evidence. That's what I was doing there. Um, go back in the other direction. I get some shots up the stream. You can see it heading, we're looking back towards Howard right here. Yep. And again, we're looking back. That's the brook I want to clean up. Can I get in there? <coughs> yeah. <laughs> and this is looking down towards, um, away from Howard. I'm just showing you what's in the stream bed. So it looks to be like a couple of feet across, maybe. Six There's in. areas that it's only about 18 inches, so I guess on the average it's it probably averages two. I mean, it's pretty shocking when you go out there, even... Here it's the widest point yeah. that it gets to really have. It uh, speaks for itself. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, what's the sense of the commission? Uh, some sort of... I don't, I don't know if, sh uh, you know, if the water's still there, shovels aren't going to work. No. Well, they could... No. So I think VAC makes sense. Um, I don't know other technologies. I don't. Well, it's not really not up to us to figure out how to do it. No. Just that they have to. But those are two suggestions: vacuuming and shoveling, yeah. and mm -hmm. you know, cutting off the flow. Yeah. So they were dewatering right from the trench through to a canvas storm drain. hose right to the storm drain or right to the gas station. Mm -hmm. I think the enforcement order should go to Should town. we find the town also? <laughs> it just yeah. seems, it, you know, it just, I, I just feel that it's, it was very irresponsible. I mean, you can't imagine someone even thinking that, that that would be okay. And it had been running for, how long were they on that line for? Three, three days, four, five days? I don't know. They, they started hitting water um, after, a little ways after Luanas. At the beginning, they were doing one thing, I think. I'd have to look at the plan. It's actually probably really once they, uh, yeah, a little bit after Luanas, I think they hit it, so right around Luanas. Then, when, then they uh, lost it for a couple of days. Then obviously, after it rained, they really came back. So. They, standard condition in the order of conditions if there's dewatering going on they need to come up with a plan and notify the administrator or the conservation commission both those things weren't they done didn't, they didn't give you that in the beginning well they didn't do it four days ago or no but as i thought at the beginning in the beginning of the job i asked them to give that to you give you a dewatering? they had a, they they did a um they did a full um ms4 permit for this project Explained all their dewatering. Well, I read that section as when it happens, we're going to get notice and they're going to talk over a plan. Oh, not, yeah. not, well, these are contingencies and, you know, if this happens, we're covered. I no, mean, that's not. What I meant is that they were supposed to submit a dewatering plan to you in the beginning before they started that we were going to approve, that we were going to approve. So they didn't do that. I don't they didn't remember do that. that. They didn't do that? Well, I don't, we don't think we have a dewatering. The only thing that we approved was the fact that you wanted to sister up to this, pro they wanted to sister up to your original permit. Okay, so they didn't give you anything else before they started? I don't believe they did. Okay, so they were supposed to. Okay. I was under the impression they did, obviously. You were, I, I don't think remember that you either. Would, you would have remembered it if they did it. Okay. I'm pretty sure we would have approved the deep water and the deep water and right the gas basin. I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah. We would. Uh, if you don't remember, they probably <laughs> that was that. definitely, yeah, I know. I'm sure that wasn't their plan. I'm sure they were hoping <laughs> no one was was looking. Mm -hmm. 
You know, so it, I can see the contractor doing it, but the, it's the resident engineer's job to make sure that doesn't happen. That that's that's bad news. So, it was MWRA required to be there on this project? It's their project. It's their, it's their project. project. It's their project. <laughs> their contract. See, originally, okay. Originally, they were going to be. In, they were actually going to go out to bid with the roadway project. Yeah. But because of right, right issues with the inter agreements between uh, MassDEP and everything else, they they went out and bid separately from this project. Okay. I think an enforcement order is. The way to proceed. I we might be able to issue an enforcement order to the contractor or the engineer. I don't if see how they they're shielded by the town. I, I well, if they were supposed to submit a dewatering plan, they never did. I don't, I don't see how they should. I mean, you could certainly do the town, the MWRA, and the contractor. It seems to me that you can mention everyone. You don't have to go right up the ladder. Yeah. I, it, if we have one out there, if we have three out there, at least it's out there. I let DEP know, you know, what's going on. You know, you always have to send them notification of these things. But an enforcement order or some action is needed. Yeah. If the high school, the school committee is the applicant, so we issued an enforcement order to the contractor. Yeah. On numerous occasions. So we, I think we could issue an enforcement order. I, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like that tree policy. Do we give it to the owner or the guy cutting the tree? Kind of the same thing. Well, even if the town is I'm managing saying. the project, if there they're is some not, shared though. responsibility. Not. They're not. They are not. We have no responsibility. It's the MWRA responsibility. pipe, MWRA contract, MWRA okay. sewage or uh, water. We don't so even what manage the roadway project as a state. Okay. Do you want so some, like someone at the next meeting to discuss this? Yeah. Okay. And I'll send out an enforcement order and I'll just say, look. Give all Patrick. Get in there. Get in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks. <laughs> I bet you he could talk his way out of it. Probably good. So, um, but yeah, I'll have him at the next meeting, and we'll we'll try to just tell him to come up with a plan. Yep. To we'd clean we'd this like up. to see what attention is going to get can, paid to this. Can I ask? Can I make a suggestion? Go ahead. Um, by the next meeting, they're going to be done and gone out of this area. Oh no no no! They can clean up. As no, soon as they want. No, I'm just saying, by the, by the next meeting, they're going to be done and out of this area and probably, well, they'll be in an area that if they do hit groundwater, the frack tank was supposed to have been delivered two days before the crew was supposed to start. Originally, the crew was, because they're going to, the second crew is going to start down at um, um, Goulburn Town. Because of the potential for contamination, because of the wells that are in the gas station and everything, even though the boredom showed that they, uh, it was clean, that was something that MWRA had in the uh, contract that they any kind any dewatering would require a frack tank to tank in that area. Yep. Um, but if you send out the enforcement order now and try to get more information from them by your next meeting, they may be in an area that they don't have to, that they're already beyond this area that we want some action right now. So you're, I've, I've, you're proposing a quick I'm sooner proposing, deadline. I'm proposing send them a letter, give it to them tomorrow, tell them you want, you want how they're going to rectify this by Monday, and if you don't give it to us by Monday, we're going to give you an enforcement order. Which would be two letters you want action that now. we could. You, don't, you want action how does now. We do. How does the, we do. How does we a do letter well. or an enforcement order stop them from acting immediately? From acting what? Immediately. Well, how would an but enforcement order say, wait until the next meeting? It just, it's just going to lay it out, and it's official. But, they don't, but you said you're going to have to have them come in the next meeting and explain how they're going to rectify this problem. 
No, they can come in the next meeting. Uh, don't they have a huge project in front of them? Aren't they gonna, or is this just their only section? But I'm saying this is the only area that they may be, be watering in a manner that we, you want, we in, want them in to In my do. opinion, no, no second chances. This, there's, they have to come up with a dewatering plan for every time it happens from here but forward. But this is what the point I'm trying to say. By the time the next meeting happens, the dewatering that they're, the dewatering in the manner that they're doing may not exist anymore. The, the, order, the enforcement order will be uh, voted on tonight, and if the commission says to, to issue it, it'll lay out the steps that they need to follow immediately. Okay. So okay. Which, whichever needs to happen. Whatever, I'm just, but I just didn't know if you're I, I basically we're give them a span time that they can work that does, no, they, I, they're I not getting the information that you want to hear. That's all. That's all that, that may be how it sounds right now. Um, but we work on that meeting to meeting kind of thought train. Things can absolutely happen in between meetings, and they okay. should in this case. No, that's fine. That's they fine. should. Yeah, it, it's well, that enforcement order should definitely remind them or require them to submit a the dewatering plan for each and every segment they work. Yeah, it's just yeah. Okay. I'm so still so kind of stunned by so it. So <laughs> Uber uh, line. I don't know if you guys have noticed. That's what that's the, what the samples came back. The borings that they took came back clean. They did. Clean. Then why are they ripping the at the tanks? Hmm? Pardon me. Why are they ripping at the tanks if there was no leak? Oh, that gas, the one on the Wooten side. Yeah, they could be rip, ripping off by age. Yeah, but what tanks, the tanks, depending the tanks that you're only oh, allowed to keep oh, in so long. Well, I'll, t I'll tell you this, all underground storage tanks that hold gasoline leak. leak. They all leak because they're not vapor tight. Yeah. So, Even the double um, line but yep. some of their excavation could have removed all of the impacted soil. It depends on I what was there. You, you, you don't I know until. Soil report, but, but all I remember is their comments that the, 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 the borings that the borings in the storm side came back clean. Yeah. There was no trace, no which, trace contamination. Which might mean they excavated everything already, or or it could mean that they missed it. I mean, it could mean yeah. a number of things. Could mean it was so, the other way the day they did the boring. Uh, right, so, um, but let's get to this so that we can get through the night. Um, so Chuck, go ahead and draft an enforcement order. Um, Need to vote on that. Um, is there a motion to draft an enforcement order to the contractor and the MWRA um, requiring a well, um, well um, before we make the motion, what what is the discipline? And say um, if they have to submit to us by date certain a plan to remove the sediment from that uh, from that uh, intermittent stream or that ditch, yep. then by how and it's been required by date certain the dewatering plan for all their operations. I think and checking those pipes because that may be you know another potential source waiting to flush out uh, during the, the next pipes. storm. You know, so they I'm really not need sure to. We have the authority to put our enforcement order inside a pipe. Well, it is a potential so source so to probably want to do it. In our in our bylaw, uh, we do. Actually, I think yeah, we do. Right, maybe based on my visitation to the commission one time. Once it hits the wetland, you can do it, but you can't do it once. But not according to our bylaw. Not according yeah. to the bylaw. Yeah. If it has potential to discharge to wetlands, yeah. reasonably. More that's likely why we than ask not. you to install it's that storm scepter down at the end not. of that road near. Um, I don't think we have, we have the authority to regulate a discharge from a pipe, but we don't have the authority to force somebody to clean out a pipe. It says something like, uh, let me get that to it. Uh, Jurisdiction. But I would say George it doesn't matter because I'm going to ask him the same question anyway. So you are. if you feel it's whether you can or can't, uh, I'm going to ask him the same question. Yeah, I think there's a couple of those things that are questionable, but it makes sense to do anyways. Right. And we can we can say it. But we have um, activity outside the buffer zone. That's the one where we said when, right. when it's more uh, likely than unlikely that the subject acre, uh, subject area to protection. Um, Will be altered, and this is exactly what we're talking about with that. Right, right. So we need to see from them a plan to clean out this 
ditch a plan to address all of their dewatering de going forward. And flush, and, flush the pipes. And uh, okay. get that stuff out of there. Yeah. And okay. remind them a notice needs to be given. So. Notice needs to be given for what? If they're going to dewater again, you know, if they're if they can't. If they get down the street and they need to start dewatering again and they're going to come up with a new plan, we need to uh, approve. Mm -hmm. Or they need to s tell us. It's I th think they need to submit the plan anyway. What are they going to do? No, no, that's anything? for this area. No, I meant for every area. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're doing. They submit their plan. plan. I mean, they, they're, they're, they're putting pipe in the ground. One day it's dry and the middle of the afternoon it's wet. They can't stop. So they're going to submit. They're going to have to submit a plan that's going to be for all their, any of their pipes that all they're in operation. And okay. they submit that plan and they can approve it. Thank okay. you. We got them all. I got okay. three. Okay. So there's a, is there a motion to issue <coughs> this enforcement order? We, so do we need all those. Uh, second? Well, let, let me ask another question. Uh, so. What happens if we have big rainstorms after tomorrow? What's going to prevent them from doing the same thing? They won't. We won't have their plan by then. Then they've got a whole lot more to well, clean up. Well, we, you know, George has told them what to expect, and so have I. And <coughs> they seem to be cooperating. You know. Well, let's include. I would amend that enforcement order to say, um, until the plans are submitted and approved, no discharge directly to. No direct discharge, or, yeah. or to, to the storm sewer or surface water, which they can either put in a frack tank or they can just stop work. Their yep. choice. I will tell you something, though, because it happened to me. This time of year, you can fill up a frack tank that thing can freeze solid, and you cannot move a frack tank full of frozen water. You have to pay the rent on that thing until they pass. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. If, if this guy at FST is dumb enough to do what he did, he okay. might not be smart enough. Hey, to so that. how long did you do? You guys pay rent for on that? Four months. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. It's, it's more like two and a half. Would have been cheaper to drive it to Florida. Oh God. Did it wreck you it? You can't drive it. You, you can't, can't move, move it. it. You can't you move cannot it. Cannot move it. Ship it. Ship it. Ship it. Okay. That would. All right, you ready for next? Uh, yes. Yeah, lesson. George, is there anything else you're here for? I don't know. I don't know <laughs> okay. One of the Chuck was going to bring ahead, up. Go ahead, Chuck. I don't bring up tonight. It's another night. I don't care. I want to point out the lesson. I'm incapable of writing this talk. I know. I understand. Yeah, I have that. Okay, let me just finish off Scotland Road and we'll do this real quick. Okay, are we going to So you see this area on Scotland Road? This used to be owned by the... This used to be owned by the... Oh, the Reading Open Land Trust. There you go. Still Yes. So no, this, this guy here at 104 mm -hmm. Scotland Road bought this piece of land. There is a jurisdictional wetland yes, in there, there that is. qualifies for that under our 500 square foot rule. So he bought that from Reading Land Trust? Yep, and he's taken down the fence right here okay. in between the two properties and it's, it's you know, he, and he's cleaned it up a lot. There's no snags in there at all anymore. Because it was all the dead trees site. have been taken down. He's, he's cleaning up. A European forest is what I'm gonna describe it as. It filled up with water over the rainstorms, um, and he was pumping from that wetland into a storm drain. Into a storm drain. Into a storm drain. We're sure it wasn't the sanitary sewer. Well, I don't have any pictures. I don't. Well, it's right the one past his house. So, um, so, but engineering went out there and gave him a letter that said, "Do not. You are not allowed to pump." directly into uh, the storm drains on the street or onto the street or whatever it said, something to that effect. Okay. And, um, and? And, I, and I, and I, you know, we were, when we were walking around with the West Street engineers, uh, I did, did uh, notice that there was someone at the door and asked them if that's what was happening. Were they pumping out of the, uh, out the wetland? And, and she said no. And that um, she also said that that's their land and it's not conservation land, and it's not a wetland because their lawyer said that it wasn't. So, um, all that being said, 
I'm sure the basement was flooding. I'm sure it seemed like, you know, hey, here's the source. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I didn't see it when it was full of water, but you know what? We have a street full of engineers going up and down. Everyone told me they've been pumping out of there for five days straight. Um, that was working on that West Street project, and uh, I didn't hear about it. But I also didn't see a lot of erosion. I didn't see what I would thought I would see with all that discharge for five days. Debris in the street. So, yeah, and like, stuff and like that. you know, some sort of erosion and c the cut in the street or so, anything like so that. So the rain cannot pump. Can you pump your base in the storm drain, can't you? The basement? You see, you know, people dump pump a line coming out of their basement yeah. goes right into the catch basin. You see it a lot. We Is that see people do it. Uh, uh, to pump directly into a drain line permanently. This right. is on a temporary basis. Um, must be qualified for something. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it must be. I, yeah. If I knew, I didn't hear about this after the fact. If I knew about it before the fact, the letter would have known that. Because the only time we took, the only time we really, oh, I should, I shouldn't say that that way. I should, not knowing all the. Uh, someone that's pumping into the street and whether it's directly into a catch basin or just on the street is typically if it's causing damage only time and typically it's it's uh, you know yes sometimes it may be eroding the edge of the road in most cases it's because it's winter time and they're it's in the street yeah. but if someone's going to pump out and you know they're pumping up their basement and they're putting it in the gutter or to, uh, for a drain line we don't pump it the only thing we have is that if you're going to put a <coughs> permanent connection to the drain system, they're required to sign the, uh, sign the drainage release, which is just really a liability for us saying, hey, if our drainage system backs up, we're not held responsible. Well, um, if, you know, um, if they were pumping this wetland to the drain, um, you know, that's a violation of, of uh, that's disturb disturbance of the wetland. Um, if if they don't if they don't believe it to be a wetland, um, that's not our understanding, and I, I'm pretty sure we we've got some good technical grounds to say it is a wetland. Although I would like to double yeah, check and that and 500 square foot. And yeah, because uh, Reading Land Con Conservation Trust, we've been working with them. We've for been working years with them for years to, to were try and maintain that. Because they were developing a lot. Right. And, so and we did a full evaluation. Right. Right. So, that. right. So, so yeah. I'd like to invite. It's also this pretty clear if you just walk out on the site. Right. But so I'd yeah. like to invite this resident to come in, um, and see the information we have that it is a wetland, and to clarify with them since they newly acquired the lot. Um, you know the way we would. First of all, what's allowed, and what is not allowed. Um, with you that know, wetland? You wasn't that, wouldn't that have been what we needed? I mean, that wasn't that long ago, and yet had it It should have been. If it got, it should have been transferred. There's some but I don't, there should be. Um, Anika, under state law, you can drop <coughs> a straw into a surface water in the state of Massachusetts and extract several thousand gallons and you no permit no nothing and you see you see people do it you see um, some of the tree people do it um, they'll go by streams they'll go by which are wetlands and they'll take water out so I'm not sure that is prohibited you can take water out of the surface water and pull well, up that you're area. right I mean but, if, but they if, were if whether it's prohibited Maybe it would be permissible, but you have to admit it's they're doing something with land under our jurisdiction and perhaps some notice. Well, those dry could be, gra we'd be on granted very shaky as well. Grounds. We'd be very on very shaky grounds. Are you sure? 
I'm sure that it's permissible to withdraw X amount of certain water. I can't remember if it's 10 cents a gallon or 10 cents yeah. a gallon. Something but huge. It's huge. Amount. But I guess one of my... But, but hold on, guys. <laughs> Not Mike, in a 500 square right. foot yeah. wetland. I mean, if you, I mean, can't, <laughs> you can't drink the water. <laughs> yeah, you, gotta get, you, get, you, you can yeah, only withdraw it up to the <laughs> point that you're altering it or damaging the surrounding <laughs> area, the habitat. My, my biggest concern. I'm not saying that happened, but that's where, that's where you, you can't just look at one thing. Is it? Is it? Because then they could just withdraw it for five years. Chuck, is it BBW or is it? <coughs> it's, it's isolated land, but it has, it's it's it has uh, it has BBW too. Okay. I, I you know my biggest concern is um, them saying it is not a wetland. Because <laughs> they always said. Because, well, which yeah, means that, they that will treat, been, if they say right, it's not a wetland, what are they going to do with that so land next? I, I, I would they want to develop it. So they want to probably at some point. Make a yard I, out I, of it. I, you know I, what I mean? A I feel much more comfortable. Right. I, I think a discussion should be had. I, I, I feel much more comfortable we limited the discussion to, um, the, to, to, to explain to them that that is a jurisdictional wetland. That's and fine with me. Filling or any construction, any clearing you do in there is subject to mass uh, wetland and running by. To review and, and if they have a problem with that, they can come in permit. and talk to us. They can what? They can come in and talk to us. Yeah. Yeah. That I'm very comfortable with. Do you want them? You don't want them in now? You, you don't want me to request I, that they come in and talk? Or just tell us. Just to tell them it's a wetlands. Tell them it's a wetlands that we have in the pile, and if they'd like to come discuss it with us, we'd be more than happy. If they want to push, uh, it, um, if they want to submit a, um, what's that thing where you, uh, an NRAD, what, what is it, what is that thing called? Yeah. A, an abbreviated notice. No, not an NRAD, where you determine where the wetland lines are. Yeah, that's yeah. an NRAD. Yeah. NRAD. If that's they want to submit that, we'd be happy to review it and deny it, or <laughs> So yeah, we, we ought to make sure they know before they put in a swimming pool or garage. Yeah, I think some sort of communication needs That's to happen. And I would, I would, I would prefer to focus on that and stay away from that pumping the water out of there because that's that's not as straightforward an issue. Well, I, it, you know, like any resident who's adjacent to wetlands, I think, <coughs> I yeah, think. Jamie, I'm not sure you're, you know. I mean, go down the Concord River, go down any river, and you'll see people so with river, pumps in right. there. So you, what you need to do is call Heidi Davis and say, look, they're pump, they're just they're pumping up, they're filling up a truck in the Concord River, and she'll tell you, you're right, it's it's a huge amount that they can pump out without causing a problem. But if you <coughs> ever see any damage to the bank or the surrounding area, then that's the violation. So that's what it is, and by taking out, so. What this looks like, it's a small wetland, it's dependent on that water, and if it's being drained at the wrong time, what if this, what if this was, um, uh, this was uh, in the spring. April? <laughs> right. What if this was in the And it was a vernal April? pool. But it's not a vernal pool. But what if? We went through that determination. Did you? Yeah. But, yeah, I don't know. So, um, I still think some sort of communication needs to happen Absolutely. with the resident. Absolutely. So, um, so another letter check sounds like. Yep. Okay. <coughs> Thank you. Um, anything else? Yeah, there's a couple other things. Okay. So we sent a letter out to uh, the Pineville people who didn't show up. And That's uh, the next steps. Massive amount of leaf yeah. piles. Yeah. The they, issue was that was. Did you see that? Yeah, we did. We, it's not in jurisdictional lands, but it's on our property. On our conservation okay. lands. Right. right. And it's a massive leaf looks pile. Like a, looks like an Indian burial mound. <laughs> I didn't see the deer out there. No. no, I didn't see deer out there. <laughs> oh, you told um. us about it. <laughs> I've seen a lot of turkey out there. Though. Oh. I saw three deer on West Street. So so these, uh, these leaves are going to... Uh, um, suffocate the root zone of all those big, huge trees back there. Um, and it's getting bigger. Seems like a pretty big pile. 
We, so we're, we're sure it's not on their property because it's right oh, adjacent sorry. to their lawn. Hold on a second. I have actually got this. Isn't there a fence? It's not on their on property. Their side? Located. It's on the other side a, of the fence. There's like it's a fence, fence on the of a cage or something, I think, on their side. Yeah. I didn't see that. The side yeah. that we yeah. walked through. I, even, I took pictures cool. of it. Is this my picture? Yeah. No, that's yours. Yep. Oh, this is upside six, down. Six feet from the property. Yep. Um, I didn't. I mean, there's a fence oh. here. Where? Yes, and I walked that, to the edge of that yeah. fence. That circle. But I don't know if there's a fence right there. I didn't see. Let me just see. The, there's an opening right there. There's Let no. Me explain that drawing. There's no fence. That circle is not just an arbitrary circle that's drawn in. That was physically located in relation to the property line. That is the outer boundary of the pile. One to forty. You gotta be kidding me. So somebody went in there and surveyed. I had my survey tool. Thank you. Located. So was it like fifty feet then? It's I'm gonna say forty one by twenty four. That's it's checkerboard. Yeah. 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 Let's check one of the dimensions. I wonder if the scale is incorrect. I don't know. That's forty one No uh, forty by twenty doesn't sound that outrageous I'm looking at. Uh it. or a roughly twenty foot radius. I would say I would say twenty wide makes sense. I don't remember how long it was going back to the other house. Yeah, I guess it sounds about right. That that's about five five, six feet from property. So and there's there's access. When I was there, there was access like through this property. Through which property? Through nine. Through number nine. <coughs> yeah. Riverside. That okay. Had, it almost seemed like it was just like a ramp. Right out the access and straight mm. up yeah. the pile. Yeah. It looked like that. And and did know, we send them a letter? We did certified and we sent them the follow up just regular mail letter. And I can upgrade that. My only thought is that maybe there wasn't enough time to um, get the letter or they weren't home. It really hasn't been that long. <coughs> I only sent it uh, Wednesday of last week. So you can do a second letter. You could do a second letter you could and do an enforcement um, order. You could. I don't know if we're at that point. I think a second letter makes sense. I'm not sure an enforcement order makes sense. Um, I, and this is once not a wetland jurisdictional issue. It's a different issue. Correct. So it, well, we can issue an enforcement order. For conservation land, a violation. Yeah. Okay, order right. Specific Specifically in the wetland protection. Act. I think this okay, that makes sense. The police. Totally identical Let's get them for that. Okay, next thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, Did the letter state that you know <coughs> this dumping continues, sort of like one of the what? how it's how it's gonna. Did you happen to put in that letter that you sent them previously, um, you know, that it, it could damage the health of the trees, no, cause the didn't trees to... No, I did try to educate them. I just okay. asked them to come okay. to the meeting. Okay. And then I did, I also sent them the plan that you're looking at, and I sent them <coughs> what, with the, in the same letter, this, our, our no dumping allowed um, letter that we yep. sent out to Pinedale residents uh, a couple years back. Chuck, one of the things we talked about at the last meeting, and I remember this reading the minutes, we were going to look into a town no dumping policy, no littering policy. Did we find out what the policy is on other town lands? What the action is if somebody came and dumped three cases of Bud Light cans on First uh, Center Field? I didn't read the minutes, but and I didn't remember that or do anything about that. If it, if it is in the minutes, and I was asked to check we, out what the I think town that might, I, I think that might help us. We can take it. We can we can we can do some. We can put Anne on some web research to see what other towns are doing. Well, let's see what Redding's doing first. See there what Redding is doing. There might be a town wide policy in all for all of this. Dumping on this. This came up at another location one time, and I, I, I just don't recall what the chief said. Um, it, it, it's, it's very minimal. I, I don't recall. So I don't even guess. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, we'll try another letter and we'll see what happens next. Did we talk to what we would do? If we had asked them in the first letter to come here, in the second letter, should we reiterate that? Or yes. Tell yes, them the second the letter should. The second letter here. should reiterate that. Um, or else we don't know what we're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have to state that. <laughs> no, we, it would be wise not to we'll, say, we'll, we'll but it would be nice if we knew. Yes. Um, we'll dump it back on their back lawn. I don't know. All you can really do is ask them to remove it. Yep. Yeah. That's what I already want. Yep. Of course, they're going to say, so well, they've only been dumping for two years there because someone's been doing it for the other 30. We could have but a... Whatever. So, yeah. Okay. So, they're, yeah, they're so saying, we need a second letter. Okay. Um, Ryan wanted to know if, you know, just you guys understand that the info boards at the town forest, he really loved the install. But also right. the roadway out in front, he considers that area next to the road jurisdictional wetland. You're talking, about, oh, wait a minute. You're talking about Sturgis by the compost area. Yeah. Yeah. And he sent around pictures to everyone. Did anyone look at those pictures? Yeah. Where I, basically, I it's where everyone's I pulling over right. and parking, and it's all muddy. And he's awesome. saying it's churning up the soil and it's getting erosion into the wetland. But it, it's parking it's in between the two entrances to the compost right. area. So there shouldn't be anybody parking there. Okay. He's well, going, the going in out of the you're not talking about on the town road. You're talking about the road in the town. No, Sturgis. no, you're talking the town road. You're talking about the Sturgis. The Sturgis, which starts to grow and then goes up to the water treatment plant. Halfway up is the two roads for the compost area. So they shouldn't be driving. The only reason you're driving in there is to go to the compost area and out again. Right. They shouldn't be parking over there. No, absolutely not. So I don't know why they're parking. I thought it was there. on the road. He talking about parking no, he was on Sturgis. Yeah, that's what. He, he was talking about Strout. parking Strout. on Stroud. I'm sorry. I keep saying I keep saying that all the time. But the first time you mentioned Sturgis, I keep going down. Yeah, no, Stroud. I do that all the time. Okay. Sorry. So it's the parking. I know. I know. It is. So the parking outside of the compost area. Let's get this. Yeah. Let's get this over with. Um, Are you talking about the parking inside Stroud or on Grove? On Grove. On Grove. Well, this, Just that, that before Strout Ave right. turns into the compost. Because right Strout Ave is the road into yeah. the compost. Right. So on the corner of like Grove. Yeah. Oh yeah, right here. There. Right the, here. Yeah, where is the Where is the gate? It's right here. Okay, there's a vernal pool right, <coughs> right there. Right here. Right. So, what he was noticing was on that road, because there's so much parking where people are trying to get out of the way of traffic and. The well, it's at the dog walkers too. It's I mean, the, yeah, it's you know it, it ends up rutting out, rutting that's, that's out. That's where I always park too when I go to the park. Sure. That's where you go. It's you rutting that out, and it it's. Is? Going I mean, everyone parks along the road because the only parking there is. So what Ryan would like is to ask the DPW or the engineering department if they would, he wanted to remove that material and put something there more um, suitable for parking. And his uh, explanation was because the runoff, it wouldn't have a runoff. So it's, it's really an improvement over existing conditions. Um, but he didn't want this mucky organic layer there anymore. He wanted to remove that, put something better down, and use that for parking. Because the people in Grove would rather no one park there anyway. They really complain about that. So that's that. probably the second second yeah. issue to make a, an official parking spot. You get like 20, 20, 20 cars out there on a nice day. We should include the um, Penn Force Committee in this. In this report. No, actually, it should only include one, one party. It's, it's, it's not town forest land. Two. They're the roadway managers. They're the only ones that have authority. It's a roadway of what to go in there. Right. I mean, that's pretty typical, kind of. It's how the roadway layout. Isn't that kind of typical if you're going to go hiking somewhere, you see something like that? Yeah, it is. I mean, I'm not surprised by it, but it, could we improve on it? Middlesex Fellows is like that. They have these little pullovers that are 
We, we could also construct a parking area that's basically where the gate is now. That's the area that task force can There's been a couple of surveys trying to figure out where to, where to put parking in that area. I know John Tudor had come up a couple of times too about understanding it. It's all natural heritage land in there. All of it are there. Because of the uh, in that in that uh, in that area, don't wasn't there brown pool? Yeah, I thought that was on the mm -hmm. on the endangered species and yep. endangered habitat map. Oh, oh, that uh, yeah. Yeah. So, but the town forest isn't even there. The town forest doesn't start till after EPW compost and after the waterland, and then you oh, the, the only solution. I didn't whole, know that. That whole huge yeah. section. In that corner is is DPW and the water. Right. I didn't know that. And when you get beyond that big meadow, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. when you get in the town forest. forest. I yeah. did. I never that whole that. section over there. I don't know I if you go over. That. If you go over towards ninety three, that's is that still borderland. Ah uh, yes. Yeah, all the way to it. Okay. Um. So George, you're saying we would need to go to any yeah, sort of want, change to this. If you want something this. on the edge of the road, permanent, especially where you can involve parking. trying to put the parking in there, that means a lot of cars are going to be driving in there through those vernal pools. Right. Right. They're going to you know, left, it's, um, left you a lot of us can go in there, oh. somewhere else. It's All kind right. of a fine line between um, making side. the parking less uh, I, eroded and allowing additional parking. You know, uh, we're kind of pushing the parking. If we do change that, we'd be pushing I, the parking into the habitat area. I don't know who asked us. All I know is this has been an issue. Forever. I've been here. Okay. All right. I. And I was up here with Fran at one time. So. Okay. I'd like to propose we um, we sort of continue this until Brian. We can discuss some of these other points with Brian when he's here at the next meeting. I also think we should probably do some research on what proposals they have for alternate parking. Yeah. Because there's a lot of things being thrown out, but no decisions been made. Yeah. You guys don't know what else. Is being thought of. But there were a couple of plans before. I yeah, think. we have it downstairs. It's just yeah. the, um, they plan on bringing it up again, but it's just, you know, there's just other more important things. Right. right That's what it sounds like. Speaking of which, let's uh, get to the next item. Can you get to me? Would you make me stay? Will you make me stay at the end? Oh, go ahead. I have no idea. You're the one that wanted to Go yeah, ahead. Too we're, we're all a little, too late. We're all a little I, too tired now. Oh, oh. Let's continue with what George is Yeah, let's do this. Um, so anyways, George um, put in the bus stop and I went through town meeting and Jamie asked me to oh, look into or asked you oh, to right. contact George about doing some mitigation to follow up on that. So, no, I like those guys are fairly pretty. No, I talked to George and, and um, kind of checked out the area. So mm -hmm. the area in question is... Um, is in the market basket entrance on uh, General Way, mm -hmm. right? So it's towards the end, towards the end of General Way, mm -hmm. at the edge of the parking lot. Can you pull up the map? Oh, yeah, I need to get um, Best way to do it. it is further in a close to Stop and Shop? Yeah. Yeah, I remember where it was. I don't know why. Go in and dash. There you go. It's a little right created there. wetland. Right before you get into the parking lot. Right, it's right between that road and stop. Right there. Right there. Okay. No, it's on the other side. There it is right the there. Road. All right, so, um, hold on a second. Uh, here. That, that's probably not very helpful, but the area that's, that we're talking about is kind of right here. It's right. about a thousand square feet. It's right. cattail. Yep. That was a created wetland when the damaged mm -hmm. property, Davis right. Properties, redid that development. Okay. 
And where's the bus stop? That bus stop. It's down on the oh, front of Chili's or something. Four. Down the street, yeah. So um, contacted uh, Aquatic Control Technology and uh, asked them, and I know about these people because this is what they do on Spy Pond in Arlington, mm -hmm. and we've been taking care right. of Frag Mighty there. So I talked to a guy named Michael Lennon, who's a biologist, and he will um, come out and make a proposal on this property to remove the Frag Mighty. It's, he says it takes up to three treatments. Mm -hmm. They mix the chemicals up, but it's um, glyphosate is one of them. They switch it up in the second <coughs> year because what you're doing is when the plumes are the adult, um, the adult Frag Mighty with the plume, uh, that's what you want, that you only get that the first shot. And it'll absorb this into the roots and kill it off. The second year, it's younger stuff. They can't use that same chemical. They're going to use something else. And then they wait a year and hit it again. <coughs> it should be gone. Okay? So there's about a 1,000 square feet. It's where I told you it was. These guys kind of specialize in this technology. That, that area might be a 1,000 square feet, but I'm pretty sure there's not 1,000 square feet of Frank Mighty. No, no, you're absolutely right, and it's mixed in with other things, and I'm not sure what's in there. It drove past quickly, and I, I had a picture. I did take a picture of it, if anyone has a chance to see it. But um, the, the point is that we're moving forward except two things, or maybe one thing. George. We don't own the land. Things. First, I want to get the dollar amount. We don't, I think it's like going to be like, yeah, no, you said it was like, like a thousand more. bucks. Yeah, um, that's fine. Uh, or less, I don't know. But it might be a thousand bucks three times. So um, the problem is we don't own the land, right. and the guy that does own the land wants to do, under the new regulations, an ecological restoration, or he's proposed something like that, hasn't come to us, hasn't even been talked to uh, with me yet, but he wants to do an ecological restoration on this property under the new regulations, allowing him to improve this wetland. <laughs> and his, his issue is that no one can see his site, which is those buildings in those and so no one's going to them. So the, you mean the market basket? Well, market basket, whatever else is out back out there, like the men's li town library, town men's library. warehouse, liquor and junction, liquor, ju <laughs> liquor <laughs> junction, creative oh, playthings. Uh, <laughs> so, anyways, he wants to remove all that, and you know the new regulations kind of <coughs> lay this out. There's a PowerPoint <coughs> out there, and and then of course you can read them yourselves, but. It asks you what's the primary purpose. So I'm not. That's not even in front of us. But we'd have to all get educated on those new regs. Is the owner likely to allow us to clean up his wetland, that um, you know, with those fragmites, when he needs that stuff to be there for him to say, "I want to clean it up for my bigger project." So I think we're needing a oh. new spot. Mm -hmm. Do you have your follow? Can you follow yeah, me? Yeah, I follow you. I'm not sure he's that smart. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> well, we don't know for well, sure whether or not he would. Anyway. Well, it's not that he has to that be that smart. Reason. He has um, Hayes Engineering. I'm sure they're not. Hancock. Yes, Hancock. 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 John Dick. Um, hey, Hayes did it before. Okay. John yeah. Dick's working on this project, so you know we need his permission. I'm just putting it out there. So. Yeah, he's using Hancock. Well, th there's the other side of the street on that uh, stop and shop pond that's right under that pop up you have. There's some fragmites in there also. Oh, that's miserable. They want to take the trees down in here, too. And that's yeah. a constructed. That's still this property, though. Yeah. Oh, that's the yeah. Damon's property, also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, where's the nearest uh, town property? Are they? Where's the nearest? I did ask that question. They've got a DPW garage. <coughs> the nearest town property, DPW. Well, the, the other thing is, check is out. I, I have to double check. Is, I don't know if there's something along the brook, the river. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, but the question is, is um, I know we don't own the property, but we may have an easement through us that would give us the right to do something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. I might have to check into that. Yeah. So. But even if it wasn't, I'm. I'm <coughs> Let's say if there's something over there, I'm sure the property owner would allow us to do it. It's, different. it's certainly That's a manageable right. another amount. Po I know, <coughs> another place I know of, but the problem is it's not in that same drainage, is over along the Arbor Jones, Ar 
between Birch Meadow Drive and um, and Birch Meadow in the like, football field. There's some fragments growing up along that uh, mm -hmm. along those, that channel. Those are the ones that we want to clean up. So, like sure. strictly looking at the regs, you would have to find a place within 200 feet of the river. You, you don't have to. No, you do. It, well, if, it if you want to just strictly look at the regs and you don't want to add anything to it, you have to find a place within 200 feet of the riverfront. That's so in the, but it can be anywhere along it. It can be 50 oh, miles 200 away. 200 feet within of the riverfront, of the not riverfront. of the area yeah. of impact. Oh, right. okay. So it could You're be the right. it could right. be the fragmites right. in front of Curry. Well, that means you can't, you know, you can't like repair some head wall, you know, right. way over there because it drains in. Right. No, no, I misunderstood right. you. I thought you said it had to be within 200 feet of the of the insole. So, um, I mean, there's a lot of opportunity there, and certainly. <coughs> Think things will come up. I mean, it's really, it's too bad they write it like that. Well, I guess it's it's a, look over there. Okay. Looks like it's back Well, to if the this driveway. doesn't happen, but we are going to get the quote. <coughs> the so, here, so, you know. so, all right, and then moving on. So, you talked to people at that property. I haven't talked to them about this project. I have talked to them in the past. I know they do want to clean, they want to cut down the trees in that smaller wetland between Stop and Shop and Market Basket. Not the one you're talking about, the one, the other one. And they're too high and it's blocking the view. And that seems Where to be their whole problem. Can you show us the again on sure the thing. view? Um, that's that little one right there, yeah. Right there. So Where you know, is it? What, what, what view is it blocking? Well, you have to go down there and check it out. So, there, so there's a sight line situation. So when you want to have your, you want to everyone know where a store is. Now everyone knows where Stop and Shop is. Everyone knows where Market Basket is. I don't think they need. They're probably bringing people in. The problem is no one's going to Gentleman's Warehouse. Sh just show me where they want to get in trees. Right here. You mean K and W? Sorry, but you can't see Gentleman's Warehouse. No. Cut those no. Trees down. Those right. Yeah. Well, not those trees. They want to cut these oh, trees okay, down. Oh, well, yeah, that's... Oh, they, oh, they, oh. They, they, they want to cut these uh, trees down, too. Uh, they see hard. they want, they see it, they see it all. Now, what I heard, I didn't go to the meeting. <laughs> He's talking about a marsh. He wants to turn it into, like, a, a marsh or a meadow. That's what he's talking about. You're Low shaking your head, but... <laughs> You gotta read those new regs. Okay. okay. It's gonna be interesting. You gotta read those new regs. We'll just put, we'll put lots of blueberry. It's, uh, right. I'm not saying it's possible. I'm just saying Did that one no one's done it yet. They were they were official on November 22nd or something like that and of this year. Okay. Case study. Right, so read it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, George. Nice everyone. Holiday, everyone. You might George. as well stay, George. Yeah. I was going home. I, mean, I, 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 I said right. I was going to be home at 9 o'clock. I don't yep. think yep. well. All right. I, I, Thanks, I, George. Yeah. I just had one last question. How come the light's on? So it's, it's 11. I, 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 I'm with the truck. I don't know what time they shut off. I, I, I'll okay. pull, the, pull the plug out when I, I go. Think it's yeah. HR, I it is practically. Yeah, midnight. I was thinking when the light's on. Oh, that too. How come you have so many hours on Tuesday? You don't work that late. Okay. Okay. All right. No Thanks, George. Can I charge resources? Okay. What's last, the next? The, the last thing I have, I think, I think it's the last thing. I was asked by. Um, go back to the side again. So Batch Elder. So I was asked by Tom Hughes, who's a guy that's been before us before, yeah. that if we would accept an RDA instead of an ANRAD. And I just we're going to verbally tell you the differences as I understand them for both those things. An ANRAD requires data sheets and more mm -hmm. money, okay? Uh, it's kind of the proper way of delineating the resources in that area. But you could, there is a section with the RDA. In the RDA, you'd probably only give a summary report. It's far less money. It's only $75, and it's an easier process. Weighing those two things out, and he asked me to... For what? An RDA for what? For a delineation? For an RDA to establish a wetland line, just like an ANRAD would establish the wetland line 
and the resources in that area. I was asked if he won't, if he would entertain such a thing. I figured well, I would just ask him. You know, I think um, I think technically uh, we can't, right? Because well, that's the purpose uh, of the permit. An RDA has to ha include a proposed action. It so cannot be. If he if wants he, to submit an RDA that has his proposed action and a wetland line on it, we'd be happy to accept that. And we would look at that wetland line and see if we agreed with it. But he can't just submit an RDA with a wetland line because the RDA says there, there's no impact on the resource. And if we don't know what they're doing, we can't say there's no impact on the resource. So it, do, it does ask you a couple of questions on the RDA that you have to figure out which one you want to do and one of them is a is whether this is a the area is described on the plan is accurate and second is the wetland if uh, whether the boundaries of the resource area are depicted accurately right. so you could just check off B and mm -hmm. submit it no no you, it has to have an action also I mean we can't say just look at a piece of property and say it's, it's not applicable. I mean, we have to look at the action building the highest. Well, it doesn't really board. say that, but maybe that's historically what you've done here. But you could check off B and just ask for the boundaries. I mean, I, I think you're right. I think it's it's like someone has a project <coughs> and we're going to review the line also as part of that project. Right. And that's I why mean, they did the inrad. I didn't he, get a chance to, to really. If he wants to put in a fictitious project, I can't. You know. Anyone have any experience that with that? It's never happened to me. No, I'd rather I'd rather things get filed appropriately. You know, if he's really looking for a wetland line, he should do I an mean, inrad. How big is the property? It's this piece of property right here. That one? Yeah. On oh, the corner. Okay. Here, pull it back. He also wants to know if he can get a site visit um, mm -hmm. for the commission to review the wetland line prior to snow. Which we've already had snow twice. He's a, he'll make himself available for whatever. It's, um, it's pretty challenging confirming a wetland line in the winter. I'm going to give you a little bit of. Um, Look, I'm, looking at no, this, I'm, not a, I'm, I'm looking at this RDA under B1C. And I happen to be looking at the uh, William Alley. But. Whether the work depicted on the plan, reference below, is subject to the Wetlands Protection Act. They have to have some work depicted, some action. They can't just submit a blank piece of paper. Um, well, those are all checkoffs. I mean, those, I, I, we just see it differently. I, d I think they could check off one of them. They could. Check any that apply. Yeah. yeah. They could. I, I, I don't agree with it, but I've never heard of that before. I don't even see what he's gaining. Except to be for honest with you. Although the, yeah, what I what I laid out there, the yeah. easier process, less yeah. money in the summary report. Well, is, we'll look at C two, project description, work description. They have to have a work description. I mean, if not, nobody would ever do an ad rat. So, always with these things, with the, with the RDA, you guys have the opportunity to say, no, there's not enough information here. Would you can you have you do the ad <coughs> rat or do a notice of intent? So, I'm taking that as a no. Next. Okay. Um, <laughs> go ahead. Uh, so that was. Oh, and then the site visit. Did you, did you guys entertain the site visit? Um, before it snows, he's thinking he can make himself available anytime next week. Where is night. it? It's, on that it's corner, right here, right, right on Haverhill. Batch Elder and, and Haver, right where I drew the red line. And uh, I can't get this to work, but my measuring area is different. I like that. Anyways, I, I, I have mean, about like that much work, work with. Somewhere in this area, there's like, is the wetland line. Is he flagged it already? He has. Go ahead. It doesn't show a wetland <laughs> on here, but there's one. I think it really Hughes. Tom Hughes, yeah. 
That's, that's, I'm sorry, Chuck, what's the line that's there right now? It pretty much follows that contour line. Maybe up there it doesn't. Maybe it cuts across right in here. But there's definitely, like it's Basin. a hummocky kind of, and then all Tree. of a sudden it, there's like pine trees there. So you can really get a sense of what's hmm. happening quickly. Um, and it, it's always, it's towards that Haverhill batch elder area. With ISAR plan and the wetland line is important because they need to, um, they need to do uh, replic replication. They're going to use a portion of this and recreate it somewhere else. So the wetland line is going to be very important in this project. Also, so I told so them as a developer. Why would they do it in red and get it right? Or yeah, 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 I think that's. You know, so I just, I just bring everything to you guys. I mean, yeah. I, you know, yeah. I, mean I could have yeah. said. No. I understand. But, but, but I won't have to say it again. I'll know from now on. Let, yeah. let him file something and we'll make a site visit. Yeah, file anything and make a site visit. Yep. So they want to, so as a developer, if they can't get into that uh, variance process, and he's going to need that too. So this is a a fill of wetland and recreation. So it's more than 5,000 square feet of fill? No. No, it no. no, it's less, but they need a portion of it to get filled. And that's the preliminary so plan I saw. So they need thought. a variance? The they need a variance because they're going to be closer than 35 feet on our bylaw regulations. Okay. So, but so it's our variance, not yeah, ours. Not, it won't go to DEP. <laughs> So he's going to need the variance, and he's going to need to do two things. And he explained that it's going to be very tough for him as a developer, and he's only the consultant, but the developers to get that variance. I well, think. I think. Why do they? Have, uh, he wants to put three hazards in there. <laughs> I'm sure. uh, what? Okay. Well, let's see what he files. Okay. And he actually proposed a. Um, bullpen. <laughs> <laughs> That's too expensive. You might as well put a house in. Um, it's for baseball or for bowls? <laughs> um, <laughs> check this corrected certificate of compliance. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll get to that. Let's do that. So it's official. Hmm. And uh, Sanborn Lane. Yeah. Can yeah. Set up before then or not? It is good. I had my coffee. I still have a bet. I mean, <laughs> guess when the lights are going to go off. <laughs> Stephanie Debanowitz bought 17 Harold Ave, Ave, but her lot has to do with 31 Harold Ave, which was used used to be owned by Ed Mahoney. We issued a complete certificate of compliance for this file number, but neglected to write this in it, which is. 31 Harold Ave, ha 31 Harold Ave, Harold Ave Roadway, and lots after number 19, and then um, notating those lots on this uh, certificate of compliance. So I prepared a okay. corrected certificate so of compliance. Wait a minute. What? When did we issue the certificate of compliance? Do you remember Ed Mahoney who did the CR? 1998. Like 2014. Oh. When? I, I, I don't know if we intended it to be more than what we said. I mean, he's telling us we intended that. I don't remember that. I mean, I, remember, I barely remember it at all. This sounds like a typo. This sounds like well, sounds the original. Right, but do we know that we didn't intend, that we intended only to issue it for that lot? Did we go ahead and look at those other lots? Did we look at the road? I don't know. Um, yeah, but that's true. But it was issued. It was issued, but just for that lot. No, it was issued for the order of conditions. 
that included a description of those other lots. Yeah, it was issued for the order of conditions. It was a complete order of conditions. If there's an issue out there, that horse left the barn. Sealed. Exactly. Anyways, the, the road is fine. I checked it out for wetlands, and I checked it out for other issues. Well, if, it, if it's for that whole order of conditions, why is there an issue? There's an issue because she's a lawyer and is nervous that since that wasn't written there, she's going to get caught in the future. So she wanted to have a corrected order of conditions that makes everything very clear. This was written on the original order, and now it's written on the certificate of compliance. And there's, there's, you know. Do you think? Um, it is what it is. Chuck, do you think um, this is something we should? Do you think this is something we should put past town council? No. No. This is so simple. What do you, uh, this okay. is? Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just. Sorry, I'm just sir, you said it. You say it's simple, but it, you know, it's twelve o'clock at night, and I, I don't <laughs> remember this property. Well, I don't know what what grounds you would have to say that it's that there's an issue out there. You've already issued an order, the certificate of compliance so for it, and there's an error in it that was just a uh, just a little Scribner's ah. error. Ah. Gotcha. So I get it. You can't say now we're going to go back over it. Just like you can't write something into that order of con that certificate of compliance that's not in the order of conditions. It's it's okay. just a and mistake. Yes. So that. basically, we issued to sort of reiterate the problem. We we issued an order of conditions for lot so for thirty one Harold Ave. And there and, and there was lot, at and, least three and, site visits. To that yeah, when, while yeah. I was here. Plus a couple of other descriptions of the property. And then we issued a certificate of compliance, mm -hmm. but we only said for thirty for thirty one, Franklin. And we didn't include the additional description of what the original order of conditions covered on our certificate of compliance. So as Chuck said, we're just correcting that typo in the certificate of compliance that should have been there originally. Which and will, I don't have an issue with which that. Which will be oh, okay. I, and I, I don't think it's. Uh, I think it's. We're talking about a road and whatever's in back of Mr. Mahoney's house. And I don't even understand why I mentioned those other lots, unless it was one one huge lot, and then it was cut up into houses. I think that's what it. I think that's how it happened. So. vacation this week. <laughs> you sleep tomorrow? <laughs> Again? He's still reading it, so. Okay. Um. Where, where is the certificate of compliance, the original one? Um. I don't know. I didn't bring Oh, I might have it. that conservation restriction yeah. like three or four times right, because right. they needed additional copies and this and that. Right. But then this, it never got recorded. This request and is not related to conservation no, restriction. No. Yeah. It is. A misfiled? Which is some pretty 
crazy road we're going to walk back around. Um, Jamie, do you want to consider this matter and, uh, it, you don't, you know, I'm, I'm not going to force you to sign it. Uh, don't we usually sign the order of conditions and it's going to comply? Sure, it's the file number, isn't they it? They just say when ah, it was issued. Ah, number. okay. Is that on here? Yeah, it's right there. Okay. Yep. Okay. So, okay. um, you know, I don't want to. that? Okay, I need that. Then. There. Oh. Nothing lost, I don't think. Oh, yeah, here's another one. Yeah. Are you going to sign it? Did you it? sign that? Or? Yeah, I signed it. Okay. This, this is a okay. This is a certificate of compliance. Okay. Get a cut. Uh, oh, I already signed it. Okay. And if you've looked at um, Sanborn Lane, I sent that stuff out to you. It's more clear on this. But, uh, you know, Al repositioned the houses. Um, it I appears saw. to be an insignificant plan change. Yep. I'll tell I you, agree. there's one guy. Here, look at this. What? Where's Waldo? I couldn't. Okay. Yeah, For this? The, difference? the, the uh, bold, the bold here's box. The box oh, okay. And, and, and here's, the, here's the, where the bold um, deck used to be. Yeah. So the lines, and then you can see the colors of where it moved out to be. And, and the, what's significant about this, him proposing this? What we were saying when we wrote this order of conditions was that the footprint of the house was g not going to be any closer to the wetland than what we approved. Well, in yeah, that we also asked him, box. we struggled over this point with him, and he provided the information, and you know. He said they wouldn't be any larger than this footprint, it might be smaller. And if it was smaller, it would be further away from the white line. So what footprint did we approve? The, the bold box. The bold. The bold rectangles here. This. Oh, oh. We approved. That was the what was on the approved plan. The colored is what he's proposing to change, for, uh, deviate from the proposed plan. I, I didn't have I think any major issues with that. each time he's saying that it's further away. So it used to be 66, and now the closest point is 76 on lot two. And the closest point yep. was 38 on lot three, and now is 40 on lot three. Yeah. But so the deck is closer. The, the deck is closer, but the but on that lot two, the um, the wetlands trail off, so it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. It's as far. The closest point is that 74 area. I I don't have any. I mean, it's concerns pretty. Concerns about it. It's, pr it seems pretty minor to me. So, but um, if anybody has any objections, well, especially since that's where the wetlands is further away on that lot. Right. I mean, they were close to start. Is it to be close? Well, the deck is. Oh yeah. So. Um, well, the deck isn't too close concerns? to the wetlands on lot two. The wetlands drop away. On See? lot three. On lot three. On lot three no, it's three not closer. Well. Everything was pushed out. What's? No, on lot three, it's closer to the wetlands. Nope. Every, everything. It started out at thirty-eight. Thirty-eight. Apart, and now it's and forty. Now it's 40. Oh, 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 I 
get it. Oh, yeah. Over, Over by 16A. Well, so I'm, I'm misunderstanding that. The yellow I thought this, is where it is now. Yeah. I thought that yeah. bold box was his original plan. Right, and that 38 foot is the is the original plan he of the deck, the and he moved the deck closer to the house. Right, to and Jamie, the bull so the bull box does go around the original deck also, so it's it's a rectangle, and then it has a uh, yeah, spot. Yeah, I don't the, see that. But it's not shown I, on this plan. It's more clear saying. on lot two. Yeah, but we're worried about lot three. Well, you can't see on lot three because it's pretty much mirror image except for the two feet it sits yeah. back. But on yeah. lot two, you can see. Mm -hmm. That it does go around it, and if it hadn't moved so drastically, you wouldn't be able to see that either. Yep, I don't, I don't have any major. Yeah, it's just issue the whole with thing that. Just got shoved forward by. Uh, so. Well, not the whole thing. All right, so okay. this is just. I like it needs to take a blank for it, so I'm just putting in your name. <laughs> okay. Uh, plan change for uh, any discussion about the plan change for Sanborn Lane? Okay. Do we have to vote on it? Well, you have to probably vote that it's a minor, insignificant change. And so it doesn't, moved. Yeah. Second. All those in favor? All right. Okay, um, I would like to, uh, because it's so late, I, um, Chuck, unless just there's... Just the minutes, but I don't just, know. Just the minutes, Anybody yeah, and the rest the can, we can... Well, I, actually the minutes... Move to the... I, I would encourage, I, I'd like to put on those too, I'd like to encourage everybody to um, take a close read through those. Um, I just had a lot, a lot of questions, and um, I know we have a new recording secretary and, and whatnot, but there's just some um, some things that are unclear to me, and I don't think we have time tonight to get into it. I know they are, but my notes are on, but I don't give them back to you. Okay. Oh. Um, Good. Are we Could in? You send that They're out. They're out. They were emailed out by. Uh, yeah. They were emailed out. You emailed them, yeah. and then um, they came in the packet. You, you know what? As well. You know what happened? I saw them in the packet. I think I mistakenly deleted them on my email because I didn't think I was on this um, at this meeting. At the meeting. Huh? Okay. Well, I'll forward you my copy. Would that help? <laughs> but All I right. would, would So are we in? Are we in violation of the town? No, I think the policy is that you just put up the draft minutes. Yeah. Draft minutes and we'll yeah. finalize it. Yeah. But I would encourage people to read over them. Okay. Just, um, I think um, the benefit okay. of the, um, the tape either. The other meeting. Right. Go right. The tape. The um, missed. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Um, is there anything else? Um, I, I did want to sort of highlight that the kinder, yeah, the, maybe that's the Tennessee Terry's, gas. Terry's issue there. Tennessee gas looks yeah. like the new route is going. Uh, I think that's the third version. They keep changing through, it. Through, oh. And Isn't right. that top and corner? They, they, they keep changing it so the that we keep confused the winner. North Reading. It does a little jog and hits the very Linfield. top of the swamp there. The top right corner of Reading. Is that over there by Camp Curtis Gill? It's almost not in the town. All right. right. right on exactly. the edge of North not that that doesn't matter, but you know, it's. Is that what I had? Pretty far yeah, away. that's what I had. Yep. 14, 15.1. Yep. Yep, yep. I, the pr copy I printed was a Tobo or a satellite yeah. image. So it goes straight through wetlands. That's for sure. Yeah. Terry, have you been going to the, you went to one of the meetings. I went to a meeting and then I went to another one in Wilmington that Will and um, Gina Snyder. Hmm? Will and who else? I was going to say Gina Snyder. No, no, uh, the, the word guy. What? 
the bird guy, Tom uh, uh, Williams. Dave, Dave Williams. Williams. Dave Williams, yes. Dave Williams and Wolf Lynch and I were on that. And they were, I mean, most of the people there were from Wilmington and North Reading there. There's only the three of us there from, from Reading. Okay. But what they were saying was that um, this is like the third version, and it looks like the pipeline people are, are moving it around. So you go out and research for Bruno Pools in one area, and then they change it, and then you've got to do it again. And, the, you know, you've got to... You've got to send in our information on where the vernal pools and wetlands are um, at a certain well, time. And I think that looks to pretty good. It. Yeah. So it, and we're getting emails from MACC to yeah. keep us up on this. Eugene um, is the director over at MACC. But it is only going through that one little corner of, of Reading at this moment. And I actually applaud Nika for finding <coughs> this because when I looked for it, it was, oh man. Pure chance. I got it was so really, crazy really to try to figure out where this thing was. First hit. Um, well, I think but if it's that one. small, we certainly could go out there and check it out for Vernal Pool. I think yeah. it's, it looks to be like Cedar Swamp. It, it is. is. Yeah. yeah. It's Cedar Swamp right on the very edge. So it's it kind of so here's down North Reading and Reading. Linfield, and here's Cedar Swamp. So that's Camp Curtis Gill. No. Well, let me show okay. you where no, it is. So we're talking up here. Down here. That's so south Cedar Swamp. Oh, okay, all right. Okay, so the north Cedar Swamp, right at the north end of oh, okay. I'm, I'm thinking it's right over here, isn't it? See so this here's piece of land here. Wait, 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 that jog is on the land? Haverhill Street. So here's Haverhill Street over here. Yeah. And down here is Camp Curtis Hill. I have it on the screen, and what, what I was <laughs> kind of angry about was this belongs to the government right what here. does this area right here this is camp curtis guild and it's gonna it looks like it's gonna cut somewhere through there maybe this corridor here which i don't understand what that's there for unless it's Power the lines? utility corridor yeah. so why wouldn't they go in the like same spot vegetable. yeah i wonder about that so i mean this is where we're talking about the very very i wish i had the rest of it but um Yeah, so here's North Reading. So this white line is North Reading. And right there is where it starts in Reading. And right here is where it leaves Reading. So we're talking about a mm -hmm. patch of Reading. Not, not much. Right and in there. And as you can see, in the middle if, you, of the if you're looking at this now, this is the utility corridor yeah. right now. That's what okay. I thought. And they're, they're going to be in there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's show, interesting, but does that show where the line is between Reading and North Reading? Uh, this one won't. I'm not gonna be able to get that, but you can see. I can do standard. Do you recognize any of those three? Well, there's Crestwood. Terrain. Um, no, no, I don't know. Is this that where they don't have town boundaries? Okay. Go back to this one. Yeah. Well, I think it's important to keep our eye on it. Um, and at least support our neighboring towns as they. Yeah, I want them to it. cut deeper into, personally. Yeah. Well. Into ready. Big fees, fee generated. Oh, oh of course, I in, see. In, in order to go through the see. swamp, they have to get down, and drain it, and then put the pipe in, and then fill it back in again. So they destroy the wetlands entirely, and then they fill it in again. Okay. And then they also have a 75 swat they can drop herbicide on to keep it. Clear. Right but not the but just like they're doing now on yeah. the rest of the utilities. So that's only they have that that one each year they do the the Loma or the Loma plan or whatever it's called. Yearly operational maintenance plan. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So we get that every year. They spot spray or did they say spot spray? They didn't say Pack, yeah. backpack sprayer. And they cut down the woody bushes and you can opt out of that. If it goes past the house. Okay. Is it, it is a natural gas yeah. pipeline? Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's a natural Supposedly, gas we're supposed to get permission for them to go on there and do any surveying for everyone's land. A lot of people in North Reading have been denying them access to the area. But they're supposed to ask permission for it. So I assume they'd have to ask so. permission. Do they have eminent right of eminent domain? They do if they really want to push it, but. Yeah, they, they do. They'd rather not use it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, anything else? No? Okay. The lights are still not off. Uh, motion to dismiss. 
Oh, well, I'll second that one. All right, so moved. Smith, you need to ask for a vote, right? Everybody wants to. <laughs> well, thanks so much for squeezing all the business into one night. That was pretty